It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... Our Tower is back in your life on this Monday, March 20th, 2023. Hello again, everyone. I sure hope you're doing well. Happy birthday to my old friend, Daniel Cormier. Today is his birthday. It's a great day to be alive. Tomorrow, the first day of spring, the birds are out, the grass is growing, it's getting greener, the days are getting longer. And still your UFC welterweight champion is Leon Edwards. Oh, Leon Edwards. Oh, Leon Edwards. What a performance. What a night. What a fight. Unbelievable stuff. And usually I go on a long soliloquy about the fight, about all that stuff and more, but we have no time to waste. Coming on today's show, we've got Jack Shore. We've got Yanala Schmooz, who had two big victories on uh, Saturday afternoon, of course. Alexa Grasso, the new UFC women's flyweight champion. We've got uh, the one and only Mohamed Mokhaev, who had an unbelievable comeback win on Saturday. We're going to talk about UFC 286. We're going to break it all down. We're going to answer questions about what's next, big winners, the future, all that and more. We're presented by our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. They are the official sports betting partner of the UFC and this program. Shout out to them. I'll tell you about them and our good friends over at Squarespace as well. But no time to waste because we have at the top of the show, right off the bat, the reigning, defending, UFC, welterweight champion, the man who marched in, who built the whole event himself, the face of UFC 286, the man who had doubters up the wazoo for the past three years. People said he couldn't even sniff a number one contender fight, let alone a title fight. Well, guess what? That's one title defense in the books. Not on this show. We didn't doubt him. I'm talking about walking along, singing a song, walking in a rocky wonderland. There's only one Rocky Edwards. There's only one. What a legend. Leon. Well done, Leon. How are you, my friend? Congratulations. Uh, Thank you, bro. Thank you. um, It's been a crazy, crazy week. Um, Yeah, I said it, Errol. Well, you said it as well, to be fair, so. <laughs> <laughs> now, here we are. The first title defense hometown show. Uh, it was a crazy, crazy week. Leon, congratulations. I know we're short on time, so let's get into it. You've got a busy uh, busy day, and I thank yeah. you so much. I really appreciate you coming on, as promised. It means a lot. Um, you looked so confident, so comfortable, so calm all week. Like, even at the presser we were talking about, it felt like you were owning the moment. It felt like he was trying a little hard. It felt like you... Was that truly what you were feeling in the hotel backstage? Because this is a big deal. You headlining, the whole show's built around you. What did it actually feel like internally? Because externally, you look great, but internally, how are you feeling? Yeah, I felt like, like, like you're sin, you know? I felt like I belonged there. I felt, I felt like, truly, this is my moment, you know? And like the like press conference, I was like, I have a banter. I was, just, I was enjoying the moment, you know? I felt like I was a part of the moment more than making it overtake me, you know, and being too much for me and, yeah, it was good. The fans was crazy. Press conference, the weigh-ins, the the walkout was something else, you know. So, um, yeah, it's something that, like I said, it was a dream, um, for me to to do it, you know. And I've always said, like, when I was young, and I was praying to like be a world champion. This is the moment to pray for, you know. So, why not enjoy it while while I'm here? So that, that was my mindset, really. Just trying to enjoy, um, enjoying the week, enjoy the the whole process of it, you know. Obviously, trash talk is trash talk, but it really did feel to me like he was still a little bit dismissive of you, that it was just a lucky shot, didn't almost feel like you were on his level. Did you feel that as well, or did you feel like that was just him trying to, you know, hype up the fight? Um, Yeah, I felt, I felt about that for sure. Um, I feel like you had to tell himself that, right, to make an excuse as to why he got knocked out that bad, you know? So I feel like his team was probably feeding him all these excuses and all these reasons why, why it's okay to fight me again. You know, and um, I feel that's what he needed to get himself back into the fight, back into training camp to prepare for me. And um, but yeah, I went out there. I, I said it before, like my my performance in Utah wasn't my best performance. And come to London, you, you're not beating me in London, you know. And um, that that was it. And that's how I felt all week. I felt comfortable there. I always feel of energy. Some people like like to be away in like seclusion when it's like fight time, like being away from the family and everything. For me, it's an opposite, right? I enjoy being around my friends and my family and mine and being around them all week leading up to the fight. You know, I was 
before I left 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 the arena, I was in my Airbnb with all my friends and everyone just laughing and chilling, you know. So it's it's all good. Uh, and you remain undefeated in the UK, which is very, very impressive. Uh, that moment yeah. that everyone's been sharing, him walking right up to you as Buffer is making the announcements, and you do this. Can That's you tell me, uh, legendary, That's iconic shit. Could, could you tell oh, me what's man. going on in your mind in that moment? Um, that was just like a spirit of the moment thing, you know, because I was thinking about doing like the headshot thing I did yeah. last fight. But as I was walking over, I thought, fuck it, I just started <laughs> po- pointing <laughs> I was, like, pointed it to, to his head and... Um, just kept squeezing it, like just thinking, like, man, I'm, like you're not beating me tonight, you know. And that was my mentality going into the fight that uh, I cannot come this far, work this hard to lose to you, you know. And um, yeah, went out there and got the job done. First round, I thought you looked fantastic. In fact, I scored it yeah. first round for you, second round for you, fourth and fifth yeah. for you. I gave him the third with the point deduction 10 yeah. 8. I thought at worst yeah. it was a 47 47 for you, at best a 48 yeah. 46. I thought it came down to the second. That's the closest round of all. Could you tell me what yeah. you were thinking at? Do you remember what you were thinking after the second? Did you think you had won or did you think he had won? After the fight? After the, oh, second, the second, after round. the second round, because that to me was the closest. Um, one. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't remember. I remember Dave saying I, won, I, I got the round, but it was close. But I exactly remember how the, how the round played out, you know. I haven't watched the fight since of okay. uh, I've fought. Um, so I'm watching this week. I'd like to, like, give it a few days. I'm going to just settle a little bit, like, mentally in because I've been been in training camp for the last 10, 12 weeks. So I'll just be away from it for a little bit. But I'll watch it at the end of this week, and I'll see from there. But I definitely knew going to the judges' scorecard that I won, you know. Um, and that, that was my mentality. I was worried for your sake uh, with the with the fouls and the point deduction yeah. that the tide was going to turn. What was going on there? Yeah. I mean, that was like four uh, questionable moments there. And then the fence grab obviously was the one that led to the point deduction. Yeah. What was going on? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm throwing body kicks because I'm soft for his orthodox. As I'm throwing the kicks, he's kind of like stepping forward, right? Then he, he's in some court in his balls, some court him here and there, but. Um, like I said, it is what it is. Um, the first grab that was just I watched it, but I said that part that was that was the first grab. <laughs> yes. So you had no problems <laughs> with that, right? I mean, you... uh, no, no, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't thought it was enough to take a point away straight away without even say like final warning, don't do it again, or like, like a stern warning, then take the point away. But um, yeah, I think that made me a little bit more aggressive go, go, um, to finish the round off and um, just thinking, okay, I need to do more because now I'm down on the point, you know. Could you describe the emotions when they said that you had won compared to August in Salt Lake City? Completely different circumstance, right? Yeah. But ha- this time, you don't know if you're going to get the win, and it's the defense at home. But like, could you compare how you felt Saturday in that moment compared to in August when they raised your hand? Um, I think August is at a more emotional time, right? Because leading into that fight, it's like it was a must. Like, well, this was a mess, was a must win as well. But I feel like this was like a August was like a must win, you know, it's been a long road. They didn't want you to be here anyway. They didn't want you to fight for the title. Um, so I thought all that was just the emotions that came out in August. You know, I think with this one, I, I, I knew I was going to win, you know, I, I knew the moment was going to be mine, you know, and um, that was the mentality all week. And so when, when, when they announced the winner, obviously I, I was excited. My team was excited. Um, you, the fans were excited for it. But yeah, I think August, as far as like emotion wise, was, was way better for sure. Was your mom there in attendance on Saturday? Um, no, she, she weren't. No, uh, I tried to get her to come, but for some reason, she just doesn't want to come to the fights. You know, she's never been in number fights, amateur or pro. Wow. Even my brother's fights, even even my brother fights. You know, she just liked to watch it on TV, um, and that's what she did. Yeah. Wow. So even this one, she didn't come. But did she watch it live or after the fact? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, watched it live. She was at Renegade. Um, okay. all, all my team watching yeah. it at Renegade. Um, but for some reason, she doesn't want to be in in the arena and um. But yeah, hopefully one day we can get her to come, you know. When did you find out that Colby was coming over as the backup fighter? My understanding was it was weeks ago. He told the media he found out on Tuesday. Uh, that seems I a little... Thought, I found out on Wednesday when it was said Colby weighed in. I was like, what? Colby weighed in. You didn't, didn't know? know was... No. No one told you? I found out on the weighing day when I, when I, when I, when I seen on, on Twitter that Colby's commentary was weighed in. I was like, what? What are they weighing in for? Then obviously it makes sense that he was a backup fighter, right? But... Um, but wait a second, yeah, shouldn't just, you know that? Shouldn't they tell you that beforehand? Did it? Yeah, well, fight week though, right? Yeah, yeah. fight week. Fight week? But that, that, that's still, yeah, that's still like, what, two days before the, the fight, three days before the fight. It's like, it makes us, like for me, like it makes no sense, right? Like, the man ain't done much. He's coming off what? Coming off a loss. Beat, beat 
um, mustered out. That's it. Sat out for like a year and a half, went to court. I don't get like how the case for him to fight for the title is, is, is they're trying to make it, you know, it doesn't make sense to me at all. I'm I'm baffled by this and I'm gonna talk about it more when 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 we say goodbye yeah. to you, but I just don't understand how not fighting for a year gets you the title shot, especially when you have other guys who have been active. Guys like Bilal, yeah. who you have a history yeah. with, who's on a winning streak, guys like Burns, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And then what yeah. bothers me the most about it is like if this was boxing or any other combat sport, the champ has like yeah. Canelo has a say, Tyson Fury has yeah. a say, Katie Taylor has a say. Do you not have a say? That's the part that I, 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 I definitely have a say, you know. And listen, you didn't get in the power shot next. Like, look at the road I, I, I had to take to get there, right? There's no way you get beat twice by the guy I just beat twice. Um, went out there, beat, win, beat, beat Mustard out, and then sit out for a year and a half, not even tweeting or nothing, just go missing for a year. And then randomly pops up at the Waynes and be like, okay, he's fine for the title next. Like, it makes no sense, like, at all, you know. So, um, yeah, let's see. Let's see how, how it plays out. But like I said, he has to go out there um, and his way like I did, I had to do. Uh, Hamza, him and Hamza will be contra out for uh, years. This is a guy that I got matched up with three times in a row. Um, that I took the fight, you know, and he didn't take the fight. And then he got, he's getting rewarded for not taking the fight. When, when it was me, my I got removed, removed out of rankings, yes. you know, so... Mate, this Dana White privilege is definitely real. <laughs> it's a crazy thing, man. It's a cra- so so. To be clear, if they present this to you guys, you're gonna say no. I'm not doing this. Um, yeah, I feel like it needs at least one more fight. Okay. You know, I think um, everyone else is fighting and working the way to get to a title shot. So why should he be sitting out for a year, not doing nothing, and then randomly sliding to the title shot? You know, um, I feel like he, he should go out there and fight. Um, one of the top five guys, top six guys, and. We'll go from there. There's literally no clear contender right now, you know, and um, I feel like all we're like one fight away from the world title. So I'll sit back on my throne and I'll, I'll have a look. <laughs> it, it seems to me choice number one, if Masvidal wins, that's your that's your first choice. If he doesn't win, do you think it's Gilbert or do you think it's someone else? No. Nah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, there's no clear contenders, right? I think the only, the only reason why... Master a lot of chance because of what the history of the yeah. history of the fight that's on the fight and what's behind it and the fact that I don't like him, you know. But um, if he does lose, then like I said, there's no clear number one contender that's actually earned it, you know. So I feel like all oh, one fight away from fight for the world title. So let 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 them figure it out, and from there I'm I'm ready for whoever, you know. Uh, in a perfect world, I know you just fought, but when do you think you want to return? Um, probably late summer, probably. Okay. Late summer, August. Yeah, yeah. You're healthy? Um, um yeah, my, my, my feet's a bit banged up from kicking. Um his, his knees and his elbows like landed a few times and so it's a bit swollen up. I'm gonna get scanned um this week and then go from there. But yeah, apart from that, it's all like the same bumps and bruises. You know? The gate was insane, almost nine million US dollars. Do you do you wanna come the highest, back? highest gate the highest, highest gate ever at O2 Crazy history. man. Think about all the people uh, who have fought there, you know, all the legends right. who have fought there, who have competed there, all the events there. Um, do you want to go back to the UK? Like, does it make sense to just keep you in the UK for now? Um, yeah, for sure. To be fair, I'll fight wherever my career's built, been built on the road, right? But uh, the, the fans and the, the reaction that um that the, the, the I got and the, and the event got, it only makes sense, right, to bring it back to the UK to to keep feeding the UK fans. Like, we've support mixed martial arts and the UFC now for a long time, you know, in the UK. So I feel we should keep bringing big cards um, back to the UK and just keep building the sport can only ricochet back down into the gyms and back into growing the sport you know what about Aston Villa Stadium in August beautiful why not that right back why home. not that why not that why not that you know like like I said the stadium show gets sold out like that you know like straight away so um, we're in talks with the UFC about what's next and um, hopefully this week so I'll definitely put it, put it on the table and yeah see where to go from there are they paying up are they treating you well what's going on yeah, they're playing all right, but yeah. I feel I feel like I feel like the, the next one will be the will be the one, you know. I feel like um the, the next one is like I want them beat the pound for pound so called number one welterweight of all time twice in a row. You know, this is this is the same guy that knocked out Kobe twice, that beat Kobe twice, beat Marcelo twice, beat Burns. These are the same guys, you know. So um yeah, I feel like now it's time for me to get my dues. Been twelve fight in a row now, twelve thirteen fight in a row. 
been a long, been a long time and out my way. Like I said, no one handed over nothing to me. And so now it's time for me to get paid and yeah, run it up. It's crazy how, how time has changed, right? Like yeah. three, three years ago, era, like through COVID and shit. Maybe. It's crazy. <laughs> This, oh, this was actually going to be my last question. Is it like, we've talked yeah. about this a little bit, but I can't get over, yeah. you know, Colby calling you a different name, the disrespect Gilbert and his manager getting mad at me for even suggesting that you should fight him for the number one contender fight. Usman not even considered. Now all these dudes are coming to you and begging you for the shot. You have to sit back yeah. and laugh at all this. Like, how, like, isn't this incredible? The turn of events. I've never seen anything like this in the history of MMA, how the tides have turned in one man's yeah. favor like this. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, I sit back and just chocolate them. Now, you know, it's like, mate, I told you, you know, that this time will come, you know, but now here we are, the Rockies era, and it's going to be a Rocket era for a long time, you know, so. It's going to be a good, good, good fun ride. I freaking love it. Uh, congratulations, Leon. Thank you, Thank you so much Thank for you, coming bro. on. All the best. Enjoy the victory. And uh, I, I couldn't be happier for you, man. You really, really deserve okay. it. You took the long route. You did it your way, the hard way. And, you know, I, I'm thrilled. So thank you so much. And we'll talk to you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye. All right. There he is. The one and only Leon Rocky Edwards. Oh, Rocky Edwards. How could you not be happy for that guy? How could you not be happy for a guy that everyone shat on, who no one wanted to give an opportunity to, laughed in his face, called him Leon Scott, laughed at the notion of him fighting for the number one contender fight. Do you remember the battles that I used to have with, with DC and Chael and everyone on Twitter about this guy? And now you see all of them flying over there, begging to put their, you know, stamp. And now we're going to give Colby Covington, who has, you know, all due respect, one of the best welterweights in the world, lost his two title fights, coming off one win over a year ago. And I hear, oh, he flew over, he flew over and made weight, so he deserves it. Well, all right, uh, you know, that doesn't always, it doesn't always work out like that. So are you telling me that if Anthony Smith made weight back in January, he was getting a title shot? He wasn't getting a title shot. He was not. The backup fighter isn't always the guy. All right. It doesn't always work out that way. You're trying to tell me back in the day when Pettis fought Holloway, Moicano, when he had to make weight, was he going to get a title shot? No, he wasn't. All right. Enough with this. Enough of the squatting. I've been talking about the welterweights squatting on their spot for years. You know who wasn't squatting on their spot? You know who was the one guy who took every single fight and ate every shit sandwich that was served up to him? That fucking guy. That's the guy that was crapped on. That's the guy that got removed from the rankings when it wasn't even his fault. He's trying to fight Hamza Chemaev. When Hamza was the boogeyman, no one wanted to fight him at 170 and 180, 85. He's fighting him. He signs up to fight him three times. Three freaking times. Signed up to fight Masvidal. Masvidal had to withdraw from the fight. Signed up to fight everyone. Now he's getting his moment. I don't care if you're the biggest Kobe fan, Usman fan, Gilbert fan, freaking Izzy fan, Francis fan, Volk fan, Islam fan. How could you not be happy? Because all of us feel like we've been crapped on. All of us feel like we've been dealt the bad hand for a guy who, you know, like there's something so beautiful and poetic about this whole situation. Not only did it all turn in his favor, not only is he now the man smiling, freaking sitting up there like this, right? Not only is he the freaking guy, is he the star? Is he one of the best pound for pound fighters on the planet? Not only is he the guy that is bringing the UFC back to the UK and, and, and drawing a $9 million gate that's freaking Las Vegas numbers. At the O2, think about all the big names at the O2 who have fought at the O2. From Bisping and, and those guys to, to boxing, everyone's begging to fight him. Oh, uh, it's amazing. Leon fighting in Abu Dhabi against Islam. What are you talking about? Bro, this guy, all of a sudden, Leon Edwards, this is, this is guys, this is no cap. This is one of the biggest draws in MMA. How many people are, 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 are selling $9 million gates? Quiet Leon, unassuming Leon, hardworking Leon. Oh my God. What a freaking moment. Let's, I'm, I'm so hyped right now. I'm so, it, it's nice when for, you know, from time to time, the good guys win. And, 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 and for the record, not suggest, I have no issues with Kamaru Usman whatsoever. He had an unbelievable run. He did it the right way. He, he, he didn't cheat. He didn't cut corners. He fought all comers. Um, but there's something about this guy who's, you know, not a showman, not a braggadocious guy, doesn't puff his chest out, does, you know, not exactly the best of self-promoters, but he's a freaking good fighter. He's a freaking amazing fighter. And when he is on like he was on Saturday, he is on. First round to him, fourth round to him, 
fifth round to him. Third round was a 10-8 for Usman. Usman won the round. He was going to win 10-9 point deduction. And second round was what it came down to, in my opinion. And that was a 10-9 for Leon. I know New York Rick is all fired up as well. So is GC. Let's bring in the guys here and talk more about this. We've got some time. I can't, I mean, what about this, guys? Uh, New York Rick, we've been covering this sport a long time. Yeah. The, the, the turn of events here for Leon Edwards. I mean, he's talking about, like, you remember those pandemic interviews I was doing with him for ESPN? Yep. Like, I remember them well. Depressed he was. Now look at his demeanor. Now look at him fighting on the stage that was Saturday, the O2. This is up there with one of the best stories that we've ever, I, I, I think, that we've ever seen in MMA. Yeah, I tweeted out on Saturday, or did I do it Sunday, that Leon Edwards got this through the mud. Man, like the winning streak he was on, the number of times he signed up to fight Hamzat Shemaev. I don't care that ultimately like the Nate Diaz fight was the fight that gets him over the top um, because that's the fight that was presented to him. That's the fight that they wanted him to fight. Um, he earned it the hard way, um, very much like Bilal Muhammad is, is having to do right now. He earned it the hard way. So anybody who has a problem with what he's saying about wanting to control his destiny and choose who he fights and be the one to make that decision needs to just kick rocks. Like, just go away. I, I don't want to hear it. Like, he he should be the one who now finally broke through, beat Kamaru Usman, who's a pound-for-pound pound great, defended it, did it again. He should be the one determining his own future. There's, there's certainly something to say about fighting top contenders. He's right that there's not a, a clear one in my opinion, other than Bilal Muhammad. I think if you're doing meritocracy, it's it, there's only the name Bilal Muhammad. He should be able to control his destiny. He should be able to choose his fight. There's a built-in storyline with Masvidal, so I don't understand why that's not an automatic kind of um, first option. Um, so you know what the people say about Masvidal, right? Because I agree. I agree. See, see to me, this is how it should go. It should go, um, first of all, can we just talk about the lunacy of almost diminishing the importance. Like when that fight was over, I was like, man, they just got a big one on their hands in less than a month, right? In in three weeks in Miami. Now it feels like Gilbert Burns versus Jorge Masvidal could be billed as a number one contender fight, right? And what do you do? You go out to the post-fight press conference and you just diminish it. You just say the stakes are nothing for that fight. What? Yeah. How is that? This is like demoting, not promoting. Like, let's see how it plays out. By the way, same guy who has told us time and again he doesn't make fights on Saturday all of a sudden had the whole thing laid out on Saturday. What? What is going on? And to do that without the champion's desires, wishes, the guy who just generated a $9 million gate, and you can't tell me that it wasn't because of him because what did the last card do? Right, the last card in London six months ago, seven eight months ago, didn't do nine million. The one in March of last year with Patty, the big star, didn't do nine million. So clearly, this guy means something to those people, right? There was only one title fight on the card. It wasn't like there was three. And so you're not even going to talk to him. You're going to have Colby, um, who has been disrespecting him for. And 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 again, Colby's great, but you got to go out and win a fight. So I can know. I know what the other people are going to say. Well, what about how could you say Masvidal? Well, what the difference is is Masvidal, love Masvidal, jumped him. Masvidal jumped Leon Edwards in 2019, and he never had to answer to that. And I said it, and his team got mad at me time and again. You jumped him, all right? You deserve, there should be some sort of reckoning here. The same way Khabib and Connor had to fight after the dolly, those guys had to fight. Now, they tried to make the fight, what was it, Twenty late 2021, got injured, moved on, got the title shot. So that's why Masvidal, if he beats a Gilbert Burns, should be considered. But the truth is, but if Gilbert Burns wins on April 8th, it, it should be down to Gilbert or Bilal Muhammad. And, and, and there's a story with Bilal. For sure. The, the eye poke. Can I just say something? I agree with you regarding the fact that there's a built-in storyline that Leon got jumped and should want retribution. But I don't think you even need to think that deeply about it. Colby Covington, like people want to talk about Mas, the Masvidal loss uh, to Colby Covington. I get it. Yeah, Masvidal lost to, Coving, to Covington heads up. It's been a rough run for Jorge Masvidal. But are we acting like Colby Covington has some kind of like ironclad case to be in a title conversation? No. Since since Jorge Masvidal's run of success, he's beaten Jorge. He has the win over the guy that you're questioning whether he should deserve this opportunity and Tyron Woodley. It's not been some tremendous run for Colby Covington. He's been sitting out and he's got two losses to Usman um, sandwiched between a win over Tyron Woodley and a win over Masvidal. So it's not like Colby Covington is some deserving champion. He's going to sell the fight, but so is Jorge Masvidal. I'm not trying to 
say that I have an issue with Colby Covington getting a title shot. I said it on Twitter and, and I got some pushback against it. My issue is why do we need to have it declared on fight night? Why can't we wait to see how Jorge and Gilbert plays out? What is the rush? What is the reason? Oh, because he made Col- weight. Because he flew out there. Doesn't make sense. It makes no <laughs> sense. There's no reason that Colby Covington should have been promised that opportunity unless there's something that I'm not aware of, unless there's something behind the scenes that I'm not aware of. Wait three weeks. Just wait three weeks and see how Jorge Masvidal plays out. It's not a competition between Jorge Masvidal and Colby Covington of who gets the shot. It's a, t- it's a competition amongst all the welterweights. If you're going to make it a meritocracy, it's Bal- Bilal Muhammad and there's nobody else. There's literally nobody else that can make the case that Bal- Bilal Muhammad can make if you're going to talk about who earned it by fighting, the same way Leon did. But if you're going to make the case about selling pay-per-views and entertainment that Colby Covington brings, I get it. But so does the storyline between Leon Edwards and Jorge Masvidal when he jumped him, and now this is his chance at retribution. And not for nothing, that's the fight Leon Edwards wants. And I think that should carry some weight, and I think that should mean something. That's the point right there. So I don't have a problem with Colby Covington getting a title shot. I need to make that clear because I think Colby Covington's fan base is, is a little bit devoid of critical thinking and comprehension skills when it comes to this. Colby Covington can get a title shot. That's fine. But we can wait three weeks to determine that. We can wait to see how Jorge Masvidal's fight plays out. Yo, 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 and yo, yo, if yo. he wins. Let me be very clear. He doesn't deserve a title shot. What do you mean? How could you be fine with it? How could you be fine with it even in three weeks? How could I be fine if he gets a title shot? Yeah. Because what are the, you only, talking about? the only one who has a better case is Bilal Muhammad. So give it to him. Sure. By the way, there's, That's a, be- fine by way, there's a better story with Bilal and Leon than there is with Colby sure. and Leon. I'm they fine fought with- and it ended unceremoniously. I'm fine with any of them. Listen, I'm fine this with is going to make those. Bilal's head spin because he has this idea in his mind that I have some agenda. I, I have no agenda against him. I think he's a fantastic fighter. I have no issues with him whatsoever. He should be fucking pissed off right now. He should sure. be absolutely pissed off that they're trying to make him versus Shavkat Rahmanov in July and 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 Colby's going to waltz into a title. Tetra- this guy's right. Leon's right. Colby hasn't said a peep. All of a sudden, now he's popping up everywhere. Hasn't said a peep since last March. Hasn't said a peep since last March. And this, and then, and this is the best. Everyone's gonna be like, "You're only saying this because Colby doesn't come on your show." You think Bilal's coming on my show? <laughs> you fucking morons! He ain't coming on my show. There's a better chance of Colby coming on my show than Bilal at this point. Point is, Sean Brady, Vicente Luque, Wonder Boy Thompson, Damian Maya, Leon No Contest, Diego Lima, Lyman Good, Takashi Sato, Curtis Millinder. That's Bilal's run. That is more impressive than anything that... And, and that's dating back to 2019. You know what Colby has done dating back to 2019? Masvidal win. Usman lost, title shot number two. Woodley win. Usman lost, title shot number one. Robbie Lawler. That's his run. That's his run since 2019. Oh, by the way, Gilbert Burns, more active. Magni win. Fighting Masvidal, you can add that if he wins in three weeks. Hamza lost, tremendous, but did get the loss. Steven Thompson win. Usman title shot number one loss. Woodley win, Maya win, Gunnar Nelson win. That's a more impressive run than 100%. what Colby has done. And he got two shots at the belt. You can make a case right now. Like, first off, if Hamza was still a 170-pounder, I would say just do Hamza. It. Just do it. Yep. It clearly seems like he's not. God bless. Then it's Bilal. Then it's Gilbert. If Masvidal yeah. wins, I would jump him up because of the story. And because, as you said, the champ should have a say in this matter. I can assure you... Every champ has some kind of say, and and it's not right that this guy has no say in the matter. This guy was jumped. He deserves a say, and guess what? Masvidal versus Leon, if Masvidal somehow turns back the clock and beats Gilbert, is bigger business than that's, Leon versus Colby. That's what I was just about to ask you. Why is there an assumption that Colby is bigger business? I don't understand it. How is Leon versus Jorge not a bigger fight? Makes no sense. It, it you, all of this crazy? is backwards. I feel like I'm crazy. The notion that we're always told we don't make fights on Saturday. The notion that just because he weighed in, he's the automatic guy. The notion that he hasn't fought in a year. Like I feel like we've heard this. You got to be active. You got to fight. You can't turn down fights. Remember when we heard Dustin Poirier was scared? Remember, like they've told us themselves that they've tried to make Hamza. Remember they were supposed to do Hamza versus Colby on ABC in July. Remember yeah. that? Like they've told us themselves this, and now I mean, we don't want to. We don't want to roll back the footage of Colby Covington talking about how inactive Leon Edwards was and why he shouldn't be in the top because that that would be pretty damning for Colby Covington's case. Again, I think it's important to make clear though. For, you you said Colby shouldn't get it. I'm fine with Colby getting it because I'm okay with the entertainment of it. I don't think meritocracy exists in the UFC anymore, and I and I'm okay if Colby Co- Covington ultimately gets a title shot. 
But I just don't understand the rush. I don't understand the rush. It makes zero sense. There's not one reason that I can legitimately think of that it makes sense to not wait three weeks and see if Jorge. And even if you wait three weeks, Jorge Masvidal wins that fight and has a great performance. Even then, make the decision, okay, you know what? It wasn't a good enough performance and we don't think the story's there. We'll, get, we'll give it to Colby Covington. I'm still fine with that. But why now? Why now? It, it just it, it feels rushed. There's no reason. There's not a reason I can think of. GC, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I'm 100% with you. I mean, by the way, I love how fired up y'all are getting about this. I'm I was so just letting y'all, I mean, I was just letting so y'all go. I mean, you guys, you guys are ready to go. Uh, I'm with you guys. Why, why do we have to rush it? Why can't we wait? It's, it's right there on a platter for us in, in three weeks in Miami. Jorge Masvidal in front of his home crowd. Imagine if he's able to get back on the winning track. He can find, you know, maybe a knockout against Gilbert Burns. The whole crowd goes crazy. He gets on the mic. He calls out Leon Edwards. You know, let's finally settle this. Uh, after what happened backstage years ago. I mean, it just it just feels like it there. And then Burns as well. If Burns just keeps on winning, I mean, who'd you say his two losses were to? Hamza Shumayev and Kamaru Usman? Mm. Like, he, he's got a fantastic resume as well. And then and then Bilal, too. Like, if you're going off of the resume, it, it does feel weird. Though I do lean to Rick's side in the terms of I don't mind Colby getting a shot because it will be entertaining. It will sell pay-per-views. Uh, and he is one of the top welterweights in the world. Um, but, yeah, the rush to me just feels unnecessary. Listen, if, if, if Burns and Masvidal fight to some kind of draw... And and Bilal is injured, then yeah, it makes total sense to give. You can, you can just always no, have the option. You can it's, like, there's no reason like the Dana guys on Saturday night. title fights. It's okay, not let me only ask, meritocracy. Okay, let me ask you though. this. Let me ask you this. Of course, if, it's not only meritocracy. Let me ask you this, Eric. Let me ask you this. So what? If in Usman would have won on Saturday, even, let me let me just ask you this. In your mind, do we even need to wait for the Jorge fight? Are you do, going the opposite direction where it's just like let's do Bilal no. right away? Hey, listen, if, okay. If so I was promoting the UFC, I would say I would go to that press conference on Saturday and say. I tell you what, guys. I'll tell you what, boys. Uh, the stakes just got raised for yeah. April 8th. Tune in on ESPN Plus pay-per-view okay, so, because now that fight is even bigger. So then you can't point... I would say that you can't counter with Colby's resume if that's your argument, right? You can't, Let me you can't counter be with propping this. up Jorge and, and yes, counter that... I am going to prop up Jorge. Colby's, you know why? Colby's resume is not good you, enough. You know, why I'll pro- them is. you know why I'll prop up Jorge? Number one, a win over Gilbert Burns is bigger than a win over Jorge. And those will be their last ones. Yeah, number one. Fair. Number two, let me ask you this. But neither of them is any sure. is having a good run right but now. But could I ask Let's you this say, question? Real. If Kamar Usman would have won on Saturday, would Colby have gone in the title shot? No, no, no. shot. That's so then what the hell are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? What, what are we doing? Then it can't be based on who has the belt all the time. Like, it, 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 that makes no sense. It ha- there has to be some level of merit involved. If Usman won that fight on Saturday, what would the promise have then been to Colby? You can't tell me that you promised it because there's no way you could sell a third fight uh, with Usman and Kobe when he's 2-0. and oh. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate what you did. Here's your 40K. It didn't work out for you. God bless. You know, what I thought was so we'll, weird. We'll, we'll was, give you Bilal in the summer or something Was that like someone that. threw it out to Dana and was just like, well, what about Miami in a few weeks? And he yeah. was just like, nope, it's Kobe. Doesn't okay. matter what happens. Don't get there. that. I just don't understand doing that. I'm okay with Kobe for the title, fighting for the title, but I do not get that. I do not understand that. Listen, I give Leon a lot of props for saying no here. We'll see what happens. You know, maybe they just up the ante and pay him, and and then God bless. Then he wins again, right? Like he's at least sticking to his guns. I just I don't feel comfortable in in prize fighting, especially when there's a champion, and especially a champion who just made you a lot of money. I don't feel comfortable. And look, I I, I heard Dana talking about uh, someone asked him at the press conference. Uh, who was it? I think it was Donna Corby asked him about um, Fury Usyk. And he's like, this is it. This is boxing. This is what you guys want. Like, this is why the UFC is better. We make the fights. And there is a level of truth. Like, we don't see these situations play out like we do in boxing. We talked about this last week, how it gets a little tiresome seeing all this back and forth. But I do not feel comfortable when it's just like, hey, champ, here's who's next. No, there has to be some sort of discussion. There has to be. And by the way, let alone the fact that like he just found out at the way, I guess his manager knew, Tim knew and didn't tell him. What? Just found out at the weigh-ins? I mean, I can understand if his manager didn't tell him to not mess with his head, you know, like why, why is Also, why are they here? finding out a week before? Yeah. I don't anyway, know. That, that, that's besides the point at this point. He should have a say. He should have a say. He should In fact, have I, say. I would say he should have the biggest say, um, but yeah. that, that's a potentially a dicey territory because all of a sudden you might be wanting to fight only money fights and not fight any contenders. I think it's it's a negotiation. It's a negotiation. But also, objectively, objectively, and I keep coming back to this, 
Jorge Masvidal versus Leon Edwards is the biggest fight they can make to me. I don't I don't understand why we're so ready to to rush on from that. Let's just wait. Let us just wait. What is the rush? What is the rush? Why are we discounting that right away? Leon wants it. It would be big business for the UFC. Jorge Masvidal is a draw. Let's just wait. Let's just wait. And you know what? We could all be sitting here in three weeks and have egg on our face. Jorge Masvidal goes in there, turns back the clock, calls out Leon Edwards, and all of a sudden you say, they say, you know what? Maybe we're going to reverse course. Maybe we're going to change our minds and give him exactly what he wants. I'm willing to, I'm willing to accept that if they're, if they're willing to do it. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't understand why that fight needed to be made on Saturday night. I don't get it. And I will continue to knock. Let's it. let's take a step back because we 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 jumped into what's next before really celebrating Saturday. Yeah. How did you guys score the fight, uh, GC? I know you were on the watch party. Um, like I said, I had it one, two, four, and five for Leon. Three point deduction, ten eight for Usman. Had no problem, by the way, with the point deduction, and I'm happy that he had no problem. I I honestly don't think that there should have been a warning. Like that was clear. I actually think that there's a case that could be made when you get into those situations that it's a point deduction and you got to start on the bottom because you were headed to the bottom. You got, mm. you were headed to the mat. I actually feel like, cause then like if I'm fighting, you don't know though, you, you, you can't say with a hundred percent certainty that he was going to go to the mat. It sucks, but you can't say with a hundred percent certainty. So I, I understand, but yeah, so if I was fighting suck. Hamza Chamaev in there, I just keep taking the points and be like, <laughs> if I, we're just going to stand, if we're just going to keep standing, like you have to he, punish He might them. beat you up on the feet too. He's, oh, he he's would definitely thousand thousand absolute come savage. On, let's, let's, let's Kill me in four here. seconds. No, GC, I didn't How did you, you score it? In real time, going round by round, like we obviously score the fight as, as we're watching it on the watch party. I ended up with a scorecard of a draw, but as the fight was ending, I was like, this this is gonna be Leon winning it. I scored it one four and five for Leon, and then two for Usman and three for Usman with the point deduction. But the two and three, like it wasn't something that I was confidently saying. Like, but in real time, I scored it forty seven forty seven. Uh, though I have zero issue at all with the forty eight forty six. And if I went back and rewatched the fight, uh, I could probably see myself getting around to that. Rick, yeah. I had it forty eight forty six. Leon, I had it. First round for Leon, second round for Kamaru, um, third round for uh, Leon, fourth round for Leon, fifth round for Leon. Yeah, so same as me. Uh, what about the rest? No, I did not have the third round for Kamaru. Oh, really? I had it 9-9. Nine, nine. Yeah. Wow, so you didn't give Kamaru any rounds? No, the second round. Oh, you did give them the second round? I gave him the oh, second okay. round. okay, sorry, 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 sorry. And I, and I gave uh, Leon the third round. Uh, I know that it seems to be based on the cards and, and the, the topic of conversation that rounds two and four are kind of the swing rounds, right? It seems like I thought it was clearer in my first watch that Kamaru had won the second round. That seems to be a little more debatable. The judges did not give it to him. I think only one. Um, and the fourth round seemed to be more clear in people's eyes than mine for Kamaru Usman. Um, but even if you swap those, any kind of configuration, you're ultimately ending up with 48, 46 uh, Leon or 47 47 draw the way you get to the 48 46 for Kamara which I don't think any most people got to there's definitely some but I don't think most people would have gotten to you'd have to score two three and four right for for Kamaru, which I think is tough I, I didn't see three rounds in there that I would for the draw to go, go. Or to, or no for that's win. for Usman to win okay, yeah no, you'd have I don't to think have it, scored the I thought at worst for Leon it would be a draw yeah. which he would retain the belt anyway that was where I went but I had I had it for Leon to me, the big story was the 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 wrestling from Leon Edwards. Absolutely, the takedown yeah. defense. A, the way in which he was stopping takedowns. B, the way in which he was stopping the fight from going to the cage. C, the way in which he was popping up after being taken down. Like there were very few moments, like we saw in the second fight in uh, in Salt Lake City, second, third, and fourth rounds, like we saw in their first fight back in Orlando in 2015. I mean, it was like a completely different guy out there. I was talking to DC today. Again, shout out, happy birthday. And he was like, when he came to AKA, Leon came to AKA at the beginning of his UFC career. He didn't know how to wrestle at all. He had no idea how to wrestle. Like he, like you could take him down at ease. To see that guy against someone as good as Kamar Usman on Saturday just keep popping back up or just stopping the shots, I was blown away by that because we all thought Usman's going to try to take the fight to the ground. He's going to try to make it dirty, keep him close, use the wrestling, maybe not the prettiest fight of all time, but just get the W and get back on track. And that was clear what the game plan was. Mm. Leon was fantastic. I thought tactically Usman was a little late to try, start trying the takedowns. I feel like he, he could have been more aggressive with them earlier when he had more gas in the tank. I saw something from Kamaru Usman I've never seen before, which is he gassed out pretty 
heavily. Like he was just the punches were sluggish by the end. The shots were telegraphed. He just was not the the Kamar Usman that I'm used to seeing in terms of the the cardio and the ability to kind of um, be uh, dangerous late in the fight. Um, but if you tell me that the fight is going to play out in the middle. Primarily, if you tell me that Kamaru Usman is going to have a tough time getting Leon against the cage, if you tell me once he gets Leon against the cage, he's going to have a tough time keeping him there, Leon is going to win that fight 10 times out of 10. That that particular style matchup with the way Leon was able to fight, where he was able to circle off Kamaru's um, clinches and keep the fight in the middle, and when he was in the middle, do a lot of damage with those kicks, to the, the oblique kicks and the kicks to the body, um, just peppering Kamaru. That's a hard fight for Kamara to win. I don't see how he how he can win that fight. He needs to be much more effective in the takedowns. He needs to be doing it earlier, um, and he just did not seem to have that. And Leon seemed to be firing on all cylinders. So I was very impressed with Leon. Um, I was a little bit disappointed with what I saw from Kamara Usman. Um, he didn't look as good as I had seen in the past. But as I mentioned, and many have mentioned, this is not the 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 peak of Kamara Usman's career, right? We're on the back nine yeah. now. Um, and is time catching up to him, um, or is it maybe other things in mind, right, seeing the finish line and, and potentially not being as as aggressive toward it? Um, but all that said, the thing that I took away the most uh, from the Kamara Usman side of that is, A, what a great champion he was to have, and B, the comments after the fight, like, that was, that was incredible stuff. Like, I, I almost got a little choked up. I'm almost getting choked up right now. To be that humble a champion and to kind of, like, pass— <clears throat> Excuse me. That wasn't me getting choked. Wow, up. I was That's just like, like, holy shit. No, no, no. I wasn't <laughs> wow, that choked. I wasn't that knew? choked. <laughs> um, but to pass the baton in that way um, was very classy, like super classy in that moment. There's a lot of, of fighters who would either kind of no sell it or, or kind of take the opportunity to say, like, I have to get back in there and, and kind of come back. He went straight to giving Leon Edwards credit and straight to talking about um, that rivalry and, and putting that to bed and saying maybe, you know, we'll see each other again. But um, I was very impressed with how Kamaru handled that. And I think he's shifting into a new part in his career, but I think he deserves a ton of credit for for the way he handled that post-fight, oh, in my opinion. Yeah, he's uh, 35, about to turn 36 in May. Um I, I think it's a very fair and complimentary statement to say Kamar Usman overachieved, right? Like when he came into the UFC, when he came into MMA, mm. I don't think anyone thought that he would go down as one of the best welterweight champions of all time. And that's what he's become. Winning the yep. Ultimate Fighter, he wasn't really a heralded name, goes on this amazing run. Like there's nothing to be ashamed of. In fact, I feel like we've we've talked there's still some fight left and he's still one of the best welterweights in the so world too. yep but you know we were wondering how he would respond from the knockout we would wonder we wondered how historically you lose the title you come back immediately you're losing that second fight you lose the title via finish via knockout you're definitely losing that second fight that's what the stats that's what the the yeah. the, the, the history book says and we focused a lot and the more interesting story to talk about is leon edwards and what's next for him but I, I actually feel like it's it's really interesting to talk about what's next for Kamar Usman mm -hmm. now after this. Absolutely. And I'm not sure. Obviously, some things need to play out, right? Like, if Masvidal loses to Burns, you're not doing Masvidal and 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 Usman three. There's there's absolutely no interest in that. The other names that are available, um, it, it sounds to me like they're going to try to do Bilal versus Shavkat in the summertime. You know, is there is there a desire to see Stephen Wonderboy Thompson versus Usman? I don't think so. Um, you've got Jeff Neal coming off a loss. You've got Sean Brady coming. I don't hate to, the Sean Brady one, by the way. To what end, though? Is Kamaru Usman trying to be a top welterweight again? Is that the goal? But, I mean, who, el who else is out there? It, there's th This is my take on it, and I don't uh, imagine Kamaru Usman agrees with it. But the fights that I would want to see for Kamaru Usman are at 185 Whoa. or Hamza Shamayev. I would like to. I, I would be okay with a 170 against Hamza, but you could even do that at 85. He's done everything at 170. If he's trying to climb that mountaintop again, more power to him. I, I wish him good luck, but that's not what I'm particularly interested in. I've seen him against so many of these top contenders. I'm not really like itching for that. And I also think with, as long as Leon is champion, it's going to be a hard road back there, the same way um, Colby Covington had to sit out for so long um, to get back and the champion had to change hands. Um, so I would I would take a Hamza fight, or I'd rather see him take a crack at 85. If it goes well, stay there. If it doesn't, maybe you know, call it a day, spend time with the daughter that, that he continues um, to praise and, and spend so much time with. And, and I think it's a, an awesome story. Um, his bond with her, just, just, you know, take the, take the money and run. 
Um, so that's how. So that's you want to see would... him fight at eighty five or him fight Hamzat at one seventy? Hamzat 170? or at one seventy or eighty five or eighty five. I'm I'm not interested in Kamar Usman against top one seventy contenders for one reason. He might be still good enough to kind of knock them off, and then we're in a bad position. Um, where the the contender the contenders are not going to feel fresh anymore. But also, like, I've seen him against so many of these guys. Like, it's the same names that are still at the top outside of Shavkat Rachmanov. Um, I'm okay with him t- chasing other types of opportunities, and I think he'd be fine at 85. He, he, now, if it, if it doesn't go well, call it, walk away, walk away. I kind of his, his legacy versus seven, Sean Brady. For what though? I don't know. It's an interesting style. What if he wins? Now you just knocked off Sean Brady for no reason. He could definitely win, yeah. I mean, that feels like a big jump. For, it was a big... Uh, I, mean, I mean, I know he f- just fought Bilal, who's, who's on a fantastic win streak of his own. This all like, depends on where Kamar, Kamar Usman sees himself in his career. Right. Does he want to be a 170-pound contender I don't see anymore? Kamar Usman taking the Sean Brady fight. Kamar Usman fighting at 85 just seems... I don't know. May, 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 it doesn't seem like he has to cut an enormous amount of weight. A year away. ago, he wanted to go to 205. Yeah, it's true. He wanted to fight Jan Bohovic. C- crazy how quickly things change in this oh game, Oh, my right? gosh. That's no. that's the biggest thing I've learned about this We sport. went from talking about it Canelo. instantaneous. There's some, there's some matchup Canelo. advantages at 85 that I think Kamar Usman could, could play to that could take advantage. Kamaru versus Alex Pereira. Who wins? Oh, come on. Man. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to favor Alex, but, I mean, Why is that a crazy on? fight? No. No, it's not a crazy fight. I th- I think Kamaru Usman has uh, a lot of different options available to him right now, and I'm interested to see how it plays out. The one that I like the least as a fan is 170-pound contender because the title is in the hands of Leon Edwards, and I don't I don't foresee him getting back there um, soon. So I would I would rather see him take other opportunities. Money fights. Fight freaking Conor McGregor. Fight, f- call out everybody. Hamzat. Call out the guys that... People want to see fights against that um, you don't need to be highly ranked um, to kind of take the advantage. Can I ask you guys a question? You know how last week we were debating uh, quite, you know, aggressively, yes, 135, 125, et cetera, et cetera. Is male 185 the worst division in the UFC? (laughs) Um, I mean, I I just— I'm probably going to always say heavyweight. (sighs) Um, but heavyweight's got John Jones. Yeah, out. yeah, the champ is great. But, okay, let, I mean, can we can we just compare? Can we just compare ta- top five versus top five? Okay, that's a different combo. Yeah, okay, this me. is a. Oh, now me. we're getting into this. Got to be you. Got to be real clear with the combos here with Rick. <laughs> Hit me. Okay, John Jones. Listen, I need John Jones champion. Surreal Gun, Stipe Miocic, yeah. Sergey Pavlovich, yep. Curtis Blades, that's Tom a good Aspinall. Top five. Tom that's Aspinall. a good top. Yeah. Okay, that's very compared to that. That's champion plus five. Okay, yeah, yeah. Alex Pereira, champ. Izzy. Robert Whitaker, Jared Cannonier, Marvin Vittori, Paulo Costa. Heavyweight. That's still pretty damn good, though. Heavyweight. That's yeah, way I'm better. Heavyweight. Heavyweight. Yeah, but is better. that is that the worst one? I'm sure you could find a worse top five than that. Yeah, I guess. Whitaker, Whitaker Adesanya, and and Pereira alone is like a murderer's yeah, row. Maybe two. Those are three. What if Hamza th- comes up to middleweight? Then and, what and, do we do? Yeah. yeah. Everything. I don't. I don't know about that. Um, All right. Fine. But the drop off at heavyweight after those names. I'm just saying, is, uh, Usman could do work. I think like, in that top five. Hammered. Usman could do work in that top five. I agree. I, I proposed it. I I agree with you. Usman Whitaker. Usman Cannonier. Who wins? Usman Cannonier. Yeah, that's a fu- that's a fun fight. I'd like to see that style matchup. You know what? You're convincing me. Maybe a fresh coat of paint on the career. A new it's, chapter. It's less. It's less about like me being like, oh boy, Kamar Usman's gonna make a make a run at 185. It's more just like. The, the days of the welterweight contender are done. Like, Leon's the champion right now. That trilogy's settled. We're good. I want to see him in more fun fights than, like, chasing welterweight contention. Ma- try Make the run at middleweight. And if it goes successfully, sky's the limit. Get another title. Try try to do that. Uh, I, I think Kamara Usman's welterweight legacy is so firmly established. Like, we're good. Like, that, that yeah. dude was was legit and, and really solidified his name there. Try something new. or Or be the one... To stick your finger in Hamzat Shamaya's chest and say, everybody doesn't want it, I want it, and see what happens there. I, I, like I, I will say, coming off two losses, one of which you were knocked out in, ah, Hamzat next is a tough one. You got to take a shot here if you're Kamar Usman, in my opinion. Take, take a risk. Do something do something interesting. GC, uh, Leon Colby Covington, who wins? Based on what we saw on Saturday with the wrestling... Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, one thing that Rick pointed out was uh, Usman. It, it did feel like he was tiring in yeah. the later rounds of the Colby fight, doesn't. and I just have a hard time seeing Colby Covington tire. I, I think it's a really good fight, uh, and I think it all just comes down to can Colby execute the wrestling? 
I mean, from from Saturday night, it, it seems like Leon has thoroughly improved his takedown defense. I, I don't know if you know that's where Kamaru's at in his career, or if or if Leon has just improved that much. I, don't I, know. I I can't pick against Leon on the Monday after he. No, he listen, I mean, there's good matchups. There's bad matchups, yeah. right? Jorge is a good matchup for him. I, I don't think Bilal it's a great is a good matchup, matchup for him. Yeah, uh, I, I'll, I'll say that. I would have to favor Colby. I think. The, the relentless. There's a line out. Is there a yeah, line I think, out? I think it's minus one thirty five. Colby plus one fifteen. Yeah, Leon. That's, that seems right. Um, and that's no disrespect to Leon Edwards, but the relentlessness of Colby's wrestling, the volume. See, Kamaru Usman was low on lower on volume than Leon Edwards, and when he got uh, Leon against the cage, he wasn't doing anything with it. He he wasn't able to chain wrestle. He wasn't able to do anything to really get him down. Colby Covington's going to be a, like a dog on a bone when it comes to that, and he's really going to be trying. Is he going to be successful? I ultimately don't know, and that's why I think the line should be close and, and would be close in my mind. But Colby's relentlessness, that pace, that cardio. I'll tell you this. In round five, he's not going to be looking gassed. Um, Colby Covington is, is – I know he jokes about it, but he, he is a cardio machine, and that's that's a tough style. We just saw this with Marab, yeah. right? Like it doesn't the efficiency doesn't matter. Colby Covington is gonna be on you from moment one to moment to the last moment to the twenty five minute bell rings. And that's a tough that's a tough thing to handle. Uh but Leon is Leon is a really good defensive fighter and when he picks his spots, he makes them count. Um uh, those kicks, those body shots were were brutal. Um I'm look I, I, I like that fight stylistically. Got no problem with it. I like that fight a lot. I'd probably lean Colby. Can, can I present something to you guys? And I want to give a shout out to MMA Island on Twitter, who has uh, sure. brought this to my attention. And again, you can you can you can make yourself crazy when you do this type of stuff with the UFC because there is no rhyme or reason. It, it's you know, it's based on a lot of different circumstances and timing and whatnot. These are Jorge Masvidal's last five fights: win over Darren Till, knocked him out in 2019; flying knee over Ben Askren; the win over um, Nathan Diaz; title shot Usman week's notice, title shot Usman, loses, knockout, lost to Colby Covington, lost those fights fair and square. Those are his last five fights going into, excuse me, those are six fights going into um, April 8th against Gilbert Burns. Mm -hmm. I want to counter with these six fights, okay? Sure. Shogun Hua, knockout win. Daniel Cormier, submission loss. Gegar Mousasi, TKO loss. Tim Boach, knockout win. Vitor Belfort, knockout loss. Hector Lombard, knockout win. Those were Dan Henderson's last five fights going into a oh, title fight Bisping against title Michael Bisping, shot. a fight that would have never happened if Michael Bisping wasn't the champion. They brought it back to the UK so Bisping could avenge that moment, right? Right that wrong from UFC 100. Masvidal's run is more impressive than that. There, Michael Bisping, at the time he was champion, fighting Dan Henderson, Henderson was like 13th ranked in the 85. Now, again, we can we can do this game all we want, but there is a precedent here. Why do we have to over-analyze this and justify the Jorge Masvidal title shot? Oh, because There's you're because reason. you know what people are going to say. There's one how could you? How could you? you how could you say that this is the right thing to do and say Colby doesn't deserve it? Because neither of them deserve it. The word "deserves" is the stupidest word in MMA. I'm so sick of the word "deserves." It's the dumbest possible word. It should Everybody mean something. Everybody uses it like it actually means something. It means absolutely nothing. It's so dumb. Colby Covington deserves it over Jorge Masvidal. No, neither of them <laughs> deserve anything. Bilal Muhammad and Gilbert Burns are, are t- t- 25 steps ahead of both of them. Um, it's just nonsense. There's no. The, there's one reason why Jorge Masvidal will get that opportunity, and it's because he attacked Leon backstage, and that's good enough for me, and that's good enough for everybody else, and it would sell a hell of a lot of pay-per-views. And the UFC should want to be in that business, and Leon Edwards wants to be in that business. It's as simple as that. It's not complicated. We don't need to overthink it. We don't need to justify it, and it's fine. It's it's perfectly fine. Yeah, there's precedent. That's great, but I don't care if there's even precedent or not. Leon Edwards wants it. The UFC should want it. It would sell Good enough for me. And you know what? Leon Edwards had to wait a while, and then he finally got a shot. I'm hoping that the same thing happens for Bilal Muhammad. I'm hoping, man, it's he has a tough road ahead if he does get matched up with Shavkat Rachmanov. Oh, that, that ain't that ain't easy work. But I'm hoping that that Bilal Muhammad does get that opportunity at some point. But it's okay to for Leon Edwards on the back of two Kamar Usman fights to say, I want Jorge Masvidal. This is fine. We have uh, a couple clips of Dana talking at the press conference. 
can we play those real quick and and talk a little more about the press conference? Because I know uh, New York Rick had some thoughts about the press conference. <laughs> I think it was an all timer. As if he's not fired. It up was an all timer. Enough already. You know what? Nest, I, right? I, I I like the this fact is... that for once I'm not the most fired up one. I love it that the, we have two straight Mondays where. You and Rick have come, but this time I'm on his side. Flamethrower, yeah, 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 this is great. Here's Dana White at the press Rick, conference. He's, he's hey, hollering in here. <laughs> Saturday night. Here he is, El Presidente. Obviously, we had Colby Covington cage side. He wants to fight Leon in July. I'm curious if that's a fight you're interested in, or do you need to see how it plays out? Yeah, I don't know when we'll do it, but yeah, that's the fight that makes sense. And Colby came here and cut weight. Oh, he doesn't make fights you know, on Saturday. M- and, and did everything to, to be here for this fight. He deserves the fight. So it's Leon Edwards. Versus- Not to mention the fact that he's, you know, you know, the second or third best guy in the world. So it is Leon versus Colby here. next. Yeah. And I know that you're well, you pretty much confirmed that Colby's going to get the next shot. But if Jorge Masvidal was to do something spectacular against Gilbert Burns, would you be willing to give him the title shot, given the history that he has with Leon? Colby, Colby gets the next shot, no matter what happens. Crazy. Could you imagine? You have a fight coming up in three weeks. You have an actual potential massive fight. If I say any more about this, I'm going to have an aneurysm. I don't have. It doesn't make sense. Why? <laughs> Why? In Miami, too. Jorge's home. Think about how big it, really it was right there you. on a silver platter for you. You walk up there and you say, Miami just got bigger. No, it just don't got bigger. Of course you do. It, it, and, and by the way, if Usman would have won, it would have been potentially like for. For the UFC, from a business standpoint, kind of a worse scenario because he's been so dominant for so long, right? He has the two wins over Masvidal. He has the two wins over Colby. He has the win over Gilbert. Now, all of a sudden, you got this guy who hasn't fought these guys. Oh, my God. And we've got Gilbert and Masvidal coming up in three weeks? This is incredible. This is a this is a promoter's dream. Just shit on it. What? I don't, I don't get that. Don't get it at all. It was such a bizarre press conference, right? It was bizarre, like go, almost going against everything he always tells us. Don't make fights on Saturday. Um, uh, the 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 stuff about the apex all of a sudden changing tune on that, right? Well, that yeah. one hurt my heart. Well, I that love one, it. Oh, fuck off. No, 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 that's fantastic. That was, that we're one, getting too close. Guys, did you hear the news? The pandemic is over. Ba, ba, na, 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 na. They're leaving the apex. Wow. The world is opening up. Wow. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, uh, also the uh, when he got a slap question, he did the oh, my man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> the whole thing. The whole I'm thing. Sad. I'm sad. You're sad about the apex. RIP to the apex. By the way, they're still going to do stuff at the apex. Yeah, I don't know if it's RIP. Yeah. They're still going to do stuff at the apex. Not enough for my. For Listen, my they're going to put some cards on that are apex worthy. Tough contender. Thank you, Frank. Power slap nonsense. That could all be at the apex. Yeah. High level. Like, could you imagine this no, Saturday I mean, we were going to watch Cheeto Vera and Corey Sanhagen at the apex? I'm glad we're not. Uh, but I think that's that's right. That's that's the right. Move. You don't say. Look. <laughs> My argument isn't that the apex is better. My argument is that the apex is fine. For what do you think he meant? What do you think he meant when he said we're getting too cozy there? That they're not motivated to go on the road, right? It is too easy. It is too easy to just pop a card in Vegas at the apex and ha- fly everybody in, have the lodging and the and the PI there and the staff um, ready. There's logistical things that you have to do to go on the road, and I think it was it's easy to shirk those responsibilities if you're not really motivated to do it but i think you can get too cozy as you like know, like the like the perfect. people who you know still work from home in their pajamas that, this is the analogy he used to always say right like the people who still work from home in their pajamas doing zoom meetings you know we can't be like those people yeah they became those people yep uh shout out to anderson silva nice to see him get inducted into uh the ufc hall of fame or at least the announcement that he's going to be inducted in july saw a lot of people who said it's about time uh, I, I actually disagree with that. I, I like the four-year thing. It's only been three and a half years since his, not even three and a half years since his last UFC fight, October of 2020. Uh, no, so it would be, no, two and a half years, three in October uh, since his last UFC fight. So I, I think the think time is appropriate. Pro- do you think that's a product of like them determining his candidacy? He's Hall of Fame with a bullet since sure, sure. 10 years ago. No, but I think everyone, like, uh, like so, Jose- so was Derek Jeter. Jose Aldo just went in and he retired like a minute. Okay, ago. so that's the thing. If everyone's getting in the day they retire, then of course he had to be at the top of the list. I'm just saying a little distance I think makes it even more special. I got to be honest, it rubbed me the wrong way. It rubbed me the wrong way. 
<laughs> wait, wait, what? What, what about it, Rob? The, the, the announcement? Oh, Not the announcement. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was Dana White's comment. Let's see, like, let's see, let's at, see. At the press conference. Tell us, tell us. When he said, like, uh, he was talking about... He was talking about Anderson Silva, and he, and he was kind of—it was kind of like here's the opportunity to talk glowingly about Anderson Silva, one of the best champions in UFC history. And Dana was like, "Yeah, he was good, like you know, blah blah blah." Uh, finally, and I was like, "Finally, like Jose Aldo retired four minutes ago, and you guys put him in. You there's there you. I'm sure you could influence the decision to have put Anderson Silva in two and a half years ago. Like this is not some situation where it's like he finally earned it, the hard road, yeah. he finally determined his candidacy. Finally, yeah. like what, what are we waiting for? What were we waiting for? Anderson Silva's a short, like one of the greatest fighters of all time in combat sports. Could have been in the Hall of Fame two years ago. Uh, it just like. Listen, um, they went um, through the criteria. He got enough votes to yes. get in. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Harry, the I'm camp with... of like this took too long. This took way too. I long. like the 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 rest period. Yeah. Beforehand, like you have to wait a certain number of years, kind of like if the that NFL was established. Does cool. That's what I'm saying. I think they should establish that. But it's not like Tom Brady is the biggest no brainer of all time. He's going to have to wait the allotted time period, just like everyone else, though. Frank Shamrock goes in finally. You know, finally. Uh, Jens Pulver is finally. Yeah. Finally. It's I mean, like, John Jones what, is a is a Hall of Famer right now, it? and he's still fighting. Yeah, that that is a little weird. But the point is, I'm happy. It, you, you know what? It definitely seemed like the relationship was getting a little frosty there. It's nice to know that even if the relationship is frosty, and I and I can guarantee you some of those comments are because of that. Um, it's nice to know that they're going to put that aside and and induct them. Um, and that's more like how the WWE does it. Like even if their relationship isn't great with someone, they'll put them in. By the way, shout out! Just found out before the show started. Andy Kaufman going in got a big pop from Frank oh, for that. Yeah, I was gonna it's, say Frank. Love that. <laughs> yes, love Andy Kaufman. That's the WWE Hall of Fame, by the way, not the UFC Hall. Of if Fame. Anderson Silva had <laughs> beat Jake Paul, oh, sorry, go ahead, Frank. No, I was just laughing. He disliked the joke. Sorry. Eric. No, go ahead. I won't laugh if again. Anderson Silva had beat Jake Paul and had been on this like boxing run and continued it, do you think he goes into the UFC Hall of Fame right now? Or do you think it waits until Anderson Silva's on? I don't know. If he if he beat Jake Paul, he might have gone in that night. <laughs> also, what does this mean opposite, for the union that maybe they're that starting? Tracks. Maybe that tracks. Yeah. Does this what mean it, the union's not happening? Well, but Jake Jake Paul and the like, we're gonna do this thing. How long has that been? Promises uh, uh, always tend to go somewhere. Uh, real real productive for sure. Listen, there was a lot of big news. There was a lot of things happening. Uh, last week was nuts, but I can't believe the buzz that this show generated. The world was talking about an interview on this show. Um, everyone was talking about it. E like it was all over the place, got millions of views on YouTube. Everyone was talking about what happened between Jack Shore and I on uh, Monday, the back and forth, obviously. Um, what are we calling it? Blackout gate, darts gate, uh, 10 seconds gate, of blackness. Yeah. I can't believe I, I'm i watching the fight on Saturday and there's a promo for a 30 for 30 on this moment, first of all, it warms my heart. I guess, you know, everything's cool between us, you know, worldwide leader, shout out, one of the greatest years of my life. I loved it. They're doing a, th did you guys see this? They're doing a 30 yeah, for yeah, 30. Yeah, I saw, I saw. On, I didn't see it, let me see. Oh my gosh, 30 for 30 on the Jack Shore controversy from this program. Frank, did you see this, the promo during the fights? You Were know, you working? I was working. Gosh, okay. No, we watched it together. It was amazing. Would, come on, man. Regardless, here it is. Here's the promo. It aired during the fights. Go ahead. Honestly, I need to see the board because I feel like you're going to cheat. No, I would not cheat. Here we go. Move, move it a little. Oh, oh, there it is. Yeah, right what there. if I told okay, you me... that a little white lie would yeah, be the catalyst the right for the single most okay, colossal wait, downfall of any athlete in the history yeah, of combat sports? Total, what, it was 32? No, no. No, 20, 20, and 12. That this rising star's toughest fight of his career wouldn't take place in an octagon, but in a small, dingy bedroom where a battle with pride would prove tougher than any hand-to-hand -hand combat. Oh, is that a double 20? No, it's not. A, it's a triple 20. No, no, just no, no. inside. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Bingo. 20, 20, and 12. Not that bad. honor that, uh, and deception 52? were only separated by a few yeah. millimeters. You can't beat the Welsh stop. ESPN's critically acclaimed 30 for 30 presents Dartgate. 10 seconds of blackness. Unbelievable. Monday, March 20th. Wait a second. Today's March 20th. Yeah, it comes out tonight. Wow. Whoa. It's a it's a quick turnaround. Oh, yeah, my God. Some people that In the Monday Night Football 30. slot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you know, it's not. A 
big. That was fantastic. Uh, and 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 I'm happy that they asked us, um, you know, for footage like like it's all clear. Like they can use whatever they want. 15 seconds, 30 seconds. Of course, um, of course. You know, news value, whatever. But then Saturday night, I'm wrapping up, and then I'm watching the news. I'm watching the 11 p.m. news. Frank, you saw this, right? And they did a yeah. report on it. I didn't see this one. An inter you didn't see this? Oh, An international <laughs> incident. TV. They're talking about this on yeah, the local news. news. I'm watching <laughs> the local news and international news at the same time. It's local and international. And they did yeah, a report yeah, on it. it. Do we have okay, it? Let me see, see this. I missed this. Yeah, 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 I got oh, it. my right. God. Take a look. The international news clip. We have the international news clip. Yeah, yeah we got it. Our top story this evening, triumph or trickery. We will let you decide. It's a story that has the entire sports world up in arms. A friendly game of darts seems innocent, right? Well, according to our latest poll, 84% of our viewers believe there may have been some foul play involved. You see that dart? Well, if you ask UFC fighter Jack Shaw, he will tell you that dart is sitting is crazy. just inside the 20 point region. Yes. Look. How? But if we zoom in a bit closer, <laughs> that doesn't appear to be the case. How is this possible? When asked to comment on the scandal, yes. Dana White had this to say. Oh. I believe that you're a cheater, and I believe that you use steroids. <laughs> <laughs> As for oh. Ariel Helwani, yes. he says Look at that he's been hair. in talks with the New York State Athletic Commission yes. and is confident his loss will be overturned. That is true. Jack Shaw's attorney refused to comment as there is an ongoing investigation. More on this developing story tonight at 10 p.m. I mean, there it is. International news. I'm watching it on Saturday night, just relaxing after 286, and it comes on the telly. I mean, could you believe that? I can't that? believe that. Like, he's going to have to do the story at 10 o'clock tonight after what's about to happen right I'm now. We're going to have to update the doc. This is crazy. It's incredible. Jack Shore, featherweight debut. Unbelievable win. Comes back in the second round. Submits Makwan Amir Khani. Was wondering if we'd get a shout out in the uh, post fight interview in the cage. We did not. Fair play. If you cheated, I wouldn't, you know, shout out the cheating situation myself. But did get a mention in the post fight presser. Here it is. The dark, the dark <laughs> drama has. How much has that followed you this this fight week? You know why? It's, it's been. I haven't really been on. So I don't ever really go on social media too much fight week. Um, but it's been brilliant. Um, I'm an innocent man, and uh, I'm going to put Ariel to bed on, uh, on Monday, let me tell you. So you're going to go to New York sometime? To do hey, if you want to put me on a flight first class to New York, I'm first. there, and we'll do it in person. But none of this free dart, if I, if, if I beat him on Monday, or when I beat him on Monday, we're going to play a proper game of darts, 5-0-1. We're not playing none of this free score. Oh, we're going to play nonsense? a proper game, 5-0-1, finish on the double. And now he's trying to change the rules, talking about it in the pre-fight. Let's not waste any time. Let's say hello to the victorious... Jack Tankshore. Oh, there he is. Hello, Jack. How are you? The MMA hours, most controversial guy is <laughs> back, boys. <laughs> Could you believe all that? They're talking about it on the news. They're making a documentary about your cheating ways. Isn't this amazing? I can't believe uh, I can't believe Dana even passed comment yeah. on it as well. <laughs> <laughs> they're asking about it at the pre-fight and the post-fight. Every every interview you did last <laughs> week, were they asking you about it? Pretty much, pretty much every interview, pretty much like every other message was regarding Darkgate. Uh, the MMA our community has, has come for me, put it that way. Would you like, see, we're, we're going to rematch, okay? It's the only fair thing to do, but go on, come clean, let the world know what you did, and then we could just move past it and have a fair, you know, rematch. Go ahead, tell us what you did. Go ahead. The floor is yours. Listen, listen, Ariel, as, as I've been saying all week, you know, I'm an innocent man. These Photoshop pictures you're pulling up, <laughs> these videos. And and as the old saying goes, you either die an hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And 
if that's what what what, what people want to see me as, then so be it. Wow, that sounds like an admission of guilt to me. If I'm being honest, no, don't you don't be putting no words <laughs> in my mouth now. Uh, all right, so we will rematch. And we have to figure out a way to get your iPad to, I don't know if we figured that out yet, but like we need a better angle there because that seems to be part of the problem. No, I've got assessed. I've got assessed. We're not, I'm not going to flip the camera. I'm okay. just going to go straight from the desk, straight to the bone. All right. All right. We'll do that in a moment. But first, let's talk about the fight itself. Congratulations. What a performance. Could I ask what was going on in the first round? What happened there? Because it was getting a little bit, uh, all right, what's going on? We'll talk about what happened in between the first and second, but your assessment of the first round. Yeah, to be honest, I kind of felt, obviously I've had a good couple of months out of the cage and I just felt a little bit stuck in the mud to start. I kind of, we knew, we knew Mark, what Mark Van was going to do. We obviously knew he was going to get tired, and but we knew he's explosive in the first round. I just felt, looking back, I probably waited for him a little bit too much. Um, he shot his takedown and um, as he as I tried to like sprawl, my my foot kind of got caught under me and I felt a couple of my toes like bend the wrong way. And um, so I, I just kind of like, had to go to my back. And to be fair, he's got a lot of wrestling experience, a lot of grappling experience, and he's very dangerous at Anaconda choke. So I didn't want to, you know, try and scramble up and, and be sort of too careless and him jump on that neck and, and put me in danger there. So, but, you know, I kind of, we got to the stage, I thought I've lost this round now, just keep myself safe, keep him honest, keep him working and, and, you know, let's try and turn it around from, from the second. What happens in between the first and second? Uh, it seemed like your father was a little bit, the great shaky shore, seemed like a little bit upset with you. Have you ever heard him <laughs> get that fired up in between rounds? No, you know, he's usually pretty chill in between rounds. Him and Carl, my, my Carl Parker, my, my, uh, my other MMA coach, they're usually quite relaxed, quite sort of, you know, direct, but but they try to keep a calm head. But uh, yeah, he wasn't an happy man. He, uh, well, you do the the audio. Yeah. He, what he said was right. We spent six weeks drilling the, the the back leg egg kick. We spent the entire warm up drilling that. We knew that was the shot to go for that was going to start opening up. And uh, <laughs> I didn't throw any of it in the uh, in the first round. So I thought, uh, you know, he's he's a little bit. He's pretty pissed off. I thought. So if I go out and uh, and don't do this and I'm straight away, he's uh, gone out and coming in for the third round. So it was what I needed as well. You know, I knew I knew in my head I'd lost the first round anyway, but. You know, I need I need a little bit of a shake up, and I need to be woken up um, with with some brutal honesty to tell the truth. And uh, it worked. Uh, you were a different man in the second. <laughs> you get the finish in the second against a very tough guy to submit. Considering the last few months, considering what happened in July in New York, could you describe what that felt like when he tapped? It was unbelievable. It was just like such a like a weight had been lifted off my shoulder. You know, I I'd obviously lost my last fight. Is and there's always that sort of, you know what can happen. You lose a couple of fights in a row, things can go up, and you can you can get on a slippery slope. Um, you know, people start to count you out. The amount of, the, of stuff I've seen online the last couple of months about, you know, Jack Jack Shaw was never this and never that. It was all hype, and you know, to to kind of pull out of bed and show that to submit a guy then that hasn't been subbed in. I think I seen Nick Pete say he hasn't been subbed for twelve years. So. Um, to put him away and obviously do it the way I did after having such a lackluster first round uh, felt amazing. You know, he, he's been in there with some elite level guys at that weight class. So to, to go in there and, and put him away, especially, you know, moving up in my first fight, it felt really good. And um, it's nice to, to not go to the decision for a change, to be honest. My last couple of wins have, have all been decisions. So it's nice to finally get back in, 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 on, on, a, on a bit of a finishing run as well. Oh, oh there it is again. That darn there it iPad. Is again. That darn... By the way, are you wearing that t-shirt on purpose, Weekend Defender? It feels like you're trying to tell us something there. Admit nothing? I mean, what is that all about? No, that's my sponsor, Weekend okay. Defender. Don't bring them into it. No, I mean, admit and, nothing. It's right look, there. You're twisting. It, you're twisting the storyline. <laughs> you're twisting it again. Um, what about the fight week? What about like not having to cut those extra 10 pounds? How 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 enjoyable was fight week this time? It was, it was a complete different experience. Like my... my my coaches were saying on uh, on Sunday in the car on the way home, they're like, they've never seen me so much fight week. It's usually the train in the morning, go go back to bed, get up, train again, and kind of chill in the room. Whereas I just had so much more energy. I felt like I could, could take in the stuff like the media day, the photo shoots, the interviews, you know, even just being around the hotel and being, being around the other fighters and, and the UFC staff. It was nice to just be able to relax. You know, it wasn't like a case of, am I going to make weight? It was a, just a case of when Thursday comes, we'll, we'll knuckle down and, 
and do it. Uh, it. It just felt so much more energized. I was still doing two sessions a day right up until Thursday. Um, and, and still had plenty left in the tank. You know, the weight cut was, was really comfortable. I got to shout out um, my nutritionist, Paul Reed, for that. He, he made it, you know, a real comfortable cut. And um, yeah, I just felt like a new man. I felt like everything I'd been like vision, envisioning in the camp about, you know, a better fight week, a better weight cut, you know, a better performance. It kind of all come into practice. And I was, I was glad that it kind of showed me that I made the right choice in, in making the move up. So we're, we're, we're done with 35. This confirms that you're staying at 45. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I can't, you know, I can't see myself going going back down there again. I, I mean, I'm, I'm only as I get older, you naturally get a bit bigger and a bit heavier anyway. So, you know, I don't think I'll ever be able to go up the one fifty five, but but I think forty five is is definitely going to be my own for the future. What was it like being back at the O two, back in front of the UK crowd? Yeah, it was what it, it was. Everything, felt, even not even just the O two, the entire fight week just felt ten times bigger because of the the pay-per-view and obviously the stars that were on the card. There was like fans at the hotel the entire week. Every time you leave the hotel, you get swarmed outside. And then the, the atmosphere inside the O2 was insane. Um, I, I had a really good spot on the card in terms of like, I think pretty much everyone who, who was who had bought a ticket was at, was in there by the time my fight was on. And uh, from the walkout, you could just feel the energy straight away. The intros, even in the fight, like there's certain things, right, as I was building momentum in the fight, I could just feel the crowd getting wilder and wilder. And, even walking out the cage, it was like your security had to yank me out of there in the end because there's how many people you know, trying to lean over and grab you and stuff. It was just insane. Like I've never fought on a pay-per-view card and you probably don't appreciate the, the difference in magnitude till, till you do it. And uh, the fact that it was in the UK as well obviously made it 10 times bigger for a British guy. So it, it was insane. I'd love to, love to think that he'll come back and do another pay-per-view before the year is out. Do you think Mach One? Um, I saw that he posted something on social media before the fight. We have it here, um, and uh, the caption is escaping me at the moment. But it did seem like he was like a little bit uh, dismissive of you. Tell me what this says here, uh, Connor, again, because uh, I... in March Jack will cry, and then he will realize that maybe the lower set is a better option after all. Hashtag Mister Finland is back. Did you did you see any of this stuff? And did you feel like he was uh, looking <laughs> past you a little bit? I didn't see it till after the fight, but he's quite a smug guy. You know, he was smug all fight week and uh, he had a bit of a smirk on his face at the weigh-ins and Indian throws. So it was nice to wipe it off his face, to be honest. And um, maybe he should consider dropping down weight perhaps because uh, if, uh, you know, if he's getting wiped out by me and, and I should realize that the lower class is better, maybe he ought to look at going down as well. Or going up, I don't know. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, I had Damon Jackson text me this morning when he saw that you were going to be on the show saying that... Uh, He'd like he'd love to fight you next. Does that interest you? Does someone else interest you after this win? Yeah, I think that'd be a good fight. It'd be a fun one. Um, you know, I got a lot lock one on the next couple of months, so I'm not I'm not gonna rush into like setting a date or anything yet. I've, I've got you know my, my dad's got a treatment again now this week, and you know, my missus is due to give birth in July. But uh, I, I'll be ready. Where I go before before that or after, yeah, that that'd be a fun one. I've seen him fight before. You know, he's he's a good guy, but then there were some good guys himself. So that that that'd, that'd be a good one. You're you're expecting a child? Is this your first one? Yes. Wow. Yes, it is. The baby baby show's on the way. Lo a boy or girl? A little boy. Oh my gosh, that's amazing! Congratulations to you both. That's incredible. So oh, thank you, thank you, Ariel. So was this your first? This was your first time fighting, knowing that you're about to become a dad, right? In July, you obviously didn't know. Um, did that change anything for you? Yeah, you know, it, it was just a little bit of extra motivation. Obviously, I, I don't just got to worry about myself no more. I got, I got another mouth to feed. I got someone else's head. I got to keep a roof over. And you know, it, it just gives me a little bit more incentive that they, you know I'm fighting for a reason now. Before I just used to do it because I loved it and I still do love it. But you know, now it's a, a, a way of, of making sure that, that you know he grows up and doesn't want for nothing and and, and can sort of have all the good things in life and one more motivation could I, could I need other than that? You know, you're a dad yourself. I'm sure you know how it feels. And um, like I said, I can't wait for July to come and my world to be turned upside down. What are you going to tell your son uh, when he's old enough, you know, about this whole dart situation? I mean, are you going to try to tell him the truth so that he doesn't follow your cheating ways or are you going to try to like, what are you, what are you going to do? Are you going to raise him to do these sorts of things, change the camera? I mean, what are you like? You're 24. Yeah, you don't know how to I, change the camera. What, what are we talking about here? 
I'm, I'm going to tell him uh, the truth that his old man whopped Ariel twice <laughs> in the uh, in the dark, tw- twice in twice in one twice in one week. All right, all right. Um, you you mentioned uh, your father. Uh, you guys kept this close to the vest. Um, you mentioned in the post fight press conference that he's uh, that he's battling cancer, and you said that he's having treatment this week. And obviously, wish him the best, nothing but the best. He's a lovely, lovely man, and uh, only you know hear great things about him. How were you able to not be too emotional in there? To, that, that's a lot to deal with, um, and that's for normal people who aren't going into a cage fight with their father by their side. He's he's your coach, he's your confidant, he's your best friend, like all these things. How are you able to deal with all those emotions? Yeah, it was it was really tough. Um, it's been a tough camp to be honest. Here, like I said, we found out. Like I literally got off at a spot on the London card, and we kind of found found out. I want to say like four or five days after that, we had the news. Um, so it was like I I didn't really want to fight the start, and he was like, "Look, let's just speak the doctors and let's kind of see where we are with it and, and what their plan is." And he he kind of talked me around. I was like, "No, I want you to do it, and I'm I'm going to do my best to kind of." Because I, I mean, if he can't be there, I'm not going to fight. There's, there's no like two ways about it. There's no bring someone else. And if he, if he couldn't make the fight or wasn't well enough or had treatment, then I just wouldn't have fought. Um, so you know, he taught me around to do it, and it was it was a tough camp because we, I'm just so used to having him there. You know, every session of every day, and there was obviously weeks where you know we've had three three bouts of chemo during this uh, this camp, which means you know he's kind of bed bound for like five six days, and then he, even when he is able to to get out of bed, he's got to be so careful about being around people because of infection. You know, he, he picks up a, a cold and it can be a life-threatening situation for him. So you know, I had to do a fair bit of training, you know, w- without him there. I had, to, I had to kind of rely on my other coaches to pick the slack up a little bit. I had to rely on on him sort of just, even just coming in for private sessions with me, which is not what I'm used to. I'm used to having him there and he's life and soul of the gym. So it was tough. Um, but, you know, we, we, we was lucky that, the, the doctors managed to finish that stage of his treatment before the fights. And um, truth be told, I kind of just wanted to put in the back of my head fight week. And, um, you know, it, it was a good release, to be honest. A, a fight week helped me forget about it. And it was kind of after the fight was over, I seen he, he, he was emotional and it kind of it kind of triggered me off a little bit then. And it was, it was a bit, like I said, it's been a tough, tough few months for me, let, let alone for him. I can't imagine what, what it's been like for him, but he's, he never let on, you know, he never lets on that uh, that he's in pain. He never lets on that he's feeling ill or down. You, you wouldn't even know that, that he was going through it unless I came out and said it. Um, so, you know, it, it was just a, an overwhelm, overwhelming amount of emotions. Quite, kind of when the fight was done, I was just so happy to, to win. And, you know, he was adamant that we don't mention it before and he didn't want to, as, you know, because pick up a loss and, straight away people are kind of put that and that together and they're like, oh, well, that, that's the reason you lost and we didn't want that. I was like, if we're going to do it, we we do it and treat it like like nothing's going on. But uh, yeah, I waffled on a bit there, but it, it was um, it, it, it was a, it was a long sort of draining camp. It's nice, nice to be, it's nice to have it done now and kind of out there because you have, we have people around that, you know, Wales and online rumours start to circulate and, and they're kind of messaging me and messaging him and because we haven't really put it out there but now it's out there it kind of feels like I don't know I don't know how it feels for him but it feels like a little bit of a relief really that people know what he's going through now and can like kind of look back and think well for him to, to, to do all that whilst going through chemotherapy and, and all the other shit then then you know if that doesn't give give people inspiration and motivation nothing will how, how is he doing now? Yeah he's he's, well, he's really well you know he's like two, two weeks removed now from his last bout of, of chemo so the side effects that have kind of worn off. He, he's back in for a scan now tomorrow morning, and I think he starts his his radiotherapy on Wednesday. So he's got three weeks of that, and then it's back to the doctors. Then blood scans, and and you know we we see where we go from there. We we're kind of hopeful that that'll, that'll be the end of it, even if it's you know just for a couple of months. But uh, we'll have to just kind of play it by ear. But think, fingers crossed, you know, in a, in in a, in a month or two now we'll we'll know where we are, and, and it'll be positive. Well, God bless him and, and your family, and I wish him nothing but the best, and, and hopefully that this will be over very, very soon. I have to admit, when you mentioned it in the post-fight press conference, then I was like, damn, I kind of feel bad for all the dart stuff. Now I feel like an <laughs> I was like, sheesh, I had the video. No, right. no, <laughs> I no. was like, oh, he, God. No, I don't. <laughs> he, he, he's been loving it all week, because like, I've been off um, I've been off like Twitter and Instagram for the most part of the week, and he's just you know, constantly, look, look at this, look what Ariel's posted <laughs> to Don. Please don't, don't feel... Don't feel bad because that's 
that's the last thing he would want. He, he doesn't want the, he doesn't want a pity party. He doesn't want the guilt trip. You know, that's not who he is. Um, he, he's not that type of character. So, uh, and I'm sure w- when you speak to him, he'll tell you the same thing. Okay. All right. So now I don't feel bad for whooping your ass in a matter of seconds here. Uh, <laughs> so what are you trying to do? You're, you're trying to change the rules? No, it's three on three. That's what those are MMA hour rules. By the way, if we do 501, we're going to be here for 45 minutes. You have a dinner to get to, and I have other shows. No, no, other people yeah. to talk to. So you will be here. I will you be, will be <laughs> yes. here for 45 minutes. I'll right. be here for about 15 minutes. <laughs> okay. So. Are you ready for this? Okay, this is the rematch, one of the most yes. anticipated rematches. I mean, we just came off a rematch. This is a bigger one. Leon Edwards versus Kamaru Usman pales in comparison <laughs> to Shore versus Helwani too, all right? So... I can't wait to see the numbers. I can't wait to see the pay-per-view numbers. Oh, right? it's going to be fantastic. They, you know what? We should, we should stop the stream right now and put this up behind a paywall because everyone's been buzzing about this. <laughs> so are you comfortable with the setup over there? What do you like? I want you to be comfortable. Yeah. You're going to shoot. I'm going to tilt the cam. Yeah. I'm going to turn the cam. So I turn the camera now. Turn, yeah. Let's like, turn so you can see the board. Yeah. And you got to leave it there it because back. this black, I don't know yeah, where I'm that blackness came from last time. I mean, it was unbelievable. Okay. There it is. Now, did you see, Can you the, see f- the board now? Oh, I see it just fine. But there was a one shot where it like clearly looks like it's above and you claimed it was down. I don't understand what kind of angle this is. I like this angle. Oh, he's spin- spinning the narrative again. Okay. So wait. And so here's the question. When, when you're done with the three shots, you're then going to pick it up and just go straight to it, right? I'm going to selfie it straight to the board. Okay. All right. Do you feel you want a practice shot or what? No. So we well, you want to practice shot? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Let's go. We'll All go straight right. in then. <laughs> Let me get the dot. I'm so nervous here. This is incredible stuff. Here we go. This is the rematch. <laughs> Jack Shore trying to redeem himself, trying to clear his no, good no, Jack, name. Jack Shore going two and zero. All right, here we go. Okay, tell me what it is. Sixteen. Sixteen. Are you sure about that? Don't get nervous you now. No. Don't lie to us, Jack. Okay, don't get nervous. 16. 16 again. Okay, here we go. No we pressure, go. Jack. No pressure. Oh, fuck. Off the, <laughs> off the so, board? What was it? What was it? Off the board. Oh, Miss. It's 32. 32. By the way, wasn't it 32 last time? 16. Six. Oh, you almost got a double 16. I know. Do you see that now? I see it just fine, Jack. And see, this is what happens when the pressure is on. You crumble under the pressure, all right? And by the way, second... Talking in my ear, trash talking. I'm not happy with that. By the way, second straight week, you go off the board. First time, you actually admit it. No, no, this is the first time we've gone off the board. Okay, here we go. I'm putting on my headphones. Are you nervous, Jack? Come on now, Ariel. Because, you know, I'm going to talk a lot of shit. Yeah, I know you are. (laughs) All right, here I come, guys. Guys, Frank? Yeah. Are you rooting me on? I am rooting you on. All right. See, the other thing is, Jack, I'm not used to doing it with the headphones, okay? I get very nervous with the headphones, but I'm going to do this. Yeah, you got to get a better board than this. Okay. Than <laughs> Why? What's wrong with my board? Viper, come on. Is it shite? Richest rich man in MMA journalism, and you've got a fucking Viper board. You know what? I got to be honest with you. I went on Amazon. And it was the cheapest one, and that's why I bought it. <laughs> I knew it. But can can I be, can I tell you something, Jack? This is incredible. The PDC, the, the one of the head guys of the PDC, I swear to you, sent me an email and said he saw our battle, and he said what you just it, said. It. He said we need to get you it, a better he, board. <laughs> the, the, PD, the PDC followed me on Thursday. Ah. <laughs> and uh, the, the the people who um, see like the blue ring around my board, it's made by a company called uh, Red Dragon Dark. Yeah. They sponsor um, they sponsor Lord of the Pros. They sponsor Gezi. And and Johnny, the the, the two Welsh boys, they they're a Welsh company. They like their main sponsor, and they messaged me on uh, on Twitter saying they seen the video and do I want do I want some stuff for my dark journey? <laughs> so I was like, fucking yes. Uh, I love it. I love it. Okay, I'm flipping the headphones. Come on now, no pressure. Here it is. Is this better for you, uh, Frank? Yes. They feel very uncomfortable now for some reason. All right, no pressure. Here we go. So I have to beat a 32, right? I have to tell you yeah. something, Jack. When I get nervous, I get very OCD. I have to touch everything twice. Joe's noticing this. I touch everything twice. I have a lot of super tested <laughs> because I want to clear my good name and I want to freaking bury you, all right? This is, by the way, this is for all my friends in England. This is for all my friends in Northern Ireland. We're going to kick Wales out of the United Kingdom right here and now. 
No, 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 no. Here we go. 32. So can I just have to crack my knuckles, Jack? All right, there's a lot of pressure on me. I'm oh, doing this. I'm the, doing <laughs> the pre-game ritual. This guy's a one very, step further every time. I'm very sweaty. I'm doing this for the entire Commonwealth. All right, here we go, Jack. One. What is that? Is that an 18 or a four? Hey, let's That's a four. four. All right. Hit another one of them. Be great. Oh, what was that? What was that? No! Is that a yeah! one? That's a one. Oh my god! It could have been closer! That looked like a bullseye, Jack! Oh my god, a five? Are you fucking... So what do you need? What do you need? You need 28. He needs 29. Or 27 to draw. No, what's my, what's my fucking mouth doing here? Yeah. Jack, can you, can you pipe it down over there? I'm trying to concentrate. No, nah, no one, no one piped down when I was throwing. <laughs> Oh, I almost got it again! Oh, Jack! I almost got a, a triple 20, and I got a double one, Jack. Put the dark stream song on, whoever, uh, whoever's on the, on the sound effect. Get the, the dark stream. No, the this is crazy. Done it. I want, I want, done it, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want a third, a trilogy, double or nothing, right here and now. Right now. Right now, winner takes all. This is it. I won last week. You won this week. No, no, This is no, the rubber no, match. No, no. I, it, 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 two and zero oh for starters. No, this is this is it. it. Oh. This is one one this one. Two and zero. Oh. Let's go. You right now. Go ahead. Do it. Right, I'll do it. But I want it. I want the record to stand. No, so it's, it's two and zero. Oh. No, the first one was it's a no contest. Oh. The first was a no contest. It was already ruled as such. I can't right. believe I bottled Are you ready? that. I can't believe I just bottled that, Jack. I'm so mad at myself right now. All right, here we go. Here's Jack. I can believe it. Here's Jack. Oh, look Eight. At oh, now he's feeling himself. No, I'm not. Seven. Oh, 15. Okay, Wait, Jack. Get off the board again, Jack. That's where you belong. Off the board. Headphones. Why is he off the board? Wait, I'm taking the headphones out. Oh, now you're taking the headphones? All right. I should do this without the headphones, too. Eleven. So what is it? What is it? What, what, what is that? Eight, seven, and eleven? Eight, seven, and eleven. Let's take it up now because there will be... Oh, yeah. he did this and he did that. And uh, like... It's really a nice board. I can't lie. Eight, oh, you almost got the uh, the triple eight there. Eight, seven, eleven. Okay, you know what? I'm taking off the damn headphones too, Frank, okay? I can't be bothered with this. Why are you bringing this. me in? <laughs> All right, this is too much fucking pressure. I don't want to hear Jack's voice while I'm doing this. All right, here we go. Here comes Helwani to save the day. I'm just going to walk right up there and fucking nail it. So what, what is did that? I have? 26. 26. All right, here we go, Jack. This is it. This is it. I'm going to fucking smoke your ass. Four again. I keep going to the right. He's stepping closer to the board. Oh, again. <laughs> He's getting closer every throw. This is unbelievable. Oh! Did we just oh! see Wait. 25? Four? Uh, four? No way. 25, four, four. About... The thing fell off. Wait, what's four, but four, two eight? feet from the board. 33, I win! Hawani wins! Is, I can't speak! I can't <laughs> speak! Oh, I redeemed myself! Look at that, Jack! Read it and weep! Look at that! Almost got the bullseye! No way! One of the no. all time clutch Listen. wins! I can't speak! I can't win! I can't It's 2-0. <laughs> it's 2-1. Uh, 2-1. Unreal. What do you mean? He was about a foot away. About a foot away from the board on that third dot. <laughs> I'm at the line. The line's right he's here. At... Wow. Yeah, I bet he's at the line. Jack, the power in which gonna... I threw that last one, the thing fell <laughs> off. The thing fell. Jack, I don't know what camera we're on here. The thing, look at this. It flew off, Jack. It fell off. It was such force and power. The thing. Jack, yeah. look at this shot Some right here. Don't seem right there. Look at that shot. That is that, unbelievable. That, that, last, that is a good dart, but Thank you. You, you seem just a little bit close to the ball, i got to be honest. So that's it? I win? Thank you, Jack. Thanks for playing, yeah, that's, okay? That's, that's two 2-1 that's two to me, but you know what? I'll, I'll give you the last one. All two right. legs to one. Best. Best of three, the, the tank reign supreme what, again. Fuck, fuck the tank reign supreme. It was a no... By the way, if I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, I hate to say it, if it's no contest in the first, you... Went won the last one. I, I think we need one more to settle it all. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I think we need one. Go Wait, ahead, Jack. On. One more to all settle right, it all. Right, this me, is it. This yeah, is it. Me, I'm going to have to reset this iPad. Wait there, wait there, wait there. This is it. The war wait to there. settle the score. Right. No contest first. Jack won the second. Helwani wins the third. This is it. For all the marbles, Jack. For all the marbles. Honest Let's to go. God. The, the sweat coming out of me at the minute is unbelievable. <laughs> right, wait there. Let me compose myself. Oh, my God. Now. This is incredible theater, Jack. Unbelievable I'm theater. taking the headphones out. All right, fine, fine, fine. Look at Jack. Completely rattled by the pressure, the trash talk, the intensity. Eight. Eight again. He's just an eighter. Oh! What was boom. it? What was it? What was it? Eight and some sort of 12 situation. Can you hear me? What was it? What was it? Treble, treble 15. Fuck. Fuck. He's at 53 right now. Oh my God, he's at 53 right now. For fuck's sake. Are you kidding me? Wallet, Off the Come board. On. Where you belong. Off the board. Eight again. Fuck. So what? 16 plus what? Plus triple. 40. 16 plus. 61. 16 plus 48. 61. No, is that right? 16. Wow, triple 16. <laughs> triple 16 or triple seven? That looks like a triple seven. Get in there. Triple 16. Fucking hell. 64. 64. 64, Jack. Come on, Ariel. All right, here we go, guys. Here it is. This is for everyone who ever doubted me. This is for you everyone who ever doubted me. All right. Focus, focus, Joe, focus. Oh, look at, he better be on that mark, boys, honest to God. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <sighs> no pressure, you know. Oh, again with the fucking four. Joe, why does it keep going to four? Yeah. Don't blame Joe. Uh, game uh, over. It's game over. What is this? Game 15, over. fucking 3, and 7. Congrats. Wait there. Wait Jack. There. You know what? I made a critical that, error, Jack. A critical error. What, what I, was the error? I should, have, I should have ended it after the last one and taken the bragging rights. But that's the kind of guy that I am. I'm, I'm a mensch, okay? No, no, Ariel, you ever heard this song? Wait there. Ariel. Can I hear it? Oh, this is the fucking dart song? This is the bullshit. No, you know what? I, I don't want to hear your bullshit songs, all right, Jack? You're a cheater, and cheaters <laughs> never prosper. <laughs> I do like that song. Da, 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 da. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Bully Boy. This is what's happening in June. Bully Boy is going to come in studio. He's going to teach me. We're going to review the tape. I kept going to the right for some reason. And then whenever you come into this, I'm not paying for your first class nothing, all right? I'm not paying for nothing. <laughs> all right, you cheater. Here you are, listen. The Fuck. rules are the rules. You, no, you didn't even play my format. My format is 501 for starters. I've, I've beat you at your own game. Uh, There's nothing more to it. Congratulations, all right? I do. I, you know, I appreciate that. It does take a big man yeah. to admit defeat. So I, Down the line, uh, at some point, the, we're going to run this back. And you know what? I want to do a 501 down the line. Not, I mean, we, we need a whole yeah. hour special. Yeah, 501's got to be in person, though. All right. That'd be a fucking long old, uh, a long old process. But what the Supology T-shirt is going to be in the post, and I want it on display in the okay. studio. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you kidding me? I would love it. Um, listen, the darts won. The darts won. All we're trying to do is grow the game, and I think the darts. Ariel, won. The the fans, the fans are the winners. Won. The fans are the winners. Yes, I, I look forward to the update on the uh, the news tonight of this uh, tremendous controversy. Congratulations! I want my name. I want my name <laughs> yes. right there on that news. Let me tell you. Fucking it. hell! Uh, <laughs> enjoy the victory today. Enjoy the victory on Saturday. I will see you again, my friend. But for now, all the best to you and the family, and thanks for being a good sport. Thank you, Ariel. All right. Good, good, good crack. And uh, thanks for making Fight Week a little bit more enjoyable as well. You're the man. There he is. Jack Shore, everyone. Fuck, guys. I'm so mad at myself right now. Hey, before <sighs> we go there, your mic on your 
yes. shirt. Which way do you have it facing? Yeah, no, you fucked it up. No, Frank. you. Don't, this is the last time I'm letting you put it wrong, on by yourself. It's the wrong way. I'm not letting you put it on anymore. So what? The whole time you couldn't hear me. I could hear you, but I could hear everything off of you. So what are you talking about? Everything? Now I'm going to mic you up from now. Ugh, you know what? You and your stupid headphones are the reason why I lost. Oh, okay. okay. Is there a lot of blame? Going yes, around? it's a lot of blame because I didn't deserve the fucking loss, and now I'm going to have to live with it. Ugh. Look, the thing is not is the wrong way, Frank. All right, well. Whose fault is that? Is that my fault? Yeah, you could have told me. It's Joe's fault, clearly. Yeah, it's Joe's fault. They're saying it's Joe's fault. <laughs> Joe thinks you're actually being serious is the thing. This thing's not going on in my shirt anymore. Oh, here it is. Fuck. I mean, do we even need it anymore? <sighs> I'm so upset. I'm so upset, guys. All right, well, you know who I feel like? I feel like Rafael Fazeev. He deserved to win on Saturday as well. Not sure if I agree with the... There's a lot of interesting things going on right now in the world of sports. This situation, the judging, although they did get it right in the main event. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit rattled, guys. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit rattled. But who would have thought... I mean, they did, by the way, they did, uh, they did send me a message. They want to get me a better dartboard. Why do you think I kept going to the right? Because of the dartboard. Yeah, it's because of the dartboard. Man, I got the bullseye again. When the going got tough, I got the ball. He didn't shoot well. He shot well in the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Neither of y'all really put up numbers. Man. No. Except for that last one. That was a nice one. By 64? Jack. Yeah. I, credit to your integrity for, for doing the third one. Because we did say, you know, there were murmurings back here. You know, technically it's 1-1. One, one. Yeah, no. Not, uh, it was the right thing to do. It was the right thing to do. Good on you, as they said. Thank you. Um, damn, I'm so upset. Do you agree with the Fizzy of scorecards? Oh, man. I definitely don't agree with the 10-8. 10-8 was whack. The 10-8. Frank's actually a huge proponent of the 10-8. He said it from the second the round ended. He said that was a 10-8. Facts. You really? <laughs> Frank? Frank is the voice of reason here? Nothing more. You can't. You can't. I thought the first two rounds went to Fiziev, and I thought the last round went to Gaethje. It was close. That's what I thought it, it was. was close. It was incredibly close. It was an awesome fight. Wish we got two uh, more rounds. Yeah, I don't. I don't think Fiziev is is too upset with it. I mean, if you're making the damage argument, Fiziev's face was was pretty brutal, and he said to Gaethje afterward, he was like, "Every single punch you land is is damage." But also, Fiziev worked the body a lot, and that's that's where he put his damage on. Super close. I don't really have a complaint about it, other than the ten eight Gaethje. Oh man, which which Gagey still would have won the fight had it been a ten nine, so it doesn't make that big of a difference. Right. Um, I saw on social media Dustin Poirier posted something like award two, and it seemed like he like we were talking about Poirier, right? What's next for him? Poirier has a win over Justin Gagey, which um, happened I think of two thousand seventeen off the top of my head, something like that. So it's been a while, but all of a sudden now maybe this is the guy. Now the thing is with Gagey, Gagey likes to take five, six months off between fights. Obviously, he didn't get too banged up, uh, as opposed to Fazeev, who had the cuts and everything, the gruesome photo I posted it. Um, Jeff Botari shot it for Zufa and Getty. But uh, have we have we figured out the, the Dustin Poirier query? Has he finally found his opponent? Is this the guy? That is a fight that I want more than any fight. You're kidding. That could be made right now. Really? Even though we saw it? First of all, yeah, we saw it. Didn't didn't you? It was amazing. Uh, it was incredible. Sure. Um, and I think they're both better, way better than than they were back then. Um, it would be maximum violence. Those two are elite lightweights. Um, out outside of John Jones and Francis Ngannou, and that's off the table. Dustin Poirier versus Wow Justin Gaethje is the number one fight I want to see in. UFC and MMA right now. So even though this means Dustin's not going to fight for a minute, right? Because, you know, Gaethje always says he likes to take some time off. Sure. I'll wait. I think it's worth waiting. Also, like, to your point, what is Dustin going to do anyway? Right. Like, there's not a there's not an opening for Dustin to slide in. I think Dustin would take this fight, but I think, you know, based on the Twitter activity, he might want to be, have some assurances about what comes after, right? Like, maybe a title shot. Right. Um. Whereas it feels like Darius, but maybe that lines up, right? Darius and Oliveira settle their business. Winner of that potentially gets a title shot. Gaethje and Dustin fight, and then they get a title shot after that. Well, it's getting a little clearer because we found out that the UFC is going back to Abu Dhabi in uh, October. Islam yeah. has to be on that card, obviously. So, you know, we were talking about why would you give Darius, Charles, why don't you just make that fight? Well, 
Now that's going to happen in May. October is five months later. So the timing works out. If Darius wins, he's getting the title shot. If Charles wins, is he getting Islam? I don't know. I guess. Maybe. Why not? Yeah. I mean, he just fought him. But I guess the win over Dariush, it's fine. If there's anything we learned this weekend, yeah. is that title shots have no significant meaning and they're handed out. Is it sellable, though? It, yeah, it was so one-sided. Mm. Anyways, the run Charles was on, yeah. I, I think a dominant win. It, I think it depends. It depends on how he looks against Dariush, in my opinion. Whereas with Dariush, I think if, if he beats Charles, like, we, we can't deny him any longer. Let's let's get this done. It's a tough loss for Fazia because you can make the case that like he he needed that win more. Yes. You know what I mean? He needed that mm. win more. Just... It would have been bad for Justin to lose that. You I'll think so? This. Yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't have been good. Uh, I think he would have taken a significant stock hit. Um, but yes, the momentum was behind Fazia. Yeah, for sure. So he needed that win a little bit more, but uh, you know I don't think he takes a massive step back. It was a great fight. He, he's a, he's still a legit top contender, he's such a good and I striker. think most people, Golly. not most people, a lot of people could make the case that he won. So I don't think he slides very far at all. Uh, he's such a good striker. He's awesome. He's so much fun to watch. He is so much fun to watch. Um, and so yeah, so I guess that's the one, right? That's oh, please, please, violence gods, give it to me. Please oh, beg you, man. I would, uh, I would love to see it. It just means that we're not going to see Dustin for a while. But, but again, like, who's the uh, who's the obvious fight for Dustin? No, there isn't. Is there, there, is, there, there is not one? And and I think he's probably a little bit more interested in fighting Gaethje than Fiziev, just because of the name, right? Oh, for sure. He's fought him before. He's beaten him. Uh, the name value, if it comes with the the potential title shot on the back end of it, that feels like a perfect package for Dustin. So Gaethje got the win. Gunnar Nelson got the big win over Brian Barbarina. Uh, very impressive first-round finish. And shout-out to uh, Barbarina, who took the fight on short notice. Jennifer Maya, wow, with the very impressive win over Casey O'Neill. And, and, and I, I was surprised that she was such a big favorite. I mean, Maya is a really good fighter who has fought, you know, the top of the 125-pound division and looked really good in this fight. Casey coming off the nine-month layoff, the ACL... Um, I think people were being a little harsh on her and I still think that she's going to be a player at, at 125, but Maya has been, I mean, Maya has had, that was her 31st pro fight. That was Casey's 10th, mm -hmm. you know, she's been around, um, but a big win for Jennifer Maya and the best female weight class, of course. Um, Marvin Vittori with the win over Roman Delice, Jack Shores, we just talked about with the win over Makwan Amir Khani, uh, Chris Duncan. I got the split decision win over Omar Morales, Yanal Ashmuz, who uh, beat Sam Patterson in vicious, vicious fashion. A minute 15, uh, we'll be talking to him. He improved to 7-0. A uh, bit of a late stoppage there, but we'll be talking to him back into the show. Mohamed Mokhayev is coming up in about 13 minutes. Gruesome knee injury he suffered in that fight, it would appear. He was limping. Can't believe he didn't tap to the knee bar. I mean, it looked like the thing was bending the other way. Somehow came back and freaking finished Jafel Filio. I have no idea how. I really don't. I mean, I really have no idea how he did that. Unbelievable. I mean, the guy won and is limping afterwards. He submits him via rear naked choke. He's limping and he still climbs to the top of the cage. It's unbelievable. Um, Lerone Murphy, split decision win over Gabriel Santos, Christian Leroy Duncan, beat Dusko Todorovic um, in the first round, gruesome knee injury suffered by Todorovic. Looked like his 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 knee just like buckled, twisted, something weird happened. Jake Hadley with the win over Malcolm Gordon. Very impressive. He looked great in that fight. Shout out to our old pal, Joanne Wood, who got back on track. That was beautiful stuff there with the win over Luana Carolina. Very happy for her. Got the split decision win. Hard fought victory. Jai Herbert and Ludovic Klein fought to a majority draw. And what about Veronica Hardy? Wow. Best performance of her UFC career, by far MMA career. Comes back after three years off, beats Juliana Miller, was never really close. Um, Miller, obviously, just her fifth pro fight and uh, has a long way to go, but uh, was very happy for Veronica, was very happy for Dan Hardy. Um, and she said she had improved. She said she had learned a lot under the tutelage of her husband, Dan Hardy. It appeared as though she learned a lot because she looked fantastic in that fight. So I was very, very impressed. Anyone jump out to you guys there? Anyone that you uh, really were impressed by in the uh, the prelims or the early portion of the main card? 
I mean, that Marvin Vittori Roman Delice fight was fantastic. I thought Delice had a chance at, at getting his hand raised. When when they were announcing the scorecards and they said 130-27, I, I thought that meant Roman had won. Uh, but it was Marvin. I mean, had he pulled that off, that would have been... Talk about shaking up the middleweight division. Uh, that would have been four straight wins as an underdog. Uh, wow. That was, that was impressive. Uh, just, I mean, even though he lost, I was still impressed by him. Four, four straight wins as an underdog against, like, the cream of the crop, right. too. Like, it would have been really something to pick up that. And I think there's people who... I, I saw scorecards out there for him, so um, a really good effort by him. For me, same same thing. Uh, not the same person, but in a losing effort, Faziev. Like, yeah. that dude showed he's up there with the, the cream of the freaking crop at lightweight. Um, and that was a statement, uh, in my opinion. I think, again, some people scored it for him. Um, either way, it was close. But yeah, he's a top lightweight um, and a style and a speed that I think is going to give a lot of people problems. So I left, I knew who Justin Gaethje was. I didn't need to learn about Justin Gaethje. I knew exactly who Justin Gaethje was and he showed exactly who Justin Gaethje is. Uh, I learned a lot more about Fazeev and, and can he fight at that level? Uh, and he proved that he can. So I'm excited about kind of where he goes from here and bounces back. But Delitzia and, and Fazeev, I think, uh, showed something. To me, that Jake I, that Hadley. I was by. Jake, Jake Hadley. Hadley too was incredibly impressive. That that body shot KO. I mean, he's going to be rising up the flyweight ranks soon too. What What about Gaethje getting all upset at uh, Michael Bisping for his commentary? I, I mean, I was really locked in, but I didn't really feel like I didn't notice it. So he was biased. Sure. That DC was biased. I saw people saying DC was biased towards Usman. Well, for one, everybody claims bias on everything. Yes. For two. Justin Gaethje admits in that that he's biased. So like he's like, look, I'm biased. I love Kamaru. I thought he won, but here's my opinion. So it's like, let's just you know, let's just take chill. It what it is. Let's just chill. Out. It, this reminds me of Joe Buck when he calls like a, a Cowboys Niners game, and half the people say that he's biased towards the Cowboys, the other half say he's biased towards yeah, the Niners. Like exactly, no one's no one's biased, guys. I mean, uh, I don't know. It, it's a really tough job. I don't I don't envy those guys. Having to work, you know, that card started at 12.30 Eastern. It ended at around 8 o'clock. There's no broadcast crew on the planet that goes straight like that. It just doesn't happen. It's, and they're talking almost the entire time. It's it's unbelievable. And you're supposed to crescendo at the end. Like, there's sometimes you'll call a football game. It crescendos in the middle. And then the fourth quarter is a bust. or the, You know what I mean? Or even if it crescendos at the end, it's three hours. Mm -hmm. and, and there's halftime. There's this. There's that. These guys are going back to back to back, especially on these cards with 15 fights. And I hate when when they load them up like this only because, you know, everything is rushed and you don't get the post-fight interviews and blah, 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 blah. But, man. Uh, yeah, I, dude, tough. I wouldn't blame them if they did, if they had a prelim announcer crew yes. and then switched over. They do that in boxing, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I would, the Showtime I would not boxing blame cards. them at all. Eight hours is a long time to go. It's man. unbelievable. You're in a suit. You're in the stadium, too. It's it's a marathon, dude. Shout out to them. And you're going and crazy at every fight. You're yelling. You're this and, and that. And everything they say, I, I actually think John Anik tweeted about it. You know, I, everything they say gets dissected. Right. You know, someone's going to find something wrong with it. Yeah, eight hours, long time to to talk. Uh, Tom Aspinall wasn't on the broadcasting per se, but he was working for BT Sport, and I heard he did amazing. Oh, there it is. Wow, that was really close. I mean, that was quick. Wow, quick on the trigger. Sheesh, Frank. That might be the quickest one ever. Imagine Frank when, when Tom gets a fight announced. Hmm. Unbelievable. Yeah. He was talking about the Tybora thing. He kept saying, I saw him at the uh, the Q&A. He said, uh, I saw Tybora call me out. I was like, well, wait a second, Tom. You <laughs> mentioned him, and then he sent a video. Like, he didn't yeah. exactly call you out. You, I think you said his name first. Not that he I'm said right. his name first, but he was talking about the, the Twitter message. Was Tybora first? No, Tybora, Tybora was not first, but Tybora responded on Twitter to his call out, and he was referring back to oh, that. Oh, jeez. Just that they're going back and Who forth. Who cares? Just make that. Maybe in July or so, if they go back, July, sure. August, something like that. Um, that would certainly make a lot of sense. Just to add to most of, I mean, to me it was, and I'm not just saying this because he's coming up soon, Mohammed Mokhayev coming back from that, I thought he was done. I was like, all right. And now there are some people who say, and I have to admit, I, I did not catch this live, who's saying that he tapped multiple times even i think filio himself is claiming yes. in fact yeah. he told our own brazilian beast uh this this is the quote guilherme cruz of course he tapped at least three times i felt him tapping on my back like he was hiding with malice there was another situation i went for the gu guillotine and then attacked his injured shoulder he tapped and, and i loosened it up a little bit i was looking at the referee the entire time the knee bar i felt him tapping with his foot and the referee asked him, tap, I loosened it, 
and he was able to twist his knee a little bit. Did you guys notice this as well? The first one I did, the 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 shoulder one that I, I noticed, there was a a camera angle that clearly shows him tapping. Really? I saw he's after the fact tapping he's in the, doing in the this. literal sense. Yeah, I'm saying like I don't know if he's actually giving in, but like what you would do to tap like yeah. that, like. But there's nothing that. really happening in that moment, right? Well, he he admitted his that his shoulder, shoulder, yeah, his shoulder was injured in the fight. Sure, right? well, it was injured prior, sorry, prior into yeah, the fight. So it's possible that there was enough tension on the shoulder that he had to to tap. It's just a very weird thing to do if if he's not like it. You know who can answer the question? Yeah. What what was your Muhammad hand doing Muhammad. at that time? Yes, coming up in five uh, minutes. But we we have the screen grab, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's. Uh, we can't show the footage. Yeah, it was at this moment right here. Obviously, yeah, the screen grab isn't going to do as much justice as uh, as the video, but like you can see his hand in motion. He taps with that left hand. Well, what's interesting about this and what you need to note is because it wasn't like a particularly tight submission situation, right? The referee's not looking for a tap here. Right. He's on the, his hand is on the opposite side, um, and the referee wouldn't be like closely watching for a tap because this isn't a, a, a position where it's, it's going to feel like it's particularly dangerous. So what happens on that side of the body is blind. Also, the, the so best the, argument here for Muhammad Mahayev is if he didn't tap during the knee bar, then why would he tap during that? Like, if he can hear the, the ligaments <laughs> yeah. in his knee cracking yeah, and it's, like, crazy. getting bent back like a bow, why would he tap in this situation? It was going the... Uh, the knee was... We have that picture, too, right? The knee yeah, is going yeah. the opposite way. It It is... It is truly insane. Like, I, I'm sitting here and, like, acting like how it would feel. Like, it... I, I can't even imagine. What in the world? I can't even imagine. It doesn't make sense. Ah! It's so hard to watch. I mean, I would have started tapping like. As soon as he grabbed my yeah. <laughs> foot like that, I'm tapping. Come on! What man. in the fucking hell? Oh my god, that is unbelievable! Unbelievable! Great yeah. stuff. Next level toughness. Next level toughness, and he is our next guest. He is Mohammed Mohayev, who extended his undefeated run as a pro. He extends his run of great UFC performances now 4-0 in a year. Unbelievable. A lot of activity and, uh, you know, hopefully not too injured after that sequence. We're going to talk about all that and more right now with the man himself. There he is, Mohammed Mohayev joining us right now. How are you, sir? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Ariel. I appreciate it. How are you? I'm doing great. Great to have you back on uh, after another win. We were just talking about that, so could we go right into it? How is your knee feeling after that moment? Crazy, crazy. Like first first day after the fight, I didn't sleep till like till next night. Wow, because it was hurting so much. It's swelled up, and um, I've done MRIs. Kind of just waiting on the results and hoping it's all good because I want to be youngest UFC champion. Yeah. What, what do you like? What do you think it is? Do you think it's serious? I think um, I, I don't think it's like something ripped there, but could be partial, you know, like uh, partial rip. Maybe it's still holding. Yes, yeah, still holding. I hope. Man, that's how I feel. Yeah. What were you feeling in the moment? I had like I, I just seen Jafel Filiho said he heard nine cracks, but in my in my head I heard like seven, six, seven. So four cracks first. He asked. Uh, he asked um, Herb Dean, "Did he tap?" I said, and I, I shook my head like this, and then Herb Dean said he didn't. So he he regripped the like stronger position and he pulled it more with like I felt his growing guard on my on my knee. It was I heard like all the ripping beats, but I'm just waiting for till it fully rips. Man, uh, how close were you to actually tapping? No, I, I never tap. I never. I will never tap. I know it's a crazy thing to say. People say you don't know. I I will go sleep. I, they break my arm. Referee, stop, stop. If they don't stop, I I don't. I will never tap. Even if if it if I end my career that way. Why? Why not? I just have this principle. I I, I believe I went through my life stronger stuff than tapping inside the cage. Wow. Even even some of the best fighters of all time have tapped. It's not it's not an indictment on you. Just my principles. I want to be different. 
Wow. And, and so like, is it worth it though? Like to injure yourself, you could tap, you can end the injury, you know, like an injury never happens. Is it worth being injured and not tapping? It is worth. Now I would have, uh, my, my heart will be more, more pain than actually the knee. I know it's hard for me to walk, anything to do. And like, we have two floors in the house. I couldn't get up to second floor last night since I back to my house. Wow. And, um, but, but I think, I think it it worth, you know, like injury can recover. People say he'll never be back same again here, all this. If my heart is still strong after that night, I will be back. Unbelievable, man. Much respect. Um, how, how was the shoulder? Because you talked about how much pain you were in and, and, and he seemed to be targeting it. How did it feel in the fight and now after the fight? Only in the fight, I felt it when I swing backhand at the end of second round, right? Uh, like I swinged it and uh, I missed it. That's, that's when I feel bad. Uh, everything was fine. Everything was fine. I didn't feel like early rounds or anything. On, in the third round, I only after that knee, uh, when when it was uh, wrestling exchanges, I feel my knee went left and right and I heard sh- very sharp pains there. And I knew I had to hold him strong and I knew he broke mentally. And that's why he gave me this uh, position to choke. Because to, to get that knee back, he put all the energy. He he didn't breathe probably for that t- time, you know? Right. That's the only chance he had. Did you feel like he was targeting your shoulder? Of course, anyone would do, but uh, I, I had good warm-up. I had good warm-up, and uh, I was ready to get, like, shoulder ripped inside. I was ready for, like... I had goal. Remember, I told you last year I want to have four fights in one year. Yeah. And I've done only guy who's done this. I know it's Rustam Khabilov, and then um, I'm another one. Unbelievable. And and what about the training camp? Like, how much did the shoulder bother you in the training camp? It did bother me a lot, but I had good sparring partners who understood where they can attack me strong, where they couldn't. But at the end of the camp, I did the um, last three sparrings with. Five guys, each guy goes in, in fresh and um, I, I was feeling good. Wow. Um, now there's uh, also this other controversy that I've seen you address about the tapping. And I just read a quote from him where he told one of our um, our members of our team, Guilherme, that he felt you tapping multiple times. Can you address this? Did you tap at any point in the fight, in, in the previous portions of the fight? No, only I see the first. Listen, Ariel, if I didn't tap to my knee. Yeah. Do you think do you think I would tap to what what he said guillotine right guillotine wasn't even locked how how, how the hell people actually believe I would tap to his guillotine they they can't put me to sleep but uh, he said he, he basically his uh, his foot was in my boxers and he said sorry he said sorry sorry he stopped and I said oh good oh good let's go ah. that's what I said I said let's go come on Ariel why I would tap in position no the, I, I on the video, actually, there was there was position that there's nothing. I know, there's I know. Nothing. That's it. Doesn't make sense to me. I'm like he, he said, I attacked his shoulder. That's why I was ground and pound with the same shoulder. You know, what I mean, it's like, come on, man. He he wants rematch. I respect this guy. I don't know when I see this today, I got upset actually, because I give him so much respect. I don't give to anyone. I see he carry Bible before the walkout, and I'm like, hey, this guy religious. He he came here just food for his family. I give him respect, warm welcome in UK. When I see say this, it's not nice to be honest. You lost, you lose like a man, and and fight on the way to top. You meet at the top, but that way I don't like. Arif. Yeah, the 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 quote was he said you tapped at least three times. I felt him tapping on my back like he was hiding with malice. There was another situation where I went for the guillotine, then attacked his injured shoulder. He tapped, and I loosened it up a bit. I was looking at the referee the entire time. The knee bar. I felt him tapping. He even says the knee bar with his foot. And the referee asked him tap. I loosened it, and he was able to twist his knee a little bit. Did I tap with my foot? Yeah. <laughs> did I, did I no, I didn't see that. Maybe, maybe the way he when 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 I grab him in a choke, maybe when he was tapping, maybe he counting those taps. I I don't know. I don't know what he's thinking. But honestly, <laughs> what what you say maybe. makes sense about that moment there because the the one that I saw with you going like that, there's nothing happening. The only thing I was thinking, I was like, maybe he was in pain, but but to your point, I also thought if he wasn't going to tap to the knee bar, why is he going to tap to that? In retrospect, though, do you agree in the future, don't do that? Like, it's not worth it, right? To say all good like that? I I don't know if something like, uh, if we're in a fight, like, referees should understand, like, this is 
it's like there's no no in danger. I understand if it's triangle or something. Of course, even even when Herb Dean tried to say something, I was shook, shaking my head. Don't stop, even if I sc- I, I try not to sc- like scream by accident as well. Verbal ver- ver- verbal tapping, right? This, yeah. this right. I know rules a little bit, not much, but I know. But I, I try to bite my gum shut down with pain in my life everywhere. You know, I had crazy pain. You know, uh, Ariel. But I, I even try not to show it much. I know it's uh, it's a it's a weird thing, and uh, I'm wondering if it like has ruined. Like you're obviously in a little bit of pain from the knee bar, but are you annoyed? Like has this taken away some of the joy from the victory that people are trying to say that you tapped, even though no, no, okay. No. I really, the, the the support I've got uh, defending this knee is mo- I had received more support than actually winning all four fights in wow. in the UFC. Okay, I have crazy messages like crazy like from like a, a lot of people. It's it's crazy. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Um, do you want to take like let's say the knee is okay? Do you want to take a bit of a break now? I, I want to stay active. I want to fight in July. If my maybe July to early August. Wow. August and then October Abu Dhabi are gonna be champion very soon. Uh, I believe many people start believing in me. I, I, it's not like I could finish Jafel in the first round when I had him in choke. I just don't. I, I want to be smart fighter. I want to be like, listen, I've got another two rounds. I don't want to blow myself out here, and I want to. I'm, I'm a smart fighter, but these guys like Jafel. Like I said, interview before the fight. He's an average fighter with average skills. He <laughs> just comes right, left hook, left hook, right hand, low kick, nothing special. And okay, I take him down. You lose a, r- a round. It's not smart things to do. I want to fight with high level fighter like, like, uh, like Pantoja. There's like, uh, like you're ready level. for the, so, You're ready for those guys. Yes. So when I fight like clever guys, I can I can show myself better because it's like a chest. You know, two professionals. When somebody come to your gym, he's a white belt and he roll with black belt. He gonna make problem for the black belt with try to injure him. Right, right, right. Okay, so you, but you are ready for the Pantojas of the world. Like Pantoja is probably next for the belt. You're you're ready for those guys. I'm ready for these guys. I have trained with Pantoja actually. I've, I've trained with uh, I trained with best people in the world and have like 35 winning streak right now. Who else have this in the world? Yeah. So if they let, let's just say they offered you a title shot right now. You think you're ready? You're ready for the Brandon Moreno's of the world? Hundred percent, hundred percent. My heart believes. I, I'm not even got tired in this fight. You know that. You, did you see me sit between the rounds? I was walking. Don't even listen, anyone. I was walking ready. Who do you think they offer you next? Realistically. Realistically, I asked Tim Elliott before this fight, and then he got matched. I don't know, but realistically, I think like. Um, Amir Abazi, Kaikara France, maybe Bakup, maybe. Yeah. Okay. I would love to. I would love to. I think one of the, or winner or loser, one of them to to fight because this also contender fight. Do you want to fight in America? Yes. Uh, if if I recover on time, I want to fight international fight week. But if not, they have August yeah. um, event. Right? I want to fight international there. International fight week, man. That's like in less than four months. But last year I did exactly the same. I know, but you you got the knee situation. This is crazy. You need to chill I had, out. So, I know. <laughs> I, had, I had type 4 AC joint eight weeks ago. Golly. Do you think you'll need surgery on that? I'm I'm fighting all the way till the belt. Oh, like uh, gosh. I know. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. How much time left before the, 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 the John Jones? What are you at right One now? One year. One year? Both months. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Are you feeling nervous? It's enough time. No, it's it's way more time than I actually think. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, I mean when it's... I said this when I said this when I came to UFC, I, I'm gonna have as much as five people, no maximum two fights in a year. It's four years, uh, I mean four fights in twelve months. Right. By the way, can I ask you what is going on with you and Jake Hadley? I don't understand this beef. What's happening there? It's just a crack is from Birmingham. It's like <laughs> you, know, you know, like how to say it. Okay, okay, I don't like Amir Abazi, right? Why? But this guy, just don't like him. All right. Like, this, okay, just don't like, like. Fair. We also, comp- competition for each other also, I just don't like his, his, I don't hate him, but I don't like him. All right. But he's a good fighter, he's a good fighter. But guys like Jack Hadley talk shit and he's no good a fighter for me. <laughs> he looked great on Saturday. 
Hey, he's good. He looked great. But ask what happened with Malcolm Gordon. He showed me picture. He was pissing the blood before the fight. Really? Yes, he had kidney problem. That's why he he missed weight by so much. But he he told I think them that he gonna miss the weight early. Okay, okay. You and Malcolm are cool now. I'm cool with everyone, Ariel. I'm cool. Who is cool with me? I trained with Charles Johnson for this fight. Last camp before against Charles Johnson, I was training with Cody <laughs> Durden. Yeah. And with all opponents around the world, I'm always staying in touch and cool. But idiots like Jake Hadley, I don't like these guys. But what, what's the what's the root of the issue there with you and Jake? Okay, so in 2017, he called me out, say, who is this Mokayev kid? As, so he had a fight against Liam Gittins, who is... Uh, who's a professional, also fighting now. So Liam Gittins beat him that time. And I said, listen, you just lost to a guy who are going to fight. And I beat Liam Gittins for five rounds for the title fight. And then he he gone quiet for like three years. And then when I was in Brave, he called me out. I said, come fight me in Brave. He said, I'm I'm, I'm going to UFC, see you there. Ah. And he went to Dan White Contenders. He begged on the knees and crying, asking for the contract. And he missed weight. Yes. Yeah. And, and he's still begging. And, he's still, and, and you saw him in the hotel, right? I see. When I walked out the, with the lift with my team, but my team did know, like, I still, still, I never met him in my life. Ne- never seen him in life. So I walked out. I see him with whole his crew. So I walked straight to his, his face. I say, say what now? You know, like, let's, let's talk. I don't care if I fight this weekend or no. I, this is my personal if fight get cancelled, cancelled. But let's talk, you know. I'm I, I'm different. I'm different. I, mean, I don't want to be gangster or some stuff like this. But I just want to see this guy real or not real in life. So his dad went in between us and started backing him up. And I said, listen, you see fighter behind father. What? I don't know what to say. I, ha- I just had to leave because I didn't want to argue with his father. He's like the same age as my dad. I don't want to do this. Right. But if my father were in front, I would never, I would smash that guy. <laughs> it, it, honestly, though, at some point, do you think this is a fight that has to happen? If he gets like, like high up in the rankings, if he keep climbing, I think, I think it'd be good for pay per view. Okay. All right. Um, was your father at the fight? No, he don't like. Crowd. Well, he doesn't like it either. Leon told me his mom refuses to go as well. Why? Why doesn't he like it? Yeah, he doesn't like, he went to Cody Durden fight, he says too loud, too many people, and I said, I put you in the VIP section, he said, no, I don't like attention too much, and old school. Old school, so he watched at home, or he doesn't watch? Of course, he, he watches, and he sends to all, like, his, <laughs> his friends. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought maybe he wants to know how the fight goes, and, watch, you know, there's some parents who just want to watch when the fight is over, knowing the result, but he'll watch it live. No, no, he, brother... Trust me, he, 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 he don't care. Even if I get beat up, he, he told me I'm, I'm I'm missing some training. I need to do more boxing or something, you know? <laughs> what did he say about the knee bar? Uh, knee bar, he said, it's, it stuff happens. He said, just don't relax. Don't relax even if you're winning the fight. By the way, new glasses? It's cool, it's cool. Yeah. New, uh, glasses, yeah. new ones? I like them. Yeah, it's cool, cool. Yeah, prescription? Because... Because yes, because I look like this, and people yeah. think I'm 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 cocky little kid. No, but no. now I, I relax a little. Now you look like a like a like a veteran. You look like an old man. Yeah, respect. No, no. Maybe old man. I have a kid now. I'm a father. You you're a father now. Of course, five months ago. Wow! Congrats! I didn't know that. Congratulations! Holy! Sp- How old are you? 23? 22? Twenty three. Twenty two. Be turning twenty three. That's right. Five months. Wow! What is it like? Fatherhood. That's why I have motivation, Ariel. You think I'm going to tap? No. You think I'm going to tap? Come on. I'm the youngest father in UFC right now. Wow. That's another record for you. Uh, boy or girl? Yes. Girl. It's, mm-hmm. it's before Malcolm Gordon's fight, I was sick. And uh, like maybe a couple of days ago, I, I had a kid. And um, I was really motivated. I forgot about my sickness, anything like this. Amazing. Wow. And uh, so you feel like a different person? Like when you're fighting out there, you have more motivation? Hundred percent, like I'm very much motivated. And I, I, I never understood when people used to say this, but now yeah. I'm motivated, even staying focused more in everything. Well, what if one day your your daughter says she wants to be a fighter like you? What would you say? No, 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 <laughs> no, no chance. I fight for them. I fight for them. No. Yes. 
Yeah. Uh, by the way, can I ask you uh, about something that I saw right before the show? I don't know if you saw this. There was the uh, the NCA wrestling tournament this weekend. Did you see this clip of this guy? No. Uh, Aaron Brooks, this guy who won on uh, on Saturday. Uh, I guess he's a very religious guy, and he he said something afterwards that a lot of people are. I, I found it to be a little bit offensive. You, you, so you didn't see this clip. Basically, he said that he wanted to give you know. Uh, respect. I don't, don't want to paraphrase, but it's uh, you should you should see it on my Twitter. He said he wanted to give respect, you know, to Jesus Christ, his Lord and Savior, and uh, he doesn't. He said something to the effect of he doesn't believe in false prophets, and he mentioned Muhammad. And a lot of people are very upset about this, and I feel like it was very disrespectful. So I thought maybe you had seen the clip because uh, the NCA clipped it off and posted it on their Twitter, and they got. They got a lot of hate for this on their Twitter, so I, I oh. thought maybe you had seen it and uh, had some thoughts on it. No, no, no. I didn't see, but maybe he doesn't have enough knowledge. Maybe he don't have uh, knowledge. Like, uh, but if he knew, if if he has circle that knows about religion and if, and if he's religious, they should tell him. I think. But I, I would hope one so. guy says something. His many guys think something, but. Um, it's just a lack of knowledge, I think. Yes. Uh, I have no, What I was telling to people was, everyone's allowed to believe in whatever they want, whoever they want. Just don't put down the other people's yes, religion, don't. the other people's God. You don't have to say mine is better than yours. Just say, all right, shout out to my God, Jesus Christ, and everyone's happy. I believe so. Like I said, I said, I see Jafel Phil who walked out with, he tried to walk out with the Bible, but the UFC didn't let him, but I just respect it. The, because he believes, you know, yeah. it means like he has good heart. It, I, I can't, I, I, I could say, I could see he had good heart, and uh, and um, if per person religious and doesn't matter what religion he believes, I'm Muslim, but I think he's is we on similar half. Of course. Um. All right. So you're gonna find out this week about the knee. Yes, I'm gonna find out like tonight probably. Okay. Are you nervous? Yes. You are, yeah. All right. Well, I wish you the best, man. I, because because lack of the time, but pain and all this, uh, it's okay. Pain, I handle. But I mean, lack, I mean, time of the yes. community. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm sending you good thoughts. Congratulations on the win. I hope it all goes well. And uh, incredible stuff, incredible heart and determination. I still don't know how you didn't tap, but you're 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 on a different level, my friend. We 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 aren't supposed yes. to understand how people like you uh, compete in there and how you don't tap. It's unbelievable. So uh, I hope it all goes I well. I hope that we see you back in there in the future very soon. I appreciate that. Really. I want to give a shout out to all my KHK team, Sheikh Khalid, who supports us athletes. Like whatever we do, he supports us all the way, like injury, anything we have. He called me straight away, say, listen, we got the medicals, just come out, come, come out of Bahrain. We will treat you like, like good, you know? And, um, I did camp also in Tiger Muay Thai. All my sparring training partners, all shout out to all coaches and helping me around. Around wherever I go, I feel welcome. I, I Respect. feel good. Salam alaikum. Thank you. Alaikum. All right. Um, there he is, Mohammed Wachayev, uh, hoping to get some good news in, uh, I guess, a few. I mean, it's it's seven seventeen right now in uh, in the UK. So hopefully. Um, it all works out. Crazy clip from that guy. Did you guys see that clip, Aaron Brooks? Do you guys know how to mute a thread? Because now I'm getting blast. I don't know how I got blasted for it, but click in the top corner. Yeah, mute conversation. <laughs> I just don't understand. I, I just I don't understand. Like, just say you know, shout out to my God. Why do you have to put down other people's God? That's my. That's the part I don't understand. People are like, what don't you get? I'm like, what? Why? Why did? What, what does one have to do with the other? Just say you know, I believe in. God, Jesus Christ, love it. It's amazing. I don't know why you have to uh, put down other people's God. Um, yeah, I thought that was strange. But now I'm getting like a million religious tweets. Someone just sent me a, a Bible verse. I don't know what's going on here. It starts to like evolve into something else, you know? And then I'm like, well, why did I bring this up? Yeah. You know what I mean? I do. You know what I'm saying, Frank? Frank, can you chime in in the thread for a second and just sure. let everyone know to back off? Be like, yo, he didn't mean to enter this conversation. <laughs> yeah, I was just, you know, I was just trying to weigh in, you know, just showing love. That's all. Um, all right, I dropped my pencil too. I don't know what happened to it, but I'm all, I'm, I'm all, at, right? I'm all out of sorts after the upset loss 
to Jack Shore, but I'm very excited to talk mm-hmm. to our next guest. Yes, Frank? No, that was it. No, you were going to say something. I was just saying that you'll, you'll, do, you'll do better next time. I guess. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so excited to talk to our next guest. We're a couple of weeks removed from her massive, unbelievable, jaw-dropping, historic win over Valentina Shevchenko. She has been very much in demand all over the place. She is the pride of Mexico. She is the first ever... Mexican-born women's champion in UFC history. She is now the face of the women's flyweight division. Uh, Dare I say, the best women's weight class in the UFC. She just submitted Valentina Shevchenko. Shevchenko's first loss at 125 pounds. She is, like I said, the pride of not only Mexico, but the pride of Guadalajara. She is the one and only Alexa Grasso, the new UFC women's flyweight champion. Hello, Alexa. How are you? Hello, I'm I'm great, and you? I'm doing great. It's so good to have you on the show. It's so hard to find you now. I had to ask this person and that person. Now you're a huge star. I have to go through like 10 different layers of people just to get to you now. There was a time, oh, text, yeah, great. Now you're like a massive star. You have all kinds of PR and everything. It's unbelievable. No, no, I'm sorry. Just my, my inbox got like... Okay of messages and i still try to answer all of them all of my friends and family but it's just a lot of messages but uh now i'm here and thank you again for the opportunity no no of course i'm just messing around uh it's great to have you on could could you describe could you tell us what the last 15 or so days have been like for you like has it just been you still feel like you're on cloud nine like you're buzzing like it doesn't feel real you're the ufc women's flyweight champion no, I mean, um, now I just realized everything that happened. And I, I I was working a lot. I was doing interview for the UFC. You know, we are all required to do um, post-fight interviews and, you know, all that things. And last week I went with my mom also to do a job because I was invited to an MMA event to Cancun. So I said, like, mom, let's go to Cancun. We have the opportunity. It's like it's, we, I had a job there, but I also have a like time to do some vacation and enjoying time with my mom and my dad. So, uh, yeah, you know, just really, really nice two weeks. And right now I'm here in, in the gym in athletics. I just came back, not, not to train like hundred percent, but just to check how, how my body feels. I still have some injuries that I have to, uh, repair, but yeah, I, I would like to start like slowly and, you know, to stay in shape. Where's the belt? Uh, at home <laughs> at home <laughs> do you have a special place for it uh not yet i want to do a good uh, place for it but uh, sometimes i'm required to bring it from you know pictures or interviews and that so i i, I don't have time yet for that but yeah i will have a good spot for him and and when you walk around town now i, I know that people would recognize you and stuff but like since you won the belt has it become a lot more? Are you getting noticed, stopped everywhere you go? No, like normal, you know, people from my city, Guadalajara, they know me. They've been knowing me for so long. They know that I'm always, you know, like this kind of <laughs> wearing clothes and that. So, yeah, but it's cool. Like, hey, good. congratulations, Chad. Or, or yeah, but, but it's really cool. It's just not not too crazy, but like it's normal. <laughs> I saw when you, uh, when you came home, when you... Uh, we're walking out of the airport. There was a, a mariachi band there waiting for you. That was unbelievable. Did you know that was going to happen? No, but uh, it was really, really cool because my family and my 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 coaches and my my therapists and you know like my closest uh, friends were there. And I remember this was pretty similar when we did our debut in Invicta FC. Mm-hmm. Something like this happening. You know, this kind of moment such such huge and special for us that i also love mariachi i truly love mariachi so yeah it was really really nice to to watch the airport there people some some people was were there like hey what is she what, what she does <laughs> why are you guys here <laughs> what do you have seen what, what is that you know but it was cool it was cool <laughs> it, it was well deserved i also saw the 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 mural I saw the one for Brandon Moreno then Yair and now you got your own mural I think by the same guy when you have you actually seen that in, is that in Guadalajara No I think that one is in Tijuana Okay but it's really cool and I really appreciate the artist that did that job because it looks really nice 
does that kind of blow you away, like to be immortalized like that, that someone would take, and so quickly after, take the time to do that? I feel like you're a very humble person to see that. Well, like, how do you react to that? Well, you know, when, when we got the offer for the fight, it was huge, you know, like, damn, now we are here. Like, yeah, let's do this. Because since I moved to fly with division, I always had the goal, you know, like also in one one fifteen, like, I truly want to be a champion. I truly want the belt. I truly would like to have like my name printed in the history of champions in the UFC because that's something huge, you know? Sometimes you can dream it a lot. Uh, it's hard to achieve it. But when you do that, it's, oh my God, it's amazing. You know, it feels so nice. It feels so good because I've been working so like, so, so hard all these years. And of course, it's uh, it's something that I still, you know, processing, tasting, because it's something new in my life. And it's super important. And I also don't want to lose, you know, my head and, and think of uh, the focus, because right now they are coming for my head. You know, right, right, right. <laughs> I'm the one they have to kill right now. But so so I have to be like, sometimes when you think that you achieve is like the highest, you realize that you can do better. You know, I was doing three rounds. Now I'm going five rounds. It's the second time five rounds, and from this point and next, all will be five rounds. So I can do better. I can be stronger. I can be like improving my techniques, as as you can saw. And uh, yeah, but it, it just just do not losing my focus and keep training and keep you know like being better as as I know that I can be. So going into that fight, like the 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 fight week in Las Vegas. Your level of confidence, did you believe, because, you know, we were all talking that week and even Valentina, like, oh, the flyweights are getting better. There's Aaron Blanchfield, there's Mano Fioro, there's Tyler Santos. And it seemed like, okay, she's going to get by Alexa. It's a good style matchup. And then it's going to come, you know, the tougher fights. Did you, did you feel like you were being overlooked? Did you feel like you were being disrespected? Did you feel like people thought like, uh, you know, it's a nice story, but you don't have, you know, the skill set to be like, how were you feeling going into that fight? Well, of course, you know, there were a lot of bad uh, comments. <laughs> like, oh, she's going to be fed to the lion. Oh, poor Alexa. Oh, and some, some, also some close people. And you know, like, oh, it doesn't matter, you know. Don't even stress about the result. You're a champion just to get to this point. And I was like, <laughs> so you're going to think I'm going to lose right now. Yeah. So it, it was also a good motivation. You know, I, 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 I've been always underestimated. It, but it's cool, you know. This is this is ra- this is nice too because I, I always prove how good I am, and I have to, to say nothing, you know. Like I don't have to prove, like oh, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna do that. No, no, no. I just like to, you know, like be like this and working, fighting because I think that fighting is the most important thing that I can do to prove, like how good I am and and how skilled I am. So yeah, I'm just I don't care. <laughs> Did you feel like she was looking past you? No, no, I don't think so. Because she also was training in, in Japan. You know, she was improving uh, uh, a lot. And I, I know that she was training really hard. She was doing something different in her fight camp. And I know that she's super competitive. And uh, yeah, of course, she was training hard. Okay. Um, and, th- and then you get to the fight. And the first round, you look great. Um, and I'm wondering if your confidence level after that first round went up and then what you thought the difference was between the first and then the second, third, and fourth, which the judges thought that she had won, what, what, what a change there. Yeah, I saw the score. I saw the scorecards. I was, uh, they gave me the first and they gave the second and the third for her. Of course, when I when I touched her, when I saw her face, when I when I felt like my my fists were doing damage, I said, like, "Okay, hey, yeah, I, I'm getting it." So in the second round, she changed it completely because she she also uh, did doubles like super super deep. I was hoping her to do you know that kind of Greco wrestling because she also does it on the head and here in the waist. I was doing that. I was defending that, but she changed it completely. She changed it completely. And honestly, yeah, that, that took me for surprise. But yeah, I when I was in that crucifix positions, I said like, no way. I'm, I'm not going to stay here. She's not going to finish the fight here. I'm not going to stay here. And I did everything I had. Like I spent all my energy there. 
by saying, no way, I'm not going to stay here. I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to get up and I'm going to continue, continue. I, I know that uh, in the fourth and fifth round was going to be mine because my strength and conditioning was super hard. You know, I I also knew this this was going to be difficult, but I also knew this was going to be possible. So I was just, you know, calm, focused. In the fourth round, I was... Uh, I low my level and my, my coach say like, hey, look, just a little bit down. So I was able to defend in the fourth round like way better. And yeah, I was just waiting for that that perfect moment. Yeah, and the perfect moment came in the fourth. Uh, I said second, third, and fourth. It was in the fourth, um, the spin. And then we see the footage of you practicing that, which is amazing. I love that stuff. But everything is happening so fast in the fight for you to recognize that it was happening and then to capitalize in the moment. Like, are you, are you having, Oh, this is it. This is, you know, this is, this is the moment that I've been waiting for. This is what we've been working on. Or does it just happen instinctually where she does it and you've, you've, you've done it. You've drilled it so many times that the moment she does it, you know exactly what to do. Could do you remember what you were thinking in that moment? Cause it's amazing to then watch the clip of you practicing it after the fact. Yeah, I, I try it. I was, searching the, the the good distance in the first round but when she was spinning i was the fir first i was too far then i was too close and, and she kind of not not hit me but he, she pushed me so i was like waiting for the perfect distance and yeah in the fourth round uh, i got like oh yeah this is a perfect distance i just have to move a little bit to my right you know the kick was like this close i saw the video in slow motion it just like it just um it was super close to hit the lever. <laughs> I had a, I had a, I had to take the 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 risk, and yeah, I said like, yeah, this is this is the moment. So I I just move a little bit, I get close, and I, I was planning to do the same than than the footage of the train, like put her down, but she she stayed there, and I said like, okay, let, I'm gonna jump. <laughs> and when you had her back, it looked like you didn't have your arm underneath her chin. Uh, but sometimes we've seen it's just so tight. And we saw the picture afterwards of how tight it was. Were, were you surprised in the moment that she tapped? Or did you know that because it was so tight that it didn't really matter if it was underneath the chin or not? Well, jiu-jitsu coaches often say, like, behind the eyes, everything is neck. I, I've been in those positions, too. Sometimes the nose is exposed. Sometimes, the, the, you know, it, it hurts so bad. Yeah. Like, truly, truly so bad. So... When I just got my hands, uh, you know, in a good position, I just, my, my coaches also said that just keep squeezing and count one, two, three, four. And I was just squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. And, and then I felt like the referee said like, it's over. And uh, I was like, <laughs> what does that feel like? Could you, could you tell us what that feels like? What that moment feels like? Oh, it feels amazing because when I was training, like all my fight camp, uh, to most of my training partners, I was submitting them in that position. And they all say like, hey, you're going to submit her. You're going to submit her. And sometimes when you're training, you're like, I don't know, you know, like maybe it could happen. You know, it could happen. But they say, hey, you're submitting all of us and we're naked choke. Of course, you're going to do this. Of course. And and I was like, you know, I was getting confident and confident like every week because at the, at the beginning of the fight camp, I was like, oh, my God. Like, damn, she's gonna kill me, you know? <laughs> because it's pretty hard to to fight to a soft part like 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 her. But you know, week by week, week by week, I was improving and getting better and getting better and getting better. And we found um a lot of places where we wanted to be uh shining. Like, you know, of course my boxing, of course I would love to have stand-up fights as you can tell. So I was also switching stands. Now I feel a lot more confident of my on my stand up because you know I, I also look like a natural salt pot, which is a big achievement for me and for my coaches. And yeah, when I when I was able to finish the fight in, in the grappling game, which is a, an area that I've been improving and that I know that I still have to improve a lot, it means a lot to me. It means so much and, and also to to winning to a, such a dominant female like her. Oh my God. It, it's, it's, it's such a beautiful moment. And this is why we love MMA for stories like yours, because like, we've been watching you for so long. And I, and I feel like, like I was, I was at the card in LA when you fought the night before Ronda Rousey and Aldana fight. You remember in LA before the uh, Rousey and, uh, and, and, and Katzengano. You have what? 
Yeah, I have our, our picture. That was the first time you you interviewed me and my coach said, oh my God, he got an interview with you. Oh my God, this, this is huge. I feel so special that he's doing an interview for me. Wow. I don't even remember <laughs> taking a picture, but that's amazing. Um, and, and so I remember because they were saying, you were the future, you were the future. And you and Aldana from Mexico, there's never been, you know, any women from Mexico. And so that was a long time ago. That was eight years ago. And so to see that whole journey and the ups and downs, and now to see you finally climb the mountain against someone as good as Valentina, it was very emotional, honestly, to watch that. It was a very, very beautiful moment. And, and I have the utmost respect for Valentina. She's an incredible fighter in person. I have a lot of respect for her. But just because we've watched you for so long and watched you develop, it was beautiful stuff. And I can't imagine you have your father there. You have your uncle there as the coaches. What was it like when you went back in the, and you were just with them, with your family? Cause it's such a, cl and, and as you pointed out, you know, and this is not a knock on others. You've stayed in Mexico the whole time. You're a true Mexican fighter in the sense that like you were born there, bred there, and you train there as well to now go back and be with the same people. What was that like when you had that quiet moment and you guys together did it yourselves? Well, imagine it, it was huge because we were also set like all of the time, like, no way you're going to, you, you will never achieve it. If you are training in Mexico, like you have to change your team. You have to change your, your city. You have to change everything you do. If you want to be the champion. And I was like, no, you know, they, they made me, they, they made me. We've been, we've been doing this from the, from zero, you know, we had zero background of company bad sports like zero zero we, we started like from uh <laughs> jiu-jitsu tournaments to mma like pro we had no amateur fights uh, and and this is huge for us we we just want to prove that when you have a good team when you have a good coach when you have a, a good uh training conditioning you know nutrition like no matter any place that you are if you are supported with, with people that want to do better and achieve things and, and, and grow together because sometimes it's hard to find people that want to help you to grow. You know, sometimes like, no, no, just me, just me, just me. But we are a family, you know, Lowe and Brazilian, we are a family. We are always helping each other because my coach always said, says, when you are up, you have to put your hand down and like, give, you know, taking and pulling everyone that helped you because if it wasn't for them, I, I, Oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I wouldn't be here, you know? Uh, and, and I'm wondering how, how did you get over the moments where maybe you thought <laughs> it wasn't going to happen? I'm sorry for making you cry. Um, but I can, I can understand oh, why. It's just, it's just cool. You know, I, I truly love all my, all my teammates and my coach and my coaches for everything they've done. <laughs> do, you, do you feel now that people are looking up to you to, for you to pull them up, like when you come back to the gym, now you're the you're the star, right? You're the I mean, you've been the star for a long time, but you you feel that um, you know, that duty now to pull your teammates up with you. I've always done that, you know. I've always done that. I I do this with my my teammates. You know, when when they have a fight, I'm there, you know, helping. I'm I'm just uh trying to give them all the advices that help me to be where I am right now. I when they have a fight, I'm there, you know, hey, let's do this, let's do that, let's do some more rounds, hey, I'm, I'm going to help you. I saw that you have this this problem, so I'm going to try to fix with you. You know, I, I'm always there helping them, and and this is cool because it, this, it's helping me so much. Sometimes I also learned this from Diego because he, he told me that sometimes people try to search uh, another teammates from other places or from other gyms that are better, but he teach me that the most important thing is to help your team to be better, you know, to help your, your, your army to be stronger, because if they are stronger, you're going to be stronger too. So that's my goal, you know, that to, to, <laughs> that all of the team in Brazil, we can all be black belts, that we all can be boxing champions, uh, MMA champions. So I, I, uh, yeah, that that's the goal for all of us, you know, to help of my teammates, and that's what we are doing all these years. When it looked like you were so far away from the belt, how how did you turn it around? When, when what? When it looked like maybe you weren't like there was a moment where I feel like a few years ago people were like, ah, uh, you know, maybe Alexa isn't going to become who we thought she was going to become. Straw weight was tough, the weight cuts, all that stuff. 
Was it just simply moving to 125 or was it a change in your mentality? Was it a change in how you prepare? How did, how were you able to go on this amazing run? Uh, I think it was a lot of factors, you know, also my body changed it. I, like I said, we started knowing zero, Yeah. <laughs> like we did do, you know, recovery, nutrition, uh, you know, uh, mental coaching. We had a lot of things where we were not having our hundred percent, maybe training was perfect, but at this level in the UFC level, and you have, you need like everything on point. So I think it was, a uh, a moment where we all learn better how to become the best athlete you can be. So it's not that I like it, that I lose, but uh, at some point I think that it was necessary, you know, because we had, w- w- when everything's going right, oh, you said, oh, we can do the same and the same and the same. But when something fails, it's like, oh, well, okay, wait, 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 wait a second. We have to review do everything, like to do a, a look. So, yeah, it, it was it was nice that we all learned and we are still learning. We are still improving. I know that we still have a long, long, long way to go, but I'm happy that I'm sharing this big, big moment with with the same people I started. So immediate rematch, you think they're going to do it again right away, you and Valentina? I hope so. I hope so. She, she, she asked for that and... Yeah, I would love to fight again with her. I know that she's, like I said, I know that she's super competitive. I know that she's perfectionist as me. So imagine, imagine the second fight, like truly imagine how now I, I, I'm wondering what she going to do in the in this second fight, you know, what she's going to try to do now, sewing the first ones, sewing what I did, you know, also, I have a lot of things to do and improve and to get better. And, and I mean, it's going to be like a test, like a test uh, <laughs> uh, match. You know, we I'm excited. I'm truly, truly excited for the second fight. And and I also know that people would love to see that because a lot of people said that it was a mistake from her and that I uh, it was a fluke. Of course, I don't think it was a fluke because I trained so much for that for that uh, winning. But yeah, you know, I think it's going to be important to to show everyone that, uh, yeah, I, I'm the champion. What are the chances it happens in Mexico? What are you hearing? I don't know the chances, but I would love, I would love, I truly would love to this second fight that can be in Mexico. And I would love that this fight could happen in Guadalajara. <laughs> wow. Do they have a state? Do they have an arena there? How, how big is it? Is there, is there one that could hold, you know, for UFC? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we do. And we imagine that, you know, Canelo is going to fight here in Guadalajara. He's going to be back here. Imagine to bring the UFC to my city. That will be huge, huge. But if it's Mexico city, that will be great too. Do you think that, you know, Canelo's fighting in the stadium, do you think they could do UFC in the stadium too with with you? I, I think yeah, is going to fight in July, but maybe you and Brandon on the same card. Do you think they'd be able to sell something like that out? I hope so. I truly hope that the UFC would like to come to Guadalajara some, at some point. Wow. Are you going to go to the Canelo fight? Yeah, of course. Of course. I'm a big, big fan of him. Uh, I love his fights and yeah, like I said, Mexican fighters, Mexican fighters have have a lot of heart. <laughs> yeah, have you ever met him? And technique. <laughs> yes, and technique. Of no, course. no, you've never met him. No, no, yeah, but I would love to to have a a, a training with him. You know, like uh, yeah, just to to ask him for some advices and, and watch him training and and yeah, that that would be really really cool. I feel like that's going to happen soon. Um, and before I go. Uh, like in a perfect world for you, when would you return? When would you like to return? Uh, yeah, I mean, September sounds oh, like a great... That's perfect. Great, the, the Mexican Independence Weekend, right? It all works out. September sounds amazing, you know. Um, but yeah, it, let's see. Of course, before the end of these years, I, w- I would like to fight. Like I said, two fights uh, every year sounds good. And yeah, I truly hope that this could in Mexico. Amazing. Uh, last thing for you, Alexa, what's the best thing that has happened since you became champion? A uh, conversation, a message, a moment, something that has happened. Is there one that sticks out the best thing so far? I know it's just been 15 days or so, but 
What comes to mind? Uh, you know, I heard that a lot of women started to train MMA, which is huge for me. Like I always said to you in every single interview that I that I share, that I just hope that every single woman in this planet could learn MMA to defend themselves, to be strong in her mind, her soul, her body, you know, to avoid <laughs> dangerous situations, dangerous food, dangerous things for them, because we are so strong or so nice and so good that we can achieve everything we want, you know. Truly, the life any person wants to achieve, they can do this, and but it has to start being strong. I love it. So you're an inspiration, it's, 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 Alexa. Well done. You really are. You're a great role model. So happy for you. Congratulations. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for not forgetting the little people now. Now that you're such a huge star, Mike Thurston, you're going to be selling out stadiums like Canelo, and it's going to be impossible to have you on. So we have to uh, appreciate these moments here. So enjoy everything that comes with being champion. And uh, again, again, enjoy, enjoy the belt. Enjoy everything. It's a great thing that you've done, and uh, you deserve it. Yeah, thank you. Just have trained better than before. Yes. Well, I know you will. Good luck to you, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye. There she is, the one and only Alexa Grasso, the champion of the best women's weight class in the UFC, the one and only pride of Guadalajara. Am I pronouncing that correctly? I feel like I'm messing it up. You got it. Yeah, I got it. Guadalajara, wow. yeah. Guadalajara. Wouldn't that be amazing? Could you imagine? Would be really cool. Stadium show, Alexa Grasso and Brandon Moreno. Oh my gosh, that would be incredible. Um, I, I am hearing that they're going to do um, a year potentially in July. Be nice if they could just, you know, put them all, all three of them on the same card. Could you imagine? How could you not root for Alexa Grasso? Such a lovely person. And uh, I don't remember this picture that she's talking about, but I do remember that fight very much. It was at some, you know, I, I dropped my pencil. I'm very upset about this and I can't find it. What was this arena that it was? It was it, maybe New York Rick remembers the arena. Uh, it was like some small venue. Mm, Invicta 11. Version. I uh, are you talking about the LA arena? Yeah. I, think that, I believe it was Shrine Auditorium or something like that. Shrine Auditorium. Here's January. Oh. The, it was Invicta FC 11. So whatever the... Yeah, I know. I just said that. But I'm just wondering what the name of the venue was because it was kind of like a cool hall type of thing. Shrine Expo Hall. Is that what it was called? Yeah. Do you remember the... Oh, are you looking at it? I just looked it up, yeah. Do you remember what the main event was? What was the main event? Uh, well, now you was, saw it. Oh, Cyborg was yeah, the main event. Against? Oh, who was Cyborg fighting in the main event? Was it Charmaine? Ah, uh, you're looking at it. I'm, I'm not. buy any of this. That's Connor. This is cr- not up on my screen. Yeah, it was Charmaine tweet. Invicta FC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 46 seconds. Remember that? Yeah. And I remember... I remember upstairs, it was like this old, it was it was almost like, it was, it was a weird venue, and we had to like take the media upstairs to get them. Oh yeah, you were doing the PR. I was doing the PR. Yeah. That's why I remember this so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was that was a special night. I've talked about it before. Dana White was there. Shelby was there. It's It seemed like they were going to be the future, and Alexa made good on it. Yeah. And Aldana could be next. And Aldana could be next. It was special. And Cyborg still trucking. Cyborg still trucking. Uh, amazingly. Um, let me see here. Man, if they do that, that would be incredible. Yeah, Aldana's fighting this weekend against Raquel Pennington. I knew she was fighting soon, right? Yeah, this weekend, March 25th. Oh, baby. Corey that said. is this weekend? Yeah. Am I wrong? Or did it get, did it move? It might have gotten moved. Yeah, it got yeah, moved. Yeah, I don't think it's on this card. What the hell? When is it? She is fighting. Oh, maybe. Did it get canceled? What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> yeah, she doesn't have She was. She was fighting Raquel Pennington. Was she not? I don't know. Sheesh. Was she? Um. <laughs> oh, Bilal uh, tweeted about me. It's like the first time he's ever tweeted something nice about me. See, we could be friends. 
There it is. Well, why can't we be friends? 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 This is what happens when you have preconceived notions, all right? I love everyone, okay? I'm like, um, I'm like, uh, is it, was it Genki Sudo who had the uh, We Are All One? I think it was Genki Sudo. You're quick, am I right about that? Yeah, he says yes. Yes, he's just too busy typing right I'm, now. I'm, 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 I'm losing my mind about the pencil. You want to just take a second, get yeah, the let pencil. Me get the pencil, Frank. Right. You, I've got the IFB thing here, right? The love. It's not an IFB. It's a love. Oh, That's I found right. it. I found it, Frank. Good job, man. I found the pencil. It was really bothering me. I see that. Speaking of which, I uh, can't wait to talk to our last guest of the day. And still to come, we will uh, recap our weekend in bets. One of us had a great weekend. But anyway, I'm very excited to talk to our next guest because uh, he had a massive win, an impressive win over Sam Patterson on Saturday in his UFC debut. He was on the uh, PFL Challengers uh, last year, almost exactly a year ago. I think a year to the date, if I'm, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, it was. March 18th, he beat Dennis Hughes. And then March 18th, he fought in his UFC debut against Sam Patterson. And what a finish it was. A minute and 15 seconds into the first round. Probably could have been a minute uh, if we're being honest with each other. But uh, it was vicious, vicious stuff. There was a big size difference. And you're like, oh my gosh, this feels like, uh, you know, freaking uh, middleweight going up against a featherweight. But in the end, Yanal Ashmuz, the pride of Israel, the red fox, got the win and improved to 7-0. And, and I'm very excited to talk to this young man. So without further ado, let us say hello to Yanal. Hello, Yanal. How are you? Shalom. <laughs> Shalom. How's it going? It's going, oh, yeah. it, it's going great. It's great to have you on the show. And uh, congratulations on the big win. You just won your UFC debut in very impressive fashion in 75 seconds in just your seventh yep. pro fight. Does this feel real? Oh, it feels like a dream, <laughs> to be honest. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, I was into it and I just, just went for it and, you know, just knock him out. Uh, Incredible. Cool. Did you think you would knock him out? Like when you were envisioning the fight, did you think that it would go up, go down like that? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I was like planning to knock him out, you know. Uh, I was also planning like the first round, but I wasn't planning the first minute, but, yeah. you know... It, it's like better. <laughs> yes, of course. And 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 honestly, yeah. uh, like I said, I think it, it it went a little long, right? Like I don't know if you've rewatched it, but it could have been sixty seconds. The fight. Yeah, yeah. If uh, the referee stopped it earlier, yeah, it could be like uh, sixty seconds. Yep. In that moment, are you thinking to yourself, like, oh gosh, I don't want to keep punching this guy? Uh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> like you know, you know. When you're in situation, you don't know too much what's going on, you know, especially like the, the opponent's head because he was moving. So I was like trying my best to finish him so he can stop moving because, you know, he might like uh, get out of it and he stand up and you continue. So you missed your chance. So I was going like all out. I was waiting for the referee to stop. So uh, and then he stopped and I was happy. You know, I was, like finally. Right. Did you see afterwards, uh, he was clearly out of it. It was like he was wrestling the referee. Yeah. Uh, that moment I didn't see because I was too much like in adrenaline and I was so happy. Like I was, you know, cheering, like moving. But then like, you know, before they raised my hand, I looked there and I saw him. He was barely standing. So yeah, I knew he was like, you know, got hit. Yeah. Good. And Yeah. Well, it speaks to your power. Um, the size difference was amazing. Like when you got in there and saw him and were sizing him up, did it did it feel striking to you? Like you're like, oh gosh. I mean, you're probably used to fighting guys who maybe are a little bit bigger, but it just like on TV, it was jarring to see how much bigger he was than you. Yeah, yeah. He, he was very tall, yeah. And I'm for lightweight, I'm not that tall. I'm kind of like small. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the taller you are, the skinnier you are. You know, because it's the same weight. Sure. Um, I mean, you know, he's not going to be that strong, but maybe like he has the reach and everything. But, you know, every advantage has disadvantage also, you know. So I'm not afraid, you know. 
and you see the result. Like, yes. It was good. I saw the result. By the way, <laughs> uh, you were victorious in PFL. Why didn't they sign you? Well, uh, you know, they give only one contract. Yeah. Four fights, one contract. And, you know, I I couldn't finish my opponent. It was decision. And the other three fights were like finishes. So they give it to somebody else. Yeah. And so why did you not fight for a year? Uh, look, uh, in May, they told me I was going to fight in contender series. So I was happy. Like they told me in between August, maybe in the end of August. So I went to USA. I started training camp. It was, I think, in middle of uh, June or something, like month and a half. And, you know, I'm training, training, one week, two weeks, three weeks, no date, no opening. And I was wondering, like, what's going on? And, like, eventually it didn't happen. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to go into details, but uh, it didn't happen. And then I came back to Israel. And then, you know, I was training again, and uh, I went back again to USA. I was, I was thinking maybe I, I'll do another fight in some promotion because I didn't want to sit around, you know, not fighting. It's not, good. it's not good. And then, you know, they said they're going to let me fight in the start of the year uh, like that. You know, they're going to give me the contract because of the things that happened. You know, so they were trying to, you know, Make up to it. So they give me the contract and uh, they said, like, they got me a fight. And that's what happened. You say you train in, in America. That's in uh, New Jersey, right? Fairfield, New Jersey at K-Dojo. That's where, that's where Habib used to train when, before he went to AKA, right? Yeah. How did you end up there? Well, uh, I know you know it, but I'm Circassian. Yes. Uh, he is Circassian too. So I saw him in Instagram one day, like at, out of nowhere. And, you know, I see, and uh, you recognize the Circassian people, mostly of the flag you have. And I see he had some hat with the flag on it. I say, wait a minute, he's a Circassian guy and he's a coach and he lives in the uh, USA. How I didn't see him until now, you know? And, uh, you know, I sent him a message and everything and we talked. And I just flew to him and, you know, we just met, talked, I trained there. And then from there, we did everything together until the, to the UFC now. I love it. Um, I love the fact, look, I'll be honest. <clears throat> I have a soft spot in my heart for Israel. Um, you know, it's, it's a country that means a lot to me. And, uh, I, you know, I, I, I defend it quite often. And I love the fact that you are from Israel, you rep Israel but you are not Jewish because I feel like most people yeah. think Israel, Jews, Jews, bad people, Israel, bad craziness. So could I ask you, how do you as a proud Muslim, right? As a practicing Muslim, as a proud Muslim, you are not Jewish. Yeah. How do you feel about the state of Israel? I, and I hope that you don't feel like this is a, a, a too deep of a question, but I'm, I, I don't know if you saw, I tweeted the Israeli flag after you won and the comments yeah. weren't very kind. Uh, then I think I, I confused people when I said you weren't Jewish because I don't think people understand that you can be from Israel and not be Jewish. So I just wanted to know how you feel about the state of Israel and representing the state of Israel as as a Muslim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there is no problem. Man. Like, there's a lot of Muslims in here. Like, I think million plus. Uh, I mean, there's no problems. Uh, like the war between Gaza and stuff. I don't go in there. I, I'm not. I don't. I hate that. You know. I just trying to live like peacefully with my family and trying to you know make a career and stuff. But as a Muslim, I mean, the area I live in, almost most of the parts in Israel, there's no problem. Like, people like each other. Like, you know, they, like, racism is not, not too much in here, you know? So everything's normal. I don't, I don't know why people think that, but they need to be happy also. Because, listen, imagine, if you say I represent Israel, it's good for the Jews. I represent Muslims and I represent Circassian too. It's like a win-win for everyone. It's right? beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, for those that don't know, what what, what region is Circassian? Region? We, we used to live, uh, until today we live there, but uh, less because of the war we had with Russia. It's in Northwest uh, Caucasus. Wow. Okay. So we used to live there. Yeah. And still, but like I said, less. 
we had a war with Russia. It's a long history. I mean, yes. I don't want to go in there. But uh, so, uh, you know, after the war, like people start, you know, trying to go to some place. So we went to Turkey and there was a war. And the Turkey took us to, uh, back then it wasn't Israel. Because yeah. uh, when we were there, there was no Israel yet. So they took us there to, uh, you know, to secure their lands, they, they conquered. And after the war was over, we just preferred to stay there because we already like settled there and we felt good, like we loved the area. So we just stayed there and then they start slowly, you know, uh, made Israel then. So that's how we ended up in Israel. And, and you were born in Israel? Yeah, I was born. My, my mother also, my father, like, were, more, were born there. Amazing. Yes. Do you find it yeah. funny that people uh, assume off the bat that you are Jewish? Like, I, I saw some, pe some people were texting me like, oh, this is great. We have a Jewish friend. I'm like, guys, he's not Jewish. I was like, this makes it even better. I love this. I love the fact that there are other, you know, religions, other people living in Israel, and they are proud to represent it. This, this actually, like, to me, it made me even happier, the fact, when I found out. Because your name is, is, a, is a sort of Israeli name, right? Yanal Ashmuz, it sounds like any other name from uh, Israel to a degree. But do, do you laugh when people think that you're Jewish just because you're from Israel off the bat? Well, man, I mean, it was too much. Like a lot of people, you know, they curse you and everything. They think you're Jewish. I'm, I get, I, I'm, I'm used to it. You know, I don't care anymore. You okay. Know? Because it happened to me a lot, you know, and uh, well, Whatever they want, it's their opinion, you know, but it's not the truth. So I don't care. I mean, I am who I am. And soon will, everyone will know, you know. Yeah. And, uh, I haven't been to Israel since uh, my my honeymoon in 2008, but I'm going back this summer and I can't wait. We get the food there, the hummus, the manushe, Abu Lafia, all these places. It's an incredible, I mean, the cuisine is what I'm most excited about. Also, you know, go to the beach and everything like that, but I miss the food, so, so the sambusek, all that stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Well, of course, man, of course. Hummus, everything, the meat, uh, oh my shawarma. Gosh. Shawarma, oh. You know, you know the good thing is here also? You can enjoy the Jews' food and the Arabs' food. That's the right. Muslims food. Well, Wait, man. <laughs> my, my family, my, my mother is from Beirut and my dad's from Egypt. So I have the best of both worlds, right? I have the, you know, I have the, it's incredible. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so when you're not training in, in New Jersey, you're, you're back home in Israel. Yep, exactly. Is, is there any training there? Like, what is the scene like there? Uh, well, there is, yeah, of course. Like there's uh, a couple of good fighters uh, in Israel, actually. Like they're, you know, they're going up slowly. But they live in uh, in uh, in the center, it's like Tel Aviv or uh, Beersheba. It's like more in the south, and I live in the north. Uh. Uh, there's not too much, you know, gyms. There are, but it's not too high level, uh, like UFC. I mean, you know? sure, and, sure. Uh, I work here with my guys. Like I have some couple of guys in my village also. Like they they like MMA. They are not even amateur fighters because they didn't do amateur fighters, but like their levels are good. I'm training with them every time. I teach them and I train them. And, you know, I do like fitness every time until I go to a training camp. Okay. Um, do you ever do Krav Maga? Oh, uh, no. No, no, no. Uh, like, uh, I don't like it. I don't know why. I just don't like it. Why? Why? I have no idea. I just, uh, I don't have a connection with it. Okay. I prefer like the real fight, you know. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Krav Maga is like a little bit like Kung Fu, right? Like it's hard to really use it in... Uh... Uh, yeah, it's you know, like timing and, you yeah. know, uh, like points and stuff like that. So I don't like it. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, since it was a quick fight, how how soon do you want to come back? Uh, well, uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, in a couple of days, Ramadan is coming. So, yeah, oh yeah, that's uh, right. I think I'm going to rest Ramadan, yeah, I'm going to fast. And I'm going to keep training, of course, but, uh, you know, I prefer like to relax a little bit and enjoy with my family. And after that, we'll see like uh, whatever uh, date comes up, I'll try my best, you know, to go and fight. Cause you know, like you said, it was a quick fight. So I'm not injured, nothing. So I'm ready to go. Man, this is a special time to get a win like that. Your UFC debut and now it's Ramadan, uh, the holiest period for, I mean, you're, you're now you're, this is going to be your best one yet, right? Yeah, yeah. This is my best one, like, uh, in my whole career. Like, all fights, this is the best one. I bet. Yeah. Did you ever go to those uh, Bellator cards in Israel? 
no, no. You didn't go to those a no. couple of years ago? They looked like they were good crowds. Um, there were a lot of people there. So you know what I'm talking about? A couple of years ago, they were in Tel Aviv, I think. Yeah, yeah. They did like uh, three or four times, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, no, I didn't go there, actually, no. You like pro wrestling? No. No, wrestling, me? Yeah, you like pro wrestling, like WWE? You know this WWE? You know about it? I, I like wrestling, watch and wrestle too, but uh, I haven't wrestled my whole life. Like I don't have no background at that. No, but there's a guy in WWE right now. His name is Sami Zayn. Uh, he, he's Persian. You know Sami Zayn? Have you heard of him? No. He's a big star. And when I saw you, the Red Fox, I was like, oh my gosh, this guy looks exactly like Sami Zayn. I have a picture here. I want to show you. Look, do you see this? Let me see. You see this here? Can we show, can we show it to uh, Yanal? Okay, just give us a second here. Here's Yanal and Sami Zayn side by side. We're going to show it to you. I'll, I'll get your reaction here. I think the resemblance is uncanny. It's going to pop up here any second. Did it pop up? What? <laughs> right? Oh, man. <laughs> you look like him. Yeah, yeah. This guy's big star. He's a big, big star in WWE. And when I saw you for the first, I was like, oh my gosh, if your hair was a little bit longer, it would be the same guy. Exactly. Oh man. Look him up. Sami Zayn. Where'd you get the nickname? Red Fox? Well, it's not that like special. Like when I started the MMA fighting, so we were I was working at some factory. I changed like a couple of times my uh, workplace. Uh, you know, I was young, so you know, you get a little bit like you know, you get bored and you go to sure, some place. Sure. So whatever, yeah, I was in some factory and some guy of my village was working there also. So uh, you know, they told us you need a nickname, so you need to come up with something. So we you know we were throwing some names and stuff. So he just came out with let's go with Red Fox. So I said let's go. You know what? <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna stick to, uh, until today. So but. You see, like we have it still. You said, uh, you said, yeah, la, let's go, Red Fox, no problem. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. By the way, you speak Hebrew and Arabic at home, or just Arabic, or just Hebrew? Um, what do you speak? Uh, no, I speak Hebrew, Circassian, and uh, I speak. Um, I know Arabic too, but mostly I read and I write. Wow. Talking less, yeah, but I can read more. Yeah. Wow, you can right. read and write, but talking is harder. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, but the first language at home is Hebrew. No, no. Sorry, speak Circassian, our own, our own language, yeah. Wow, is, is is that more like what, like Russian, closer to Russian? It's actually not close to anything. Maybe like it's similar to, uh, you can say like the Chechens and the uh, Abkhaz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the same word, but not the same, you know, uh, meanings. Got it. You know? Wow. Fascinating. Well, what a story. What a background you have. Uh, very happy for you. Congratulations. Chazak. Chazak on the big win. And uh, way to represent, my friend. It's an unbelievable thing that you're doing. And I, and I love your diverse background. So, uh, I mean, enjoy the victory. I think you're going home soon, right? You're going back to Israel soon? Yep. yep. Okay. So safe travels wow. home. And I look forward to many more fights from you in the UFC. Yep. Thank you very much. It was an honor for me to be here. Thank you very much. My pleasure. There he is. Yanal Ashmuz, the Red Fox, and seven and zero now, and uh, I think I think a force. I mean, seven and zero with uh, a pretty impressive run. In fact, the decision win I do believe in PFL Challengers was I think his lone decision. What about that? And yeah, blasted Sam Patterson. Uh, that was quite definitive on Saturday. So I enjoyed that very much. I love the, uh, the diversity. And what about that, uh, resemblance to Sami Zayn? Do you guys see it? Who sees it? It's like it? the same guy. It's like the same guy. I mean, look at that. Am I crazy? No. All over that picture. That's an older picture though, right? And the one on the left. Of him or Sammy? Of him. No, I don't know. That, that's no, it looks like, picture of him. That's from Saturday. That no? is from Saturday. <laughs> I also see a little bit of Arnold Allen in his face. You know. What? Arnold what? Allen? <laughs> I will say that I didn't say that. No. Wow. Are you serious? Hair, Look at him. No facial his hair. His face. Arnold Allen. No. But I did see Arnold Allen at the uh, event on Saturday looking to be in good form, good spirits, right? Yeah. 
Uh, I liked what he had to say about Max. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for that fight. Could you imagine um, a scenario in which Arnold Allen is the number one contender? He wins this fight. He's got to be the number one contender, right? Like he fights the winner of Yair and, and, and Volk, which lately we're hearing July. Who knows if it turns out that way. So then let's say Leon comes back in the fall. Ah, it might be a quick turnaround. Time You're trying to work. stack a London card? No, I, I'm trying to see... I'm, I, I'm trying to put together a scenario where Leon Edwards, quiet, unassuming, forgotten about Leon Edwards, is the champion, and then the co-main event is quiet, unassuming, Arnold Allen fighting for the belt. I mean, could you imagine that? The two faces of UK MMA are these two guys, not the loud, brash guys, the, the just sort of, you know, quiet guys who kept to themselves, did it the hard way. That'd be cool. I think it'd be fantastic. Got to go to a freaking stadium. Although the O2 was great. I found the O2, I don't know. the crowd wasn't as hot as it was the last couple times, right? Am I crazy? Yeah, so that that makes me wonder, do you go to a stadium for Leon's next Do they have to keep know. going to London every know. time? Can't they diversify a little bit? Like, Well, that'd be interesting. A little Manchester, a little uh, Birmingham, a little yeah. freaking Nottingham. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, Liverpool's a weird one because I think they changed... You hear the story? They changed the name from the Echo Arena to the Marks and Spencer Arena and apparently Marks and Spencer doesn't want MMA in the arena. This is the arena what? where Darren Till fought Wonderboy Thompson. Yeah. Cage Warriors went there with Patty back yeah. in the day. Yeah. How crazy is that? Imagine saying no to... A, a huge sport. A that, sport that, that could get a $9 oh. million dollar USD gate and saying, yeah, like, you know what? It doesn't fit our brand. Let's uh, let's get. Uh, what is that company? What do they do? Marks and Spencer. Um, they're kind of like a. I feel like they're kind of like a Target. Oh. Okay. Well. Oh, M and S. Yeah. Shops. Yeah. Yeah. They've got uh, their Percy values. Pigs, the gummies. Is it, is it like a, is is Target a fair comparison? They just have like a little bit of everything. I don't know. I can't give you a fair comparison. <laughs> oh, geez. I just do know what you're talking about. M and S in the crowd's defense. There were there were much less finishes this time around. Just didn't feel like they were as hot. Four of the five went to decision on the main card. You know what I say? Throw that thing yeah. back at the apex and let's go. I mean, yeah. when Leon when Leon was getting introduced and like they were they were they saying were it with buffer, that was incredible. Yeah, headshot dead. Head yeah, shot the chance that, that, that moment where Leon a lot of chance. I loved it. Huh. Where Leon pointed it at him. That's like one of the dopest things oh it was amazing so last time he got the the catchphrase right he got the tagline this time he's got the indelible image <clears throat> leon's two for two um both wins as well uh but two for two on uh creating moments that uh, i think will carry um and as you said somebody who was kind of a little bit overlooked now he's 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 building that legacy now uh when he looked at the camera there it's like one of those like record scratch things like you're talking about the first fight yeah but didn't he do it again this time yeah but that one felt more like the angle, yeah, right? Yeah. That felt like they were just looking, like the camera was in that position. The one where during the face-off, he looks at the camera, that's yeah, like yeah. the office. Yeah. Like uh, it's he's the doing the Jim Halpert. Yeah, like, he's like, at the camera. this fucking guy right here thinks he could beat me, yeah. you know? Record scratch is a, is a good shot. Right? Oh, my God. Um, well, that was a lot of fun. What about Alexa Grasso? I mean, crying there? I mean, that was yeah. just, I was about to cry too. I, I was telling Connor I got emotional earlier about yeah. Kamara Usman. <laughs> I started, yes, started tearing up, and I think we're all second. getting very old. I think we're all. Oh, let's see here. Someone just sent me something regarding. Uh, oh, um, wait. are we reading the same text? Yeah, I think we are because the tickets were like four times. Yes. Oh, that's a good. That's a good shout. Yeah, the price. The price of the tickets were four times. Yeah, a lot of people it were complaining. Some of the fans. So it was. It was a very corporate crowd, huh? Would you say that that's fair, right? Yeah. You lose some of that, like, someone was writing to both of us that uh, the tickets were like four times what the last UFC London was priced and at. And that resulted in a $9 million yeah, dollar so game. I was going to say, did, now, that right. th did that make the gate so big? Yes, of course. So expensive. But guess what? Um, you don't get the same, the same zeal, enthusiasm from the crowd. I don't think the UFC cares. Now, I, I, but you can't go to a stadium. Uh, are we in agreement there? That, that doesn't feel like the correct next move. Stadium? Yeah. For Leon? Yeah. Why not? How? On the heels of, of this? You don't think Leon versus Jorge Masvidal could sell at a stadium? No. You're crazy. I don't. What do you mean on the heels of this? You think that we were, we're just talking about how the crowd was like half dead. 
Yeah, but no, I, that's because I it was. Uh, y'all are overrating how dead the crowd was. I still thought the crowd was good. No. What? It was just last year. It was just you don't so think magnificent. Different. MMA is so hot right now in, in, in Europe and the UK. You don't think that they can. I think they could. Easy. Y'all, y'all are really overrating easy. how bad the crowd was. Easy. Think about all the things that happened last March. You had the spinning back fist, Molly McCann. You had the patty finish. You had Arnold Allen getting the oh. finish in first round. Tom Aspinall finished in the first round. Like everyone was getting finishes in the first round. Of course, the crowd was going bananas. First time they'd been back in however many months, however many years at that point Easy. I thought the crowd was fine I thought the crowd yeah, was maybe, fine this time I liked it if it doesn't feel like this is the fight it doesn't feel like this is the fight wait Masvidal yeah it's, 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 if Mas- I was just listen I was just making the argument listen, for that fight if Masvidal it, smokes like if, he, if he somehow I know it's a tough you know, like, yeah he is like a, almost like a plus 400 I know but let's just I mean he comes out impressively and yes wins. You, I think the demand is going to be pretty damn high Plus, you got to strike while the iron's hot while you have a British champion. Conor McGregor's never fought in a stadium. Yeah, but you know what? Jerry (laughs) By the way, that might happen, but they they also tried. You know that's because of of the Croke Park situation. They're just, it's just a whole mess of a situation there. The stadium thing is so tough. Were you yeah, right there? Oh. No, I dropped my pen, but I thought... Eric How many times are you going to drop this? I was reading I'm something. some text, too. No worries. Oh, right, no, right. no worries, guys. I got some text. Some you got some text, too? What yeah, else? I'll just read By the way, text. shout out to Don't GC. Worry. I mean, I feel like we, it, we've we we've been talking for three hours and 50 minutes. Finished the half marathon yesterday. Finished it, yeah. Casually yeah. just wearing yeah. the shirt. Not oh, yeah, yeah, giving yeah, himself the old uh, pat on the, the back. Oh, yeah, pull that up. Oh, you're, you're, you've been wearing Good job, Look at that bad boy. Wow. Wait, you've wearing been wearing all day. you've been wearing the medal the whole time? Oh yeah, everyone's <laughs> had to stare at this thing all what day. What is it? What is it? What is the medal for? Around. Participation? Finishing, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they give out participation trophies? Finishing. Wow, Ariel. Wow. I feel like... No, no. When was the last, was the last half marathon no. you ran? No, I mean, I just didn't know. I thought it meant like you got a certain number. I don't know. Mm, that felt... No, no, no. I just yeah. didn't know. It was like Jake Paul's belt. Listen, I I get it. You're still emotional. You're still reeling from Jack Shore dominating you. Uh, but you don't, you don't have to take it out on Jason. No, I fucked up. How hard was it? And what was your time? It was, it was pretty hard. Uh, definitely, you know, I had to get up after the, after the pay-per-view... Uh, which I mean, it was an early. Uh, that's what everyone says. Oh, it's so early. I still had to get up at five thirty. You know, mm-hmm. the the adrenaline's rushing after Leon defends the belt. Uh, it was like mile nine. That's when I. That's when it really started hitting me. Um, yeah, if we if we go to the screen here. Oh wow, we got actual yeah, yeah. content. I mean, look, wow, watermarked. I, I don't have the budget. So. <laughs> oh, you didn't pay <laughs> for it. I mean, it's like a hundred dollars to get your picture. Yeah, I mean, look at these. Look at that. Wow, I watermarked hey. on that one. They don't do half off for the half marathon. Love it. It was frigid out. It was absolutely wearing so shorts. Cool. Oh yeah, here we go. Stop motion. Well, that was Keep a, going through it. That was a giant. Uh, <laughs> that's like my heavy coat. I wore that for the almost the entire race. Look at me. There I am, Grand Central. And then around what is it? Around your oh, yeah. around your waist. Yeah. What else was I gonna do with it? I thought uh, you were gonna hand it off to somebody. Why don't you just throw it away? Yeah, yeah they didn't show up. Oh, uh, they drank too much the night. Frank, before. that was you. So you let no, him down. No. Look at me. Look at how great I look. Wow. That's, that's not a good one. Hey, what is that? That was just my feet. By the way, how do you find the pictures? Uh, they got a website for it. No, I know, but like, back, what, what do you do? Do you search your name, or did you look through the thousands and thousands? Uh, nah, you got like your bib number. That's a good one. There we go. Mm. A little blown Victory out. Right there. Oh, yeah, there I Wait, am. Wait, they, they have them listed by... I'm, I'm actually fascinated as to how you find the pictures. Who Who's yeah, sorting them out like that? You see the number on my shirt? Yeah. Yeah, that's how you do it. I don't know how they sort them. Because some, some of them, my jacket is like on. That's and incredible. There I am. Like how it notices me in the back. Yes. Right there. It's pretty incredible. Eric, do you know how? I feel like you would know how. I'm sure there's some kind of automation, but there also might be somebody who's manually uploading. I hope uh, Marathon Photo isn't too upset, you know. I mean, we're getting the watermark out. Look at this. Look at that. Through Times Square. It was a good time. Have you ever done a full marathon? I have. The New York Marathon. Right. Now, here's the question. What did you listen to? (laughs) Who's that? Well, he's in the back. I don't know, but I'm in the back. Oh, Oh, there you are. Yeah. Hey, shout out to them. Uh, I listen to a lot of different things. And this guy, he keeps popping up. Yeah, this guy really is. Any podcasts or just... uh, No, no podcasts, all music. All music. You didn't get... See, I I think I would have gone with a bit of podcast just to kind of let my mind go elsewhere. Yeah. I mean, I think that probably would have been smart, but... uh, Oh, this is a good one. I wish my jacket wasn't on, but... uh, See, how how did they know that was you? I don't know, because the number's not showing. RFID. What? RFIDs. No, No, I'm sure it's... I'm sure it's either text recognition on the bibs but then like something like this where the bib is not out it's maybe ai like but you know the how bib facebook has can... a little thing on it that talks to the camera do you still have the bib 
I'm going to tear yeah, that thing open. The, I still got the bib. I'm going to pull out the wire. I mean, it's noticing me. I, you can barely see me in the very top. You can see the bib, and it still notices it. Oh, so, yeah, what, actually, so incredible stuff. Not, what do you think? It's facial. You think it's like a um, it's like a QR code type of thing? Like a little transmitter. Like an QR RFID. Code. <laughs> RFID. What the fuck is an RFID? Those have been around for like 30 years. Never even heard of such a thing. It transmits a signal. I did get a... Uh, oh, yeah. It. Yeah, I got, the, I got the fist pose up. Had to do that one. Oh, that's tremendous! You got, you know what? Yeah, those are the. You pictures. need to spring the. I mean, a hundred bucks. I think. I think I'm gonna buy a couple. You got to. Oh, it's a hundred bucks per image. Uh, it's forty dollars per image, or you can get like a five pack for like seventy five. Wow. You got to do Sounds it. Sounds like the O2 over here. I'm not paying that. No, I mean, I had to. I had to Uber to the starting line. That was like ninety bucks because it was surging. I mean, had to pay. Are you done now with marathons? I signed up for the Brooklyn one when I was feeling ambitious at the start of the. Uh, start When's of the that? Year. May, the day of Katie Taylor. Oh, May 20th, yeah. Sorry, I can't make it. I'm yeah. working for DAZN. I'm going as your plus one. Well, I appreciate you coming to the one yesterday. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> no one invited me. Um, it was a late night with the pay-per-view and everything. Yeah, right, right, right. right. I, wouldn't, mm. I wouldn't expect yeah, yeah, you to yeah, go. Yeah. Uh, it was very cold also. I was walking my dog. I was actually yeah. thinking about you in the morning. I was like, I was Jesus, miserable. it's there nippy was, out here. There was one mile in Brooklyn. I was like, I, I think it was like mile three to four. And it was, I, I swear the entire mile was like a wind tunnel. I was having to like lean into the wind. It, I, it was almost like I was in Antarctica. I mean, extra credit for me doing, you know, sure. going out in the cold and really roughing it. 100%. And uh, did you go with anyone or are you by yourself? Solo. Solo, wow. And, you know, supposed and to what, a couple people there, but then. What was the motivation? Uh, I don't know, actually. I can't even remember, like, my big motivation when I first signed up. And uh, did you alter your diet? Get in shape. I did alter my diet, and then I kind of dwindled off during it. I got hurt during training. What, what's the training consist of? Running. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> so, he does a lot of thumb war to, no, to get ready. I mean, like, what, what are we talking? Are we doing any conditioning? Like, I don't know weights. I don't know fucking. I did pushing do some sleds weights. and I shit. Done, I should have done more weights. That's why I felt like I was running through mud for the last three miles. Wow. And 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 like when you're when you're training when you're running, what yeah. are you doing? Oh, I'll bring the iPad and watch something like uh, iPad. One of, what are you talking about? Yeah, I bring like an iPad. Oh, you go on a treadmill? On treadmill. Oh, I thought for like, like the, the longer runs. I thought, oh, no, yeah. Don't you got to go on the road for that? Like to, to kind of... Yeah, I'll go to the park know. and I'll listen to a podcast for like a five miler. But like there was one 10 miler that I did and I watched the uh, the Bills uh, oh, playoff sure. game that they lost. Oh, thanks. It was heartbreaking, yeah. That is we were, smart. How long we does that take, a, 10 miler? 10 miler, like hour and a half. On the treadmill, man. Straight, no breaks? Yeah, no breaks. We'll, we'll, we'll sign you up for one. You know, I, I've always been envious, but I can't do it. I, I, my, my legs are like tree trunks. Can't do it. Too thick. <laughs> Too thick. Double C. <laughs> I like that tiger thick. I uh, <laughs> saw a poster for the New York Marathon. That. <laughs> yes, yes, Frank? <laughs> it was dated 1979. It was oh. like start time, 1030, estimated finish time, 1230. I'm like, you're really going to have somebody run 26 miles in two hours. Yeah, there's no like, chance. It's like they're advertising this. Like anybody could do this. What was the big cheat meal? Oh, my gosh. There's this place called Bob White's Counter, which is like a fried chicken sandwich place. And it's just unbelievable. And I got a double meal. Wow. Chicken sandwich, chicken wrap, mac and cheese, fries, sweet tea. And then I had cookie dough at home, made up 24 cookies, probably crushed about 15 of those. Throughout the course Easter of the cookies. day, I probably I probably logged like solid five to seven thousand calories afterward. Man, and th this was after like Sunday afternoon. Yeah. And did you go to bed at like six p.m. or something? I took like a two-hour nap and then went to bed at like nine thirty. Yeah, that's not too bad. And this morning, how'd you feel? Sore. Yeah. Stairs. Stairs are my enemy. Every time I have to go downstairs. I look like an old man. Every time I stand up, too. Like, I got in a car yesterday, and I looked exactly like a grandpa would. Had to hold everything as I, like, lower down. It's bad. Yeah, I got to say, it, 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 it's, like, it's like a good feeling, though. Yeah, it's rewarding. Yeah. What you did. You know, adding one, uh, this, is, this, is my, this is what I show them when they ask why I'm so sore. Sure. You just walk around. Enough. You just walk around with that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, well, congratulations. Thanks, man. Um, and, uh, I don't know whether to congratulate you or not on, uh, the don't. weekend. Okay. Well, I, I actually legit didn't know, but I guess we're- I'll congratulate you on the Leon Edwards Thank you. Day. Do we have that clip, by the way, of me saying fan 
f fantastic? No? Huh? no, I said it. Oh yeah, you feel f- yes. fantastic. And by the way, no recollection of that moment at all because that was the moment we didn't really talk about. Yeah. Can we just talk quickly about what happened on Wednesday? I mean, can we yeah. break the fourth wall for a second? Yeah. Um, for, let me do the. We have some thoughts on what happened Wednesday, but first, a quick word from our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Shout out to them. As you guys know, the biggest college basketball tournament is underway, and the action is just getting started on DraftKings Sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet just $5 on any pregame money line bet and score $150 in bonus bets if your team wins. Plus, combine multiple bets for a shot at an even bigger payout. DraftKings will be featuring parlays and odds. Boost all tournament long, tournament long, tournament long. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and sign up with code VMMA Hour. A lot of upsets right now in that tournament. A lot of fun stuff. New customers can bet $5 on any pregame money line bet and get $150 in bonus bets if your team wins. Again, that's code VMMA Hour. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. A lot going on in sports. We've got the World Baseball Classic Finals tomorrow. USA versus Japan or Mexico this evening. Plus the NBA, the NHL. Big MMA card this weekend. Cheeto Vera versus Corey Sanhagen and a massive boxing match. David Benavidez against Caleb Plant. Ooh, wee! 21 and older in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state specific responsible gambling resources. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler in New York. Call 8778 Hope NY or text Hope NY 467 369. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Issuance? Issuance. Issuance. Sounds weird. Issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions applies. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash basketball terms. I also want to give a shout out to our good friends over at Squarespace. We love Squarespace. Oh my gosh. Squarespace, they're so good and so happy that uh, they're on our team. This episode sponsored by our good friends over at Squarespace. Squarespace, in case you don't know, is the all-in-one platform for your growing business online you can go out there you can get the word out about your business about your 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 newsletter about your work about your writing about your music about anything you want in fact our very own frank has a website with squarespace multiple. and he multiple wow multiple. new one uh no another one that i've been working on for a while okay um do you want to give it a shout out or no it's not necessary all right with squarespace take advantage of their powerful blogging tools social media integration and analytics to gain insights into what your audience wants i mean what's better than that so you can cater to them so go to squarespace.com slash mma hour that's squarespace.com slash mma hour for a free trial and when you're ready to launch use offer code mma hour to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain so again when you check out mma hour use that code mma hour that's a great way to let them know we sent you. We appreciate that very much. But bottom line is, go check them out. They are great, and we appreciate their support very much. Also, uh, you want to take advantage of this. It's their Squarespace Video Studio app. You can create stunning video, manage email campaigns, and gain insights into your audience with powerful analytics. Again, that's squarespace.com slash MMA hour code MMA hour when you check out. Thank you very much to them. So what about last week, guys? Oh, we're going to this camera. Wow. Um, guys, this was amazing. When we were doing the picks last... Okay, so this is the situation. Can I just tell you guys something right here? Like totally break the fourth wall. So a neighbor of mine on uh, Tuesday... Oh, wow. oh yeah, really we're really going back. Says go. to me, you know, and I'm like... I have to be careful about what I say because sometimes I'm shocked at, you know, who's listening to the show. So I'm just going to say like a neighbor of mine... Uh, texted me saying that he was sitting next to Conor McGregor at the uh, the hockey game, the Rangers, Rangers game. Yeah. Yes, and I was like, Conor McGregor ain't sitting next to you. Conor McGregor's in Las Vegas coaching the Ultimate Fighter. I remember even turning to my wife and being like, "This guy thinks he's sitting next to Conor. McGregor. Are you kidding me?" He's like, "No, he really is." And then he sends me. He just drops a picture, and I'm like, "Fuck, that really is Conor McGregor." I mean, it couldn't have been anyone else and i see audi i see dave fogarty so like oh wow conor mcgregor's in new york call him up i call up audi and i hear the hockey game going on it's like audi you guys are in my city you're in my town i run new york and you don't tell me you tell me i'm going to talk to like you're here let's go tomorrow wednesday mma hour let's do it oh we got a big schedule proper 12 this and that shout out shout out 
oh, come on, let's, you know, ah, ah, I'm going back and forth. All right, let's see tomorrow. Talk to Fogarty, Yogarty, his photographer, great guy, met him, unbelievable. All right, you know, I'm going to work for you. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to make this happen. Okay, so we get to the show, and at, at this point, I still don't know, right? I still don't know if it's going to happen. Now, throughout the show, you can see me on my phone a bunch, and that's not because I'm, I'm bored. I'm texting. I'm trying to, like, you know, find out what's for dinner. I'm trying to see if he's going to come on. Then I'm sort of like resigned to the fact, all right, it's not happening. Maybe we could just do a quick Zoom, you know, like, hey, you know, jump on Zoom. You know, Ariel, I couldn't make it, but I'll be back. We'll do it again in the future. Then I hear, no, he's going to come by before he goes to Fox News. Hannity show, he's making some donation, big announcement, Tunnel to Towers, I believe it's called. He announced afterwards, by the way, a million dollars, over four million since they started this. Tremendous stuff. It's like, wow, all right. But then they say he's going to show up at around 1030 after Hannity. All right, no problem. We're here. You know, a couple of groans in the uh, in the control room. People didn't want to say, but I was like, guys, it's Conor McGregor. You know, like, what do you want to do? Like, it's like, I'll, I'll, you know, like, you want me to, you want me to like fly the, the ship by myself? I, I could try, but I'm not really, you know, well-versed in this. Anyway, no, not fly the ship, fly the plane. Um, steer the ship. Anyway. Moving on. Yeah. They say it's going to happen. All right. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, it's a race against the clock. Then they say, so at this point, I tell New York Rick, New York Rick says he's getting in his car and he's coming down. He wants to be there. I mean, he's been working on the show for 10 plus years. He's got to be here when Connor makes his first in-studio appearance, right? Like, that's what you were thinking. I got to be there. Big moment. H how far do you live from here? Our drive. Yeah, our drive. I mean, you're, but you're coming in. You're, you're dedicated. Yeah. Then we find out he's coming in before, potentially, before we're told, like, stay where you are. Now, Frank leaves. Frank, I don't know what he did. He goes for dinner or something. I don't know As where he, one does. You just left. And then we're like, well, where's Frank? You know, the, now you want me to fly the plane and do the audio? It's it's a lot to ask of one guy. And book, you know, it's it's a lot. Um, so then we're like, he's then I get the the word, he's coming in 15 minutes. Yeah, can we can we talk about that? Okay. Like we were all like, we had kind of given up on him coming in that hour and we were like all right he's he's gonna end up coming at the later time uh which is okay we're down to chill uh like you said it's conor mcgregor coming in studio and then we're just sort of all sitting here with our feet kicked up eating dinner or whatever and then you're like oh my god he's gonna be here in 15 minutes and like it felt like that uh the meme where everyone starts running around like uh people use it like oh the uber's here or something like that or or the office clip something like that it was it felt like chaos broke out when that happened I mean, it was like, I mean, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. And then he comes in, you go down, smart move, right? Oh yeah. You go down and you're waiting for him. You talked about this a little bit on Wednesday, his bodyguard or his security guard shows up. What's the difference between security guard and bodyguard, by the way? Nothing. This this felt like a security detail. Detail, that's how wow. Because there, there were multiple, right? Yeah, four dudes. So they come up, they check. Four dudes. Wow, I didn't notice all four. How many people would you say there were total? In this row sitting next to me, there was probably five and then another, another four, four standing yeah. in the doorway. And then there was another like seven or eight in the studio with you. Like, I mean, I would say the team was between 15 and 20 people. It was unbelievable. It comes in, ready to go. In retrospect, we probably should have started the show a couple minutes before so it wasn't so rushed. In the moment, I wasn't really thinking, but we got it going. Flew the the what what what? When you talk about not being ready to go. The funniest thing is when you're like 15 minutes, and then you're just like, "Do we have a graphic? Like, I need, we need I know. something to post." I, I was I, like, I was, How did we not? Think I know about we didn't think right about any now. of this. I, I know we were sitting here having freaking uh, Korean barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Shout I was like, uh, "It was barbecue. good. It was good." Although it, it made me delicious. burp a lot. It was a huge Absolutely. issue. I should not have had that. The onions were killing me. Anyway, oh, I smelled like fried shrimp in the studio. Uh, it was, yeah, it was. But anyway, he comes in, looks great. Uh, seemed genuinely happy to be here. Seemed genuinely happy to look around, look at the famed studio. Noted, you know, our beautiful view right here. He was told like, me on the walk over. He was very hyped to see the studio. He's like, I've been meaning to do this for a long time now. It was, it was beautiful. Uh, really enjoyed the big shot toy that we had of him. Oh. Right. Uh, seemed actually surprised that I had it. I was equally surprised that he didn't have a thousand of them. This then became a running theme in the aftermath of his interview. In fact, we do have some visual evidence of this. Hey, yes, let's, let's take the whole tour. For it. Tell, let's yes. start. As, as soon as he leaves the so, studio. So he doesn't take it 
during the interview, but afterwards, I'm like, take it, please. He said, oh, his kids are going to be there. Great. He's going to the Savannah St. Patty's Day parade. Take it, take it, please. You know, so that's this who is we, you. That's who he was referencing when he was like, I'm going to see him. Yes, 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 yes. So I'm like, this is you. You have to have this, not me. And then we see on social media, this thing went everywhere with him. Well, there okay, you are. So it yeah. starts as soon as he leaves. Here's me and him. He's holding it, which is just fantastic. This, vi- this picture is fantastic for multiple reasons. <laughs> Number one, no, wait, go back for a sec. Yeah, sure. The First of all, because of the editing that you did with the lighting, it looks like the suit is the exact same one that he's wearing. At yeah. least that's <laughs> yeah. how it looks to me. I'm colorful. I should, oh, I should have had the OG up here because the lighting is so horrendous. People have really been calling for it. I mean, the lighting was just can you, horrendous. Can you pop it in for us real quick or is it too much to ask? You give me you give me a few minutes. After All right, uh, you're doing the fist pose. You're holding, holding the microphone yeah. that I've just taken from him. I mean, there were a lot of things afterward. It was it was so much chaos in the moment. It happened so fast. I was like, wow. There's there's. I mean, the fact that he's holding the <laughs> the big shot is. It looks crazy. like he had just won that at Dave and Buster's. The way he's holding that, you know. <laughs> someone, someone said uh, when you go to ask your mom if your friend can sleep yes. over. That's what it, that's what this looks like. <laughs> It's like, mom, you mind if he sleeps over? <laughs> oh, my God. That's what it looks like. All right, all right. What else? So this is as soon as he leaves the studio, and then he gets in the car. He's still proud of it there. Uh, they <laughs> had so to, unbelievable. They had to head to Fox News. He goes on Fox News, one of the biggest networks in America, and there you can see it right over Just his Just chilling. Shoulder. Just chilling. Unbelievable. Just waiting. <laughs> I mean, it's... <laughs> had to have it with him. Then he takes the private jet. As they're on the on the way to the jet... Got to get another picture with it. I mean, he's still holding on to it. Like this is now multiple stops later. I can't tell by the lighting. I don't know where, how long they ended up staying. It almost looks like the sun might be starting to rise in the back. I don't know if that's just lighting. Maybe this is like two, three in the morning. It could have been hours after he was here. Uh, And then, I mean, he had to get on the plane. There he goes up the <laughs> That's staff. the best shot. Like, I, I would have loved to have seen the planning of that. Like, let me put this guy here. <laughs> the lighting in this one is yes. tremendous. I oh, mean, the, my God. The big Shot looks fantastic. And then, shout out to Big Shot. They say... They, they, they told sent, me they, they sold out. Remote. Incredible. Incredible. And I never even mentioned them. I guess people just looked up Conor McGregor Pillow. Now, they were kind enough. Uh, I know someone who does work for them. They sent us, like, 10 or 15 of these. And uh, I had a Yuri one up there, but now I'm like, all right, let's switch it up because we put the Connor one. I, I saw the Dustin. The Dustin one's great, so there's Dustin. But I have to say, like, I've had these back in the day with the wrestling, and this is, I have no skin in the game. They are so comfy. They're like they're like velour, these like things. Super like quality. velvet, right? Yeah. I brought some home for my kids. They actually, my daughter sleeps. <laughs> my daughter. Who do we got? got? Who's the fighter? My daughter's, there he is, Bam Bam Tuivasa. My daughter oh. sleeps with uh, Derek Lewis. I mean, that's a good choice. That's a good choice. Maybe worded differently, Black but yeah. Lewis. I mean, she sleeps with her Derek Lewis toy. I mean, there what, you what go, it? There, there it go. is. I, yeah. Um, yeah. Did you tell, now, have you told Derek Lewis this? Oh, I, I, feel feel like I wish I had his number, but I think he's changed his oh, number yeah, nine times. for the hundredth time. Yeah, there it is. Shots. Shout out Big Shots. I mean, they really are comfortable. They are, right? They're very soft. Great stuff. I mean, they look cool. Too. They look cool. I really like them. You got a Ric Flair one. We should put that one up they, there. When are they going to make the Hawani big shot? You know what? That's a good. That's a good shout. Do they have some cool ones of the belts? Like oh you can yeah, get the yeah, belts yeah, yeah. That are pillows. You can get the BMF belt as a pillow. Really? You should do some darts yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah, they make some cool stuff. They should do some more pro wrestling ones. I wonder. I like the Connor one because he's wearing the suit. Well, it looked like you, they had another one too. Yeah, yeah, I like that you can get the suit and the and the fighter one. Um. So yeah. So tremendous to see him uh, enjoy it. He seemed to enjoy the chat. I felt like I, I was looking at him. It was 8.02, and then I looked up, and it was 8.18, and they're giving me the rap. I'm like, God dang, that took way too – I mean, like it felt like it was like a 10-second interview. But it was nice, and uh, people seem to have enjoyed it. You know, I got a lot of, oh, it's the old Connor. It's, you know, he's in good spirits. He's in a good spot. But the, the truth is, like, they didn't have to stop by. They really didn't, no. and uh, they really went out of their way to stop by. And it's one thing to just do it like, hey, well, let's just bang this out in the car. They, like, actually physically stop by. Yeah. And that's pretty crazy. damn cool. All 40 you, of them. Yeah. You could tell by the scheduling that, like, the, it wasn't like, yeah, we got some time to kill. Pretty, I mean, it cost us a lot of money to make that happen. Like, it had to pay a lot for the Clearly, interview, yeah. but it was right. so worth it. 
It was so. So we had to pay it for the like over the next few years. Yeah, but I mean, I would say it was Just worth a it. Payment plan for yeah. It was so <laughs> worth it. So yeah, enjoyed that very much, and uh, that was uh, that was our second episode of uh, Wednesday. Now we're back, and uh, things you know. So uh, the reason I brought all this up was because when I made the pick of Leon, obviously I was going to go in that direction, but I really have no record. Like I asked you guys on Saturday. What were our picks again? Because I didn't remember anything. Because that's when it was getting it was getting really hot and heavy there, right? It was getting really hot and heavy with the uh, the texting. Is he going to come? Is he not going to come? And uh, and then I find out first fight Veronica Hardy. Yeah, we need to make a new rule. If someone comes on the show that Wednesday, you can't pick against them. That, I feel like this has burned no. this several times. No, I, this I don't know if it's burned us before. Well, let's go through it. Not that, but the picks. Oh. That was my cue. <laughs> right, let's oh. go through. <laughs> I thought we were going to go back through every single no, I mean, like, uh, All right, yeah. Oof. Juliana Miller, Casey O'Neill. I mean, Jack Shore and Leon Edwards got it done. They did. They sure did. They sure did. And what was Leon again? A minus, uh, sorry, a plus 400 or something? Plus 210. Plus, plus Close two. enough. I'll give yourself that yeah. one. <laughs> uh, yeah, fantastic pick by you. Thank you. Uh, and the Parlay Pals lose again. 11 and 18. Really starting to find ourselves deep in the red. I guess this is a theme for us in 2023, the, the show as a whole. Moment of silence for the Partly Pals. Yeah. yeah. Are, are we readjusting or are we, we forging on? We must I forge say, on. I say we just forge on. All right, all right. I'm in. I'm still having fun with it. What about the rest of the weekend? Uh, Yeah. Not good. Not good. Singles. Two and six. Uh, Not going to lie either. I felt pretty good about these, but... uh. Just was not meant to be. Uh, the struggle of 2023 continues. One parlay, you know, we're keeping it tighter. We're keeping it with less bets. The, the parlay does hit. Uh, but, yeah, another bad week, man. And down 5.53 units, down almost 17 units on 2023. Never thought we would be saying that. Uh, but here we are. Going to be nice to get this week off after uh, after UFC San Antonio. What week off? WrestleMania, baby. Yeah, I'll leave the bets on uh, on WrestleMania. Wow, yeah. you're really uh, you're struggling here. Confidence wavering. Oh, confidence is definitely wavering when you find yourself down 17 units. Wow, uh, but also, boxing, no love. Wow, man, I don't know. PFL. <laughs> yeah. What? This it's doesn't just, sound like you. This, this is just something every single this week. Doesn't isn't sound it? like you. Oh yeah, we got Anthony Joshua too. Huh? Anthony Joshua, basketball final four or whatever it's called. You know, let's say final four. You get the point. <laughs> Last four left. Um, all right, what else? Uh DraftKings. Yes. Shout out to my man, P Fox 701. Actually, one last thing on these. Rick used to always be like, oh man, it feels like you're numb to like finishing up three, five, whatever, seven units last year. And I didn't think it was that big of a deal. It's honestly gotten so bad in 2023 that I'm like numb to losing five units now. I'm just like, oh yeah, it is yeah. what it is. We'll bounce back next week. Like a, a five and a half unit week last year, I would have been like crushed. I would have been devastated. Uh, so yeah, that's where we are in 2023 so far. Yeah, it'll be fine. Oh, well, we will be fine. I can guarantee you that. MMA Hour Verdict League, bankroll management, you know. MMA Hour Verdict League, Moynihan Francis still finds himself at the top. Uh, so shout out to him. Things are getting tight as we uh, head towards International Fight Week. And then some big hitters because some people hit some crazy ones this week. Some very crazy ones. What do we got? Yeah. The music's very loud. Oh, my crazy? Gotta be excited. Oh, yeah. All right, you see it. We start with Gio Gennaro, plus 62,379, 10 fight parlay. Picks two thirds of the card right, turns a dollar into 623. Jeez. I mean, just, just insane odds to see uh, on a parlay. And that's not all he hit. He also hit Kamaru Usman by split or majority decision, plus 1,400. And. Veronica Macedo Hardy by decision plus 700. So overall, just a fantastic night for him. Sheesh. Next up. Someone wrote to me, leave it to Ariel to get on the sheesh bandwagon four years late. I was like, wow, yeah. I didn't realize yeah, this yeah, was yeah. the thing. 
<laughs> Reed Hoffman, 26, plus 46,087. He also had a 10 fight parlay. Ludovic Klein got canceled because of the draw, but he does hit that. Turns 56, 50 cents into $156. Incredible stuff. Uh, next up, Def TV 116, Deft Venom. Or maybe it's Deft V, not Deft TV. <laughs> It works either way. <laughs> anyway, he hits a plus 21,008 parlay. Same thing, nine legs. I guess these guys just got the script early. They knew exactly who was going to win. Uh, so shout out to him. Here's one of the crazier ones. I mean, I just, you got to take this one in. James Poe, or it's James P 029487326 one of the two. Leon Edwards, by majority decision. Whoa. Plus fifteen thousand turns five dollars into seven hundred and fifty-five. So not by split decision or majority decision, by majority decision. So if it would have been a splitty, he would have lost. So that point deduction was absolutely massive for him. So, or James P zero two nine four eight seven three two six. Shout out to James. Uh, next up, R Villican R Villicana seven. Tough name week. Tough name week. He goes Marvin Vittori by decision, Lerone Murphy, Christian Leroy Duncan by KO, Jack Shore round two, Joanne Wood by decision, and Juliana Miller Macedo goes the distance, plus 11,900, turns $20 into $2,400. Incredible stuff. Few more quick ones. Bouts and Stouts and Tip Timothy Troiano both call point to be deducted in the fight. Bouts and Stouts calls that, and Timothy called the Leon Edwards by split decision, so shout out to both them. Uh, John Pendleton, he was at the event, and he hit just all sorts of different things. One of the parlays was Leon Edwards by decision and Justin Gaethje by decision. That paid five euro into 283 Euro pounds, one of the two. Also hit two other parlays. Got to be in the building to see it. So congratulations to him. That must have been fantastic. And then I just got to show love the two last ones. K-Pat. You just got to respect this parlay. Starts on UFC 283. Gilbert Burns, Jessica Andrade, Brandon Moreno, Jamal Hill. Then UFC 284, Islam Makashev. Then UFC 285, John Jones. Then UFC 286, Leon Edwards. He had to sweat this thing out. For two months, but he turns thirty-one dollars into a thousand. And then last but not least, yes, one of our own. What a man back here in the control room. No, plus four thousand two hundred sixty-four. Big is. Joe G. Wow, gets the entire main card correct. He goes Marvin Vittori. He goes Jennifer Maya, Gunnar Nelson, Justin Gaethje, Leon Edwards. Five dollars into 218. Yeah. And and, oh, yeah. and this was after a string of misses, but like heartbreaking misses, right? Like, wasn't it just like got it all the way to the end or yeah, one, yeah, right? Always missing the parlay by one. Yes. And they, I know he was nervous when they were making the call for uh, who won the main event, but he cashes. Is there anyone Shout you want to thank right now, Big Mr. Joe. Uh, Joe? Big Joe, anyone you want to thank? Yeah, Please. probably uh, Mysterious Frank. He convinced me to not cash out. Oh. oh. Yeah. At what yeah, point? Yeah, at what yeah, point yeah. were you convinced? Were you trying to be convinced to not or to cash out? Uh, Leon and uh, you got nervous. Yeah. Right before the main event. Yeah, but then I, Frank was like, "Just ride it. It's five bucks." You're yeah. Good. The cash out was fifty three dollars, yeah. so we're very glad that he didn't cash out. Yeah. True. True. I agree. I agree. Wow. Well done. Well done. Please, can you just do me a quick favor? Don't like turn it into some crypto nonsense. All right. Can you just keep it? I mean. Wow. I mean, is it, wow. is it is it still a thing? Let the guy enjoy his moment. No, but it's like, is it still he's a thing? Or? He's he's leaving the room. Is it? Still yeah, a I mean, and he left on his screen his. But when they Bitcoin talk about crypto.com right? and all that, like, is it still a thing? Honestly, I, I thought it was. No, not, yeah, it's still a thing. It's still. It was thing? a crash yeah. though, and. Is it still? I mean, I thought it went away with the uh, no. the horse eating the banana. No, those are still a thing too. NFTs. You yeah, can I'll get just take NFT. the money and buy you a new dartboard. Oh um, no, that we got one. Did I mention that to Jack? They said they're sending us a new one. Right. Yeah, he yeah, meant a book on throwing darts. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Jack, uh, Jack actually hit me up on the side after the interview and was like, make sure you post the video so I can tag PDC. Wow. Really Jack trying out. to really freaking rub it in my face. 
some classy guy that Jack Tangshore is. Um, all right, well, congrats to all the winners and, uh, of course, our own BJG. Two last things before we go. Um, unfortunately, some very, very sad news. Uh, seeing this on MMA Fighting from Alexander K. Lee, Larry Lapicus, the two-division fighter for one championship, uh, tragically has passed away. He was just 27 years old. MMA Fighting confirmed the news with one officials who released the following statement. The one championship team is heartbroken over the tragic passing of Larry Lapicus. Our thoughts and prayers go out to his loved ones at this difficult time. Officials also confirmed that Lapicus' death was due to a car accident. The news was first reported by Sherdog.com, who connected the accident to a news story from Milan today. According to that report, Lapicus died after lapsing into a coma after a motorcycle crash in Milan, Italy this past weekend. The Moldovan fighter lost control of the motorcycle and collided with another vehicle. He was 14 and two, one no contest, competed at both lightweight and welterweight for one championship, um, and most recently fought on one prime video one this past August. So that is uh, horrendous news, and uh, our thoughts go out to his family as well. Very, very sad to see that. Um, and also saw this while we were wrapping up here that uh, USADA has imposed a one-year sanction on table tennis athlete Kanak Ja for an anti-doping violation. Um, apparently, they do uh, they do some doping in table tennis. Who Oof. knew? Yeah. What was that thing that you said when we were at the uh, AEW show at Arthur Ashe? Can't beat that. Can't beat that. When that guy um, was telling me about all the past. Yes. Yeah. And that reminded me of uh, the last thing that I didn't get to when I saw this that New York Rick was all fired up about uh, when Dana White was asked about the USADA situation um, at the press conference, right? That was one of my take us home. Take us that home. That was one of my lower oh, tier really? fired up situations. I mean, you could be pretty fired up about that we one. We had no? like a, a whole to do list. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, just I've had enough of the uh, it's out of my hands. You know, talk to Jeff thing. Like, we get it. We we've heard that one. Now, address it. Do you think they regret ever doing the USADA deal? No. You don't think I so? I think at the time it lended a credibility that they needed. Do you think they want to get because rid of it now? We're, it's easy to think about that now. I think people have have I, I, quite frankly, I think people care less ab about it. Um, but at the time, remember how rampant the TRT thing was, and right. everybody was so um, concerned about potential harm being done to athletes and the changes in physiques. So I don't think they regret it at all. I think they needed it very much at that time. Um, do I think it's still serving the purpose it was supposed to serve? Mm, maybe. Um, but as, but if the rules can be rewritten on the fly, then what what what's the point? What was the song that he was singing? You said, uh, you can <laughs> But yeah, my, my old... frustration is more with the idea of like, uh, talk talk to Jeff, yeah, I mean, talk to Jeff. But that's, like, that's what they used to do with the athletic commission. Yeah. Oh, it's the government. It's the government. Now it's like... He wants nothing to do with this. And that part I don't fault him too much for, but it's like... Where's Jeff? You know the question. By the way, I, yeah, I, 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 I know, I, I love when he says, like, talk to Jeff. And he's like, where is he? Like, it's not like he's available. Like, is he doing interviews? You I would love to talk. By the way, you think if I ask Jeff to come on, he's coming on the show? No, I doubt it. No. You saw the issue statements. They don't really do right. a ton of them. Or, no, but what about, like, how many statements do you get from Jeff? I don't even know. This is the first time I've heard of Jeff. Yeah, of course. Jeff Nowitzki. He's like uh, the guy. Are you kidding me? No. I mean, yeah. Um they yeah, they they've released statements. They they're they're actually pretty decent about doing that. But Nowitzki? Yeah. Twitter stuff here and there, the Islam Akhachev thing. Yeah, they released a statement on that, but it was it wasn't it really was a very, statement, it was like a couple a of tweets. Mm -hmm. That's something. Yeah. That that is some kind of uh statement or comment um but yeah something a little more in depth would be nice yeah i agree in any event we'll see how this goes right i mean well, i just saw a uh, i know nothing like what what do we know at this well, point? we'll see how it all plays out yeah uh, very dana white of you to yes say that. uh how about this tweet here from richard shore shaky shore justin trudeau gsp martin brodeur wayne gretzky your boy ari halwani just took one hell of a beating from jack shore redemption slash Hashtag cleared his name. 
I think he's. What are the other names? Justin Trudeau, Canadian. GSP, Canadian. It's, Cana- it's just Canadian. I think he's trying to let them know. He's letting all the Canadians know that I lost. Wait, he tagged all of them? No, he didn't tag them. <laughs> Maybe they're searching their name. Trudeau, Gretzky. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, it. who is that? Imagine if Trudeau comes out and says, uh, "Listen, we are very disappointed in one of our own. That news Good report test. makes it clear this is a global issue, right? Like, we're, this is geopolitical um, hotbed stuff. So I hear it's yeah. like DEFCON 3 now over at NORAD. Are we going to get a news report of, of your, your horrible performance today? Or how is this going to go? Um, I, how's what gonna go? Like, is there more to this story? Like, which story? There's darts. I'm done. What are you talking about? That's it. Why? What do you? What do you? I, I, is there any controversy? I mean, I feel like we saw it all, and now we move on. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm a fair and balanced guy. <sighs> yeah. Like- I don't know. Maybe maybe you, so, you got the. Why are you or, laughing at that comment? Are you working for Fox now? Yeah. No, I mean it's Fox's slogan. I'm the no spin zone guy. Oh. <laughs> Do we need to get you? I feel you like a, you gotta you gotta you gotta get back on the horse and, all, and just, oh, get it back. Oh, I, I will I will get back on the horse, but I can't. Like, what do you want me to do? I have to work my way back up to. Uh, Freaking uh, Jack Shore, maybe. I'd love to yeah. see a five hundred one end on a double between you and Jack Shore in person. The the, the real showdown is going to be me versus Bully Boy in June. <sighs> That's going to be the real Whoa. showdown. You know, Jack is like kind of like, eh, he's in my way. All right, you couldn't get motivated, right? Sometimes, like, exactly. Like, you're looking forward to the big one. You stumble on the path. Now, now with Bully Boy, this is what I want to hear. This is what yes, I'm talking yes. about. Okay, get back. Fair enough. Sorry, with little... Bully Boy, are you going to play five hundred one? I we we might do a full hour of me and him just going back and forth. It's going to be uh, impact. Could you? What do you think the chances are of me beating him in one three versus three? Zero point zero zero zero. Especially me hitting those fours. Zero, all zero one. Zero. Not even close, right? Zero. No, there, there's a chance. Like, let's say he like stumbles and like sprains his ankle while he's wow. throwing the dart. <laughs> then, you, then, then, he has, then he has two more darts left to beat you. Yeah. You think he could get a one eighty? <laughs> yes. Yes. I think of if you guys played for an hour, he could get a one eighty. They for darts betting. I was looking at this. They set lines on how many one eighties they'll get. Uh, a game. Wow. And it's like and four and a half. Fucking force. What a choke job. Anyway, win or learn, as a wise man once said, and uh, we'll have another in studio guest on Wednesday and we'll have another crack at it. Oh, so you get redemption. Yeah, sort of. I just saw the email that they're Maybe not sort sending of. the board anymore. Ah, uh, yeah, right. They're sending it to check. Ah, uh, he's got a board. I yeah, they were that. like, but clearly they're just double. Do you know what down. the problem was? It was those damn headphones that you made me yeah, wear. That's what it, it was. All it was weighing me down. And remember, he's... you're representing all of us when yeah, you're playing. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't excuses. feel like you could carry us, don't do it. All right, um, I'll talk to you guys on Wednesday. Great show. Thank you very much to everyone who tuned in. Thank you to the crew in the back. Thanks to all of you. But it is time to go. I'm gonna go lick my wounds. Feel horrible about what happened. You'll be alright. You think so? You'll be fine. A lot of celebrities in attendance on uh, Saturday. We had uh, Jared KSI, Leto. Jared Leto, a fixture. Also, Max Crosby. I'm seeing a lot of Max Crosby. Like, uh, you know, they build Max Crosby at these UFC events. With all due respect, like he's, you know, freaking uh, Joe Burrow out there. Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he's like, you know. He's, could, could, could we cool it on the Max Crosby cameos at every UFC event? You would think he's like the greatest football player of all time. Every event. They could be in freaking Istanbul and there's Max Crosby. What else is this guy doing? Sheesh. Sheesh, Frank. A two-time pro bowler. It's a lot of Max Crosby, all right? Okay, Vegas, fine. We have to see Max Crosby in London? Do we have, like, is there no one else to show? I'm a Max Crosby fan. Did you know who Max Crosby was before all these shout-outs? 22 tackles for loss last year. Come on, man. Come on. He plays for who? The Raiders? Yeah. They're, they're like a 4-13 and 13 team. Eastern Michigan, great story. Enough of the Max Crosby. Uh, Under Taylor Joy. 12 and a half sacks last year. I get you on camera. No. Where's Dizzy Rascal at? Can we get a Dizzy Rascal shout out? I mean, come on. Max Crosby in London? Really? That's the big celebrity? There were better people to show. Colby Covington. Colby Covington. Great. Chaos. Uh, thank you to all our guests today. Appreciate them very much. Uh, Yanal Ashmov. Um, Alexa Grasso, Mohammed Mokhaev, Jack Shore, Leon Rocky Edwards. Congratulations to the Anstel champ. Back on Wednesday, same time and place. Until then, I say peace. Bye-bye.